Okay, so let's get started. Now, like I said, we're gonna go from beginning to end. So the first thing we have to do, and uh, I'll be working on a Mac. So if you're working on a Windows uh, or PC, try to figure out, you know, uh, they're, they're pretty similar for the most part. So just figure out what would be the equivalent uh, that you have to do to set the project up. But for the most part, I think um, everything I'll be teaching you is pretty transferable, okay? Um, so here, let's get started. So the first thing you have to do is, uh, and I'll be showing you, now we're not gonna go into a complete terminal command uh, tutorial, but I'll be uh, at least teaching you the, the few ones that you do need uh, to know in order to navigate around. And um, again, you know, there's a lot of tutorials um, on this on, on, um, on YouTube or, you know, a bunch of places. Uh, and, you know, there, there is a lot of uh, conversation between whether, you know, what IDE, we're gonna be going with uh, Visual Studio Code we are um, going to be setting up the application on uh, on Firebase so that we can host it. We can have a database as fast as possible. And that is one of the things that you want to always uh, keep in mind when it comes to programming, especially as you're starting to program. The most important thing is not becoming an advanced programmer at first. The most important thing that you want to know about programming is how can you create an MVP or a minimal viable product as quickly as possible. As you scale your companies or as you work on uh, on different code bases, you want to be able to understand this. So that's what I want to get uh, through to you. We will, we will be going uh, over some advanced concepts, but uh, the first thing and the most important thing on that ev every beginner programmer or even advanced programmers need to get through their head is that it is the speed at which um, we can get a first product in front of our, our users our, uh, that will be benefiting from them. So that's why I want to give you all the tools you need that uh, will speed up that process for you and you know not have you learn complex things that other programming tutorials might be getting into. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and I keep all my projects in, uh, in a file called projects. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new directory here, this is, uh, we're gonna call it tutorials, and then we're gonna go into that directory, okay? And once you're there, we are going to, so here, here's some of the stuff I do, just so you guys know my process. So here's a tutorial how to set up a React project with Parcel, and um, and, it, and it makes it pretty easy for us. So wh why, do I, why do I show you this? The reason I'm showing you this is because no, no matter what, and and there, and again, there is uh, honestly there is a uh, tutorial after tutorial. Now, when when you're getting started on React uh, applications, the first thing uh, that you will come across is whether you want to get into Webpack or you want to get into this, that, or the other. Okay, and uh, all those things are important, but the the number one thing you want to do is you want to get your site up and running. So how about we do that uh, as quickly as possible? Okay, so. Let's start here and we're gonna go with uh, this tutorial. So again, I go through this every single time. You you guys can uh, can as well, okay? So let's, uh, now that we have our directory and we can come here and we can see that we are in the file tutorial. So we're gonna create a, and we can just follow the tutorial over here. So we're gonna make a new file, okay? And we're gonna call it intro to react and Firebase. Okay, great. Now we're gonna see the into that, and now we're there. Okay, great. Now, for uh, for this tutorial, since we will be working with React, you will need to install Node, and you will need to install Visual Studio Code. So if you want to install Node, just go to Node.js. Okay, and then for Visual Studio Code, this will be the editor we're gonna be using, Visual Studio Code. Okay, great editor. You guys can pick your favorite one. This is the one that all the cool kids are using. So let's go with it. So a node, it's uh, very, very simple. Just, uh, again, I would click on just this download, follow the steps, uh, and it's self-explanatory for Visual Studio Code. Same thing, just click over here, follow the steps, pretty self-explanatory, okay? So just download those two things and uh, you will be ready to go. Then, once you have Node, and once you have Visual Studio Code installed, then the next thing we gotta do is create or initialize our project. So for every Node application or um, 
JavaScript application, we create this thing called a package.json. And a package.json pretty much is what where we will install all the packages we need and we will set up uh, our initial project. And I will show you examples of uh, some that I have set up myself so that you guys can see what a uh, production uh, one looks like. But let's get started. So we're going to say npm init and we're going to do dash y. And the dash y pretty much just says yes to everything. So it's going to go through a prompt. And what it will do for you is it's going to create uh, this file. So now that uh, we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. And then in Visual Studio Code, you see that um, we have our project. OK, so that's where we're going to get started. Perfect. Let's keep going through the tutorial. Now that we have created a project, we're going to go ahead and install React. OK, so over here we can do we can open the terminal. You can go over here for if you're in Visual Studio Code and then just new terminal. OK, we can see that the terminal tell us we are inside of our project. Once we are in here, then we're going to say npm install save react and react dom. OK, so we're going to save we're going to save to our project react we're, and react dom. This tells uh, our project that we're going to be using these tools. And pretty much when you're creating application, this is kind of the, the setup of how everything works. OK, you will install libraries and um, the way you install it is npm. So npm, let me just show you npm js.com. This is pretty much, at least for JavaScript application, the place you can come to find any library that uh, that you want to install. And there are, like I said, amazing libraries out there. Uh, like I, one of the ones we are using right now, it's React. So we can go ahead and come over here, React.js. This is actually created by uh, Facebook, okay, which is an awesome library. Uh, there are other ones, but as you can see, even for React, um, this, you know, like, like I was telling you, once you become a programmer, there is this active community and you can, you know, you can install all these, um, all these libraries absolutely free and use them in your project. And this will speed up your development time. Um, so, you know, get, get used to and get familiar with NPM. It's, uh, it's an invaluable tool. So let's go back to our, uh, our tutorial over here. Next, we are going to install Babel. Uh, we're going to install Babel. And as well as Babel, we're going to install the parcel bundler. So uh, let me explain to you what all this, all this is. So Babel is a transpiler. Now, JavaScript is a language that's uh, currently being, it's, th it's still in active development, you can say. So what will usually happen is the EC39 um, community, they're, they're, they're the standards body for JavaScript. So they, they're the ones that say, hey, this is what we want to introduce into the language. Um, but browsers don't usually update as quickly as the specs do. So what happens is that there are these great uh, libraries like Babel that allow us to use modern JavaScript um, functionality and it you know it will transpile it so that even in old browsers our code will work. So we don't have to use old um, you know legacy code uh, and we can start um, creating our applications with modern JavaScript um functionality and if you're just getting into javascript uh i i honestly would say don't even worry about it just you know welcome the benefits that you get with babel uh so that's what babel is going to do for you else okay it's going to help us um write better code and use all the new features of the language also parcel so parcel it's uh as another thing that helps us set up our project so since our project is a javascript project um usually this has to get bundled together into one big file. Now, there are many ways to do this. Uh, one tool is Webpack, another one is Rollup. There are, there are many tools. So, But what this awesome library called Parcel.js has done is it allows us to, um, to configure our project without worrying about every single configuration in the book. So if you know, if, if you know about Webpack, great. But if you don't, this is what I use to get all my projects started. And again, it saves me so much headache. Uh, it bundles everything. You, you don't even have to think about it, okay? So just take my word for it. Use Parcel. If you want to get more into Webpack, maybe we'll create a tutorial later. But Parcel, honestly, what an amazing team. And they have an amazing product. So 
Babel and Parcel is um is what we need to um to get our project started. And then once we have that installed, let me see if uh, my installation is. It'll take a few seconds, so I will uh, pause the video here, and then we'll continue when uh when it's when it's done. Okay, so with that done, let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create. We're gonna go over here in our folder, and we're gonna create a new file called .babel rc. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what one of my other Babel RCs files look like so you can um and, and, and I'll explain this again pretty much you want to get through this there's tutorials and all this if you want to uh, look into it remember our goal here is to get an application going as quickly as possible so we're going to try to get through the setup process as quickly as possible but I will explain to you uh what you need to know uh at, at least at the surface level so Babel remember what I told you it's, it allows us to use the modern features of the language without uh, worrying about um, whether we are going to leave out any of the older browsers, okay? So that's that's what it's about. So one of the things that we need to do with uh, Baba RC is that we need to say, we need to create this folder and tell it, hey, we're using uh, these um, kind of these features, okay? So when you transpile our code, okay, when you create that, that file that we're eventually going to publish online, this is kind of what we're uh, what we're using, so don't don't freak out, okay? Uh, and it allows it to um, to to then set all your features up for you. So we are using, and we'll go over this. But the, again, if you go to the Babel JS site, you can see that there is a bunch of plugins, and it's an amazing resource. So if you want, you know, um, I would, you know. I would encourage you to get familiar with this. It's uh, it's fantastic, and uh, honestly, um, yeah, it's it's just great. So go ahead, check it out. Okay, so let's keep moving through this. Okay, now that we have that, um, bah, 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 bah. we will. Let's see here. I don't know if we'll need the class properties, but let's just add it for a good measure. Um, and again, these are just features of new JavaScript. We won't use getignore because we won't be, uh, at least during this tutorial and, and later ones, we might create one that's, um, you know, where we're using GitHub and all that stuff or Git. But uh, for now, let's just keep it simple. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do is I like to put my index files. So, you know, project setup is very important. I will tell you, um, you know, at first as you're beginning, try to, you know, just see what works for you there are many ways to organize your files and as your application grows i would say this actually becomes uh very important because you 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 want to make sure that it's not um you know that that is organized okay that's that's the main benefit so we're going to create the first thing we're going to do is we're going to and if if you see me we're going to create a file here called index.html so this is going to be our main file. This is going to be, and, and you'll see with React applications, usually with most applications, you see all these uh, huge, um, you see all these HTML files. With React application, we're actually just going to have one, which is fantastic. And then React is going to take care of the rest. Um, so let's go ahead and, um, and do that. So what I will do here is I'm copying over some of the, file I have used before and as you create more and more projects what you will find is that uh, you you will benefit from uh, previous projects because you can just you know get through this a lot quicker so let me just explain over here and again this is really not an HTML class or a CSS class but um, but this is pretty simple and this is kind of the, the necessary stuff just to set up your project so this is again a regular HTML simple project setup uh, you get your doc type then your HTML um, tags your head tags and your head tags your we're sending our utfs viewports um you know stuff for um internet explorer which is everyone's um uh, favorite uh favorite browser just kidding uh then we are going to give our application a title so let's call it react uh application perfect uh, or let's call it react blog application okay just so we know what uh what we're doing then we are going to, we haven't created this yet, so let's go ahead and create another file here called new file, and we're gonna say index.css, okay? 
again, pretty much just at the root directory. Uh, so that's what, that's going to be our CSS file. We are going to be using another library called antd, which you guys can find it over here, ant.design, um, ant.design, okay? And then go to components and button. This is going to be the library that we're going to be using kind to style our application. Now, one of the, and there is another one. So one of the most popular ones is Bootstrap. You guys can use uh, whichever one you want. Um, one of the benefits, again, of doing this, and part of the reason why I want to show you guys all these tools is this is how we can get applications uh, created quickly. Okay, so like I said, this is a great community. And what this team has done is they have created all this pre- um all, all these components okay and and we'll go over what a component is but this is a component a button is a component uh a drop down is a component anything that's on a website uh whether it's an image whether it's a select uh whether it's an avatar a badge a comment all these things are components okay and instead of us going out there and creating our own components we can find libraries that uh that have already created it kind of um you know a set of them and ant the design is one of my favorites it's minimalistic i think it gives our application a great look and feel so that's what we're going to be uh using so that's what i have over here i'm importing the ant library and the and javascript then uh one other thing we'll do is we'll create a div over here, um, you know, and then you can just do div, give it an ID. I like to call it root. This is going to be the root of our application. And then we are going to say script. We're going to create a script tag. This is going to be where our React application lives. And we're, we're going to put it over here. We're going to create a new folder. Okay. Not a new file, but a new folder. We can call it SRC. And inside that folder, we're going to create a new file called index.js. And while we're at it, we are also going to create a new folder called components. And inside components, it's where all of our React components are going to live. And this will all make sense in a little bit. Okay, but we just want to set up a project. And that's almost, um, that's pretty much all we need. Okay, let's see here. Let's see what else we're missing. Let's go back to our... Um, to the story we're following, if I if I can find it. Okay, uh, okay, get ignore. We have created our HTML um, index.html, and then we're going to go into let's see here into our package.json, and this is beautiful. So remember, the package.json is where all of our libraries are going to. As we install more and more packages, this is where everything is going to live. Uh, also, this is how we um, start our project, and I'll show you what uh, what that means. So one of the things that is awesome about Parcel is Parcel comes with its own server, so we can test locally, and uh, it has hot module reloading, so as we update our application, the, we will be able to see the changes immediately in the browser. So all that comes with Parcel. Like I said, if you don't know uh, and you're using, you know, a bunch of other tools before and uh you've never used parcel before uh like you know you're welcome it's it's an amazing tool and if you've never used any of those tools and you're using parcel then just don't worry about it okay and enjoy the benefits it's uh it's amazing and don't even worry about what you needed to do before um so again as as you get more um more advanced in your career as a programmer you know you can get into all that stuff but this is this is more than this is all we need to get started and most projects at the beginning honestly uh this is what stops more pe most people okay it's the fact that they can't get a project uh set up and uh and create it so let's go ahead and let's see uh something really s uh quickly so again remember we went to scripts we created a start so in scripts and you will see how this uh, how this works now but once we have the start all we have to say is parcel then we have to point uh the parcel file to the source okay and uh within source index.html so let's go over here and uh let's see within our source have that and then let's go to the package json over here so yeah okay so what we're going to do since since our index is going to live mainly at the root level 
we don't have to do all of, uh, we, we're not gonna put it inside the source file for now. We are going to put it at the source over here and I'll explain a little bit more why that is. Um, you know, sometimes I put it in the source file. It depends how you want to organize, but for this, uh, for this project, we are going to um, just leave it at the root level and that'll be fine. So we're just gonna say parcel index HTML to keep things simple. And let's just do npm run start and let's see what we get. Okay, so parcel is gonna bundle. Okay, this is what bundling um, looks like. And as you can see, parcel went ahead and created this di distribution file for us. Uh, and you know, if, if we look in here, let's just wait till it's done. And then I'll show you what happens once it's uh, once it's done. Okay, so now that it's done, let's look inside the distribution file. And Parcel has gone ahead and taken our index, our index.html, everything we set up, and then it created this distribution file, and it's gonna serve our uh, website from this uh, file over here. So, let's see here. So if we go to localhost 1234, and um, right now we won't see anything. So let's let's fix that. Let's fix that, and uh, here's a quick way to fix it. Hello, let's go to our index file, okay? Index.html that we created. Hello, React application. And then once we save, parcel will, and then We'll save it for us, then we go to localhost 1234, and we see hello React application. And just like that, we have our React application set up. Um, and wasn't that simple. So let's see if we're missing anything else before we move on. Okay, so now with that uh, behind us, there is just a few more things that we need to do, which is we're gonna add hot module reloading. So this will allow us to once we have our application um, running and we make any changes, we kind of want to see the changes happening uh, and updating on the browser right away, okay? Without us having to refresh or anything of that. So let's go back again into a Babel RC file, okay? And we, we're gonna install the presets, which is preset environment and preset react. We already have both of those. Uh, class properties, we've already installed that. And then we are going to install our final plugin, which is the React HUD module reloading. Okay. Uh, finally, let's go into our index.js file, which there isn't much there right now, but we will have we will have this file. This is where our React app will live. And now we can uh, run again npm run start. And if we go back to our server, we can see that again, we can see hello React application. Okay, so now that we have most of our projects set up, the next thing that we need to do is that we're gonna go into index.js. Remember, it was in our source folder. And let's go into index.js. And we are going to import React. Now, what I'll be what I'll be doing throughout the course is I'm gonna be referencing other um, production Project so that you guys can see uh, that what we're going to be doing over here is pretty close to a production uh, project. And then that way you can see that, hey, with the skills that I'm learning over here, you should have the confidence to go ahead and uh, apply for a job and know that what you have learned here is up to date and some of the most advanced React concepts that you'll be learning. Okay. And uh, so let's get started. So as you can see, we're over here in index.js. So the first things we need to do is two things. We're going to import React and we're going to import React DOM. So the React library, it's what they like to call, it's just the view. So what does that mean? What does just the view mean? It means that when we are writing React and we're not writing HTML, it needs to take the JavaScript we have written and convert that into an HTML website, okay? And the React DOM and the React um, site is what helps us do that. Okay, so th these are the two things that every project at the beginning of all, all of our React files we need to uh, we need to import. Okay, then 
let's see here. After that, we are going to very simply create two things. So the first thing, and this is all that is necessary to actually render a React app. So let's let's separate this into two two parts. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, if you remember, let's go back over here to HTML. So if we look into our HTML file, we created a div over here called root. Okay. So in our index file, we're going to say var root element equals, and then we're going to get a reference to that element. So the way we do it is we're going to say document dot get element by ID. And then what was the ID we gave it? We gave it the ID of root. So that allows us to say, okay, that's, that's the element. So now we're going to say react Dom. Okay. React Dom, which we imported up here. Okay. So since we imported it, now we can use it. It has a render property. So we're going to say, Hey, render this app that we haven't created yet. We're, we're about to create this component and that'll be our first react component. But we want to render once we create it, where do we want to render it into this root element? So we're going to say, Hey, anything we write here, we want it to go in here. Okay. And that's kind of where it's going to live. So if we were to do the following, if we were to do this, okay. And let's go ahead and just remove this for now. Okay. We're, we're not going to render anything. We're going to keep things how we had it before. Okay. And we go back to our server, which is in localhost. We're going to see hello react application. And where is that hello react application from? It's over here in root. Okay. So that's, that's where our app is going to live. Okay. Most of our app is going to live right in there. Okay. So that's kind of what we're doing. So let's go back to index, um, dot JS, which is in our source file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say const, we're going to create a constant, which is very similar to a variable and we're going to create it and call it app. Okay. Now this is a function. So in JavaScript, the way you write functions is const app. Okay. Equals. And then this is the function sign, the arrow sign. We're not going to pass anything, but usually most, uh, components, we can pass a props argument to it and we will see what props arguments are in a little bit. Okay. Uh, and then let's just do something very simple. We're going to create, uh, let me just change this to react. So we're going to create, so this is what G JSX is. So what, if you're familiar with HTML, then react is going to become, uh, it's going to look very similar to you because essentially what we're going to be writing is we're going to be writing HTML. And this is one of the big, uh, benefits of react, uh, versus using something else like Ruby where you have to use, you know, some other, um, some other language or you have to use the MVC uh, model. So let's, let's do a div over here. And then in that div, we're going to say hello from inside react. Okay. So that's it. That's a wrap. Let's say, you know, very simple application. All it has, it's a, uh, it's a div. And let's give that div in H1 tag. And inside that H1 tag, we're going to say hello from React app. So there we go. We have created our simple application. This application, all it does is it gives us a title. So what we are going to do is we're going to say, remember, the first thing is we said, where do we want our application okay, to be embedded? Then we're going to say React DOM, okay, render our app which is over here. Okay. And the way you write a component. So we created a component, the way you actually use it, it's you call it. And then just like an HTML tag, um, uh, like a div tag or an H one tag. Okay. And this is a self closing tag, but, uh, this will be the same thing as doing this. Okay. So because we don't need anything to be there, we're just going to do a self closing tag. And then we're going to say, Hey, render that component in our root element. Okay. And then let's go back to our server. Okay. And this is perfect. Let's see our debugging. So if you press command option, I, uh, it will open up your console. Okay. 
And this is this is part of programming, okay? And this is actually a very important part of programming, which is learning how to debug. Okay, so let's see uh, what um, what it's telling us here. So it says error app. Nothing was returned from render. This usually means a return statement is missing or to render nothing, return it all. So what, what did we do wrong here? So great, we created our app, but we missed something. Remember, every JavaScript application must have a return statement. So all we have to do over here is say return, open close, and then we are going to move this over here. So now let's go back to our server. And what do we have here? Hello from inside React. So where is this being? Okay, so now we don't have this anymore. Okay, we're saying to our um, to our React application, hey, hello from inside React app. We created a div with an H1 in it, and then we're saying, hey, render that application inside our root element, and our root element is over here. Okay, so now our root element, instead of saying hello React application, what does it say? Hello from inside React. So what we are actually rendering, and like you can see, it's very similar to HTML. It's called JSX, but because we're actually, we're using the React DOM, uh, this is what allows us to write HTML looking um, syntax in a JavaScript application. Okay. So again, if you know HTML, this will come. This will be very familiar to you. And now we are rendering and. Uh, you know, congratulations, you have actually set up the project and created your first React application. That is a huge feat, and we have done that in probably less than 10 minutes. So that's really what it takes, okay, to get started uh, and create your first React application. So from now on, we're going to be creating our blog application. So I hope uh, you're excited. I hope you can see that you can do this. This is uh, an amazing skill, and uh, this, you know, this has been awesome so far. So let's, uh, let's, keep, on, let's keep on going. Okay, so you have learned how to create a React app and how to actually get a server going to render your React app. Now, the next thing we want to do is let's go over some of the main React concepts that we'll be using throughout the course. Um, and then we will be using these concepts over and over again. So it's important that we uh, go through the basics so then we can get into some of the more advanced and start creating our blog application. So first things first. Let's say we want to say, let's change what we wrote in here. Instead of saying from hello from React app, let's go ahead and say hello. And then we're going to say hello, Daniel. Okay. So again, we see that over here that gets rendered out. So pretty, uh, pretty awesome. But let's say we want this name over here to be dynamic. Okay. So the way we do that, it's simple. So React. React components, okay, and as we learned, this is a React component. React components take arguments, and we see that uh, one of the main arguments they take is the argument of props. So props is properties passed in. So one of the ways we do that, and one of the benefits of that is we can pass from parent to child or from component to component, it's another way to put it, uh, anything that is dynamic. And we will see why this becomes important later as we're working with APIs. But for now, let's go ahead and do something uh, simple so you can see the, the power of this. So we're going to say within our app component, uh, when it renders, we're going to pass a prop called name. Okay. And we are actually going to say the name is, let's say it's Joe. Let's just go with that. And then we're going to say, okay, hello. Then we're going to say open and close parentheses. Okay. Open, close brackets. That's the way you interpolate. So interpolation, it's a way of saying since, since it's not a string, what we actually want to do is we want to evaluate the, um, we want to run this code inside React and interpolate it as a string. Okay. So we're going to say props dot. And then what was the argument we passed? We passed the argument name. So we know inside of props, we have this argument called name. And then let's see what we get. So now we see that we get hello, Joe. Okay, so this is a dynamic variable, okay, that we can pass in here. And we can pass in here, hello, um, you know, Amy. And we see hello, Amy. So that's one of the one of the ways that you can pass arguments or um, any information or data from React component to React component, okay? We pass it through props. And this, again, this becomes very important once you are organizing your projects. Uh, you will see how this this is the way that we're actually going to be able to create complex applications, um, you know, and in, in a way that they're dynamic 
and they can grow and scale without um you know without getting um too complex okay and manageable so let's let's take this out because um we're not using that at the moment and then let's go back to hello world let's just say that hello world actually i like better hello universe okay how about let's dream big here so one of the uh, another benefit of react that i want to show you now is the concept of reusable components so let's go into our components file which right now we don't have anything okay very very sad so let's create a new file let's create this file and call it app.jsx okay so we have this file called app.jsx and uh what's the first thing we should do okay let's see if uh, anyone remembers first thing we need to do is import react okay simple import react and then we're going to say import react from where from react well that's pretty self-explanatory and there we go then we're going to say function app so the, this is the convention in react uh what you will see over and over again it's and, and there, there's there's many ways to do this but uh what you will see is um is that the components are written with capital letter first then th that component that function that where we're going to be uh writing our application code is also written with a capital letter okay and then what we're going to do we're going to just set up the file before we start doing anything we're going to say export default and then we're going to say export default app great and then we're going to come back over here okay and then we are going to go into the app we're going to move this code over to app and then we're going to delete it from here uh also in app of course we can pass props and let's go back into index now and in index what we're going to do is we're going to say import app from and then we got to we got to say components and then which component do we want to import the app component okay so now that we have app over here imported we can again use it over here otherwise let's just see what happens if we don't do that if we don't do that and we go back over here We're going to see again just what was written in our index okay hello react application but we see there our app okay in our index.js our app and it didn't give us an error usually we will get an error okay because we are rendering something that doesn't exist okay we haven't imported it anywhere so as soon as we import it okay let's see what happens and then we get back again hello universe so now we have it's called refactoring we have refactored our component that was over here into a component called app and we will see why in a minute this is a this is a great way to do it for organizational purposes we want to keep all our components in one place and our index in another just so that we are organized okay and again this there are people that have all sorts of uh, methods and there are tutorials for how to organize your react app remember we're trying to create something that's you know, we're, we're trying to create the skill that allows us to create applications quickly. I know exactly what's happening inside and out of a React application. Later on, we can we can all get into how to organize it, how to do this, how to do that. The most important things is how do you create a React application? What are the React things that are important? How do you deploy it? So how do you host it? How do you work with APIs and databases? And that is what we're going to be learning here in this class. Another thing I want to draw your attention to is that in our app.jsx file we did not import as we did in our index file the react dom why why not well because the react dom we only need to use it once to render out our application and our whole application is going to be rendered out through this one file and we will see how that happens but that's kind of what we all we needed to do over here was import react and then that allowed us to uh we we didn't need to import react dom okay so i just wanted to draw your attention to that because some of you might be wondering hey you know we imported react dom over there why not here all we need over here is react because we will be rendering our app over here through the react dom okay so that was why okay so let's think about this for a minute if we're creating a blog application what should be the first thing we create and again it's up to us but uh why don't we create a new component okay and let's call it posts and this is going to be in plural dot jsx okay again we're going to import react import react 
from React. Okay, then we're gonna say function pose. Okay, props. Okay, return. This should become just start to become familiar to everybody, and then export default pose. Okay, perfect. So that's right. You know, kind of general setup for for everything. So now we're gonna create, and this is usually my my uh, my way. So I usually create a, a container div. So we're gonna say div class name. So in, in React, unlike HTML, which you just write the class if you want to style something. Over here, we're gonna be using React actually uses the keyword um, class name. So we're gonna say this is the post container and even if we're not going to use it now for uh, for CSS purposes maybe later we do but either way it's nice to have a container around it so one of the things I want to show you now is now that we know how to import components and all this uh, the next thing we need to do is let's import our post and let's uh, let's start doing a few things so let's go over here into our design library and let's go into what do we want? Let's let's create a page header. Okay, a page header, perfect for our post. Let's create something simple. And this is the great thing about ant.design. They have created an amazing documentation. I absolutely love their um their site. I use it all the time. I encourage you all to get familiar with it. But again, if you like Bootstrap or other ones, that's that's fine too. Just use whatever you like best. Um, but we're gonna be using Ant for this one. So Again, and kind of tells you what you need to do. So, you know, they tell you, hey, import, import the page header if you want to use it. And then uh, all you need to do is we're going to copy this code. Okay. And then we're going to say page header. Okay. So we've imported it and now we're using it. Okay. That's kind of the, that's kind of the pattern. You import something and then you get to use it. So we're going to style it. So they give us their styling and you can change this, um, you know, to, to, to do whatever you want. Um, so it's again, if you know CSS and this is, again, this is not really a CSS class, but you can style it however you want. So we're going to create an, un the on back function. We're going to delete that. We won't need that for now. Let's call this instead of title. We're going to say, this is going to be the post and then a subtitle. Um, for now, let's just, um, let's not have the subtitle, but if you go to ant and then you go all the way down here, they tell you all the options. So as you can see, we could have had a title, a subtitle. A ghost and um, they tell you you know kind of what you need to do if it's a boolean whether it's true or false an avatar a back icon tags extra so it tells you all the things that the component can have and as you remember to components we can we can pass properties and that's what these are these are properties that we pass to these components okay so now that we have created the post uh, component and inside the post component, we have this page header. So a very simple component as of this moment, what do we have to do next? Okay. That what we have to do next is we have to go back to app and inside of app, we're going to go import. And then what are we going to import? Okay. So we, the, uh, we exported the post. So what do we import here? Post. Okay. Where are we going to import it from? We're going to import it from, and then we're going to go post. Okay. Perfect. And then now that we've imported, what's next? Well, the next thing is we are going to say, instead of hello universe, we are going to replace that with, with our posts. And then let's see what we get in our server. So parcel again, parcel, depending on your connection, it'll take a few seconds. Uh, usually, so it's, it's pretty quick. So let's just wait to parcel is done. Okay, great. So we can see that we have now our header. Now, one of the things I like to do at this point is let's, let's do some simple styling. And this is really, again, like I said, not really a CSS class. So most of the CSS will be provided for you. Uh, and I don't think anybody wants to see me, uh, styling something, nor am I the greatest, uh, styler. So let's just go ahead and uh, let's do this. Let's do HTML body, and we are going to, let's give it a width of a uh, of 100%, height of 100%. Let's do um, also a padding of uh, 20 pixels. 
Let's see how that works out for us. Okay. We're going to re refresh our server. And uh, that looks that looks pretty good to me. So now that we have our post component um, over here, we've imported it. We're using it. Uh, let's also give this, um, this div app container. Okay. And uh, now we've created a post. Okay. And uh, we created a header. Now, I know the thing that's a good idea is uh, let's create a div and then let's put this page header inside that div. And again, this, we might never use these uh, divs, uh, but it's also good. It's always good to have um, page header container. It's always good to have these divs because later on you might want actual a handler for your uh, styling. And uh, this is what actually allows you to do uh, that stuff. So I always put my things into div and it's a good way to keep things organized. Okay. So next thing we want to do is let's create a different div and then we're going to say class name. Now, what are we going to put here in here? What we're going to put is we're going to say post. Um, let's see, we already have post container up here. So what, what are these going to be? Th th let's, let's think about this. If, if you're in a blog and, um, these are going to be, let's call these the articles container. Okay. Articles container. Okay. And well, you know, one of the, one of the big issues or one of the big things in, uh, in programming is, is naming and finding good names to, um, to put on things. So again, choose, choose whatever is uh, easier for you, but sometimes you'll see me go back and forth between names. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's silly, but it, it's important later on when you're looking back at your code and you're like, you know, what the hell did I write? Who, who wrote this? And uh, guess what? It was you. So <laughs> here we go. So now that we have our articles container, let's, uh, let's do one. Okay. So we have the articles container. Let's create another div. Okay. And then we're going to call this div article. So this is a single article, article container. Perfect. Okay, great. So let's go back to ant.design. And if we look over here in components, we can see that they have data display. And that's kind of where we want to like look for right now. Uh, we can go through each of these, but I think what we're looking for right now, it's a card. Okay, and let's find something. So over here, they show you all the type of examples. Again, I love this website. Um, and it shows you different types of cards, how to style them, what they can look like, you know, so there's cards that you can put pictures on, uh, a little title with a little, you know, uh, subtitle or a link, uh, different ways to style the cards, different ways to have cards loading. Be so before the information loads, this is what it can look like. Um, and then this is what it can look like after the information loads. Let's look for something similar to this. So this could be the, um, if, if, again, if we're making a blog, this could be the blog title. Right. And then this could be maybe a, a, a snippet of uh, what's inside of the blog um, article. OK, so let's go ahead. And again, they are so awesome that they even give you the code so you don't have to think too much, uh, which, again, it's always nice. <laughs> so let's go to post. OK, we're going to say, hey, we want to use card from the ant design uh, library, and then we are going to use Let's see here. They will give us this. This is kind of what we want over here. Okay. And then let's see how that works out for us. So we're going to come over here. Let me just organize this and let's see if that works. So there you go. That's um. so now we have page title and here we can see that we can have our um, our post and I think our blog is kind of a little wide so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say uh, let's do the width to let's do you know 970 pixels and then let's do this let's do instead of padding what don't we do margin zero pixels auto. okay let's see what that does for us let's see if it makes it it's, it's just I think it's a little bit too wide that, that did not work for us. That's, that is not what we wanted. Okay. So the HTML on the body. So here's, here's one thing we can do. So let's leave that at hundred. And again, such, such a big part of, uh, of programming is learning how to debug. So that's part of why I want you guys to also 
see me doing this is not that you know we, we would never make errors is the fact that in programming learning how to fix the errors learning what to do when something's not working the way you want that's a huge part of programming so getting used to that that's part of the whole process so what we're gonna say here is the the app container remember everything is included within the app container so what we're gonna say is okay we want that app container to be a width of 970 pixels and then what we're gonna do is we're going to center it margin uh, zero pixels auto that will get it to center and there you go see that's 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 more along the lines of what we wanted perfect so let's also do a margin top kind of so it's not snug against you know kind of the, the edge of the screen we want to do a 20 pixels okay and again this is you know it's it's kind of like whatever you like when you're when you're making your websites you are free um so because we have the margin we have to put the margin uh top at the bottom of this other margin that we made so that should give us the margin top that we're looking for and now we have our article kind of a link here that we'll be using a little bit later um then we have the blog title and then some content so let's go over here and let's look for lorem ipsum so if you don't know what lorem ipsum is pretty much it's gibberish uh that programmers use to um to generate you know to to mock out content so before you have any uh any real content that uh on your site this is called lorem ipsum and it's essentially just that it's just gibberish okay so we are going to generate uh two paragraphs let's say as the snippet and we're going to generate some lorem ipsum okay okay and then this gives us exactly that this gives us just literally gibberish that we can put and uh we are going to go to post and we are going to paste our gibberish fantastic okay now this is a little let's wrap it because otherwise in between some p tags okay so these are paragraphs paragraph tags let's let's wrap this between p tags and um and yeah that will make it so that later on we can so that is styled a little bit better okay so there you go over here we are going to say card um let's see here we're going to change the title to inner card title instead of this we're going to say um article title later on we will make this dynamic for now we just want to make the um, we just want to mock it up and what we were going to do is we're now going to refactor this out into its own component. Okay, so each article, each post, essentially, we want to create a new component. Okay, and then we're going to say new file. We're going to call it post. Instead of posts, we're going to, this is just a singular post, .jsx. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say import react from react. Okay, great. Then we're going to say const what are we going to call this post equals props okay open close return and then we're going to export default post so let's see now why do we do this okay what we want to do now is we're going to show you how to create and remember we, we, we learned this before this is how to uh create reusable components so one of the benefits of uh of react is instead of having to duplicate all this you know all the time and having all these uh big view files we can com componentize everything and then that allows us to create reusable components and keep our views nice and clean and organized okay which again in a small project it might not matter as most uh, as much but as projects grow and grow uh you want to make sure that your projects are organized as you start working with teams you know you want to make sure things are organized because that's the only way that uh you know because otherwise i mean a year later once you look back at your code you're not going to understand it and remember the most important um the most important person uh, in your programming it's future you okay so future you comes back and looks like this code a year from now and it's like i have no clue where anything is so it's important to keep our code organized so now we are going to move post and we are going to again let's see the things that we're going to use so we have to import we're going to import we won't need the page header here okay let's again create our div 
this is going to be called what? What is this going to be called? Okay, we're going to call this post container. Okay, perfect. And I think we call it articles container. So article container. I think this will be the article container. Yeah, let's call that the article container because the post container we'll be using later for the full post. So now we what we want to do is we're going to want to get all this out of here. Okay. And we are going to paste it here. Okay. Uh, again, article container. So now we have no post over here. So our post is gone. So now what do we have to do? Okay. Same thing. We're going to go import post from from where? From post, not from app, from post. Okay, great. So now let's see if we can get it back to how we had it. Post. Okay, let's see if we made a mistake here. So page header is not defined. Uh, are we using page header anywhere here? It does not seem so. Are we using page? Okay, yeah, yeah. Page header. Okay, that was. And now we have our app back to how it was. So now we have taken post out of here, okay? Created a new component called post, which is essentially the same code we had over there, but we will see in a little bit the benefits of uh, having things componentized in this way, okay? So now let's just see what happens if, um, if we do like, you know, three, four, five posts, okay? There you go, you know? So instead of us having to copy all this code over and over again, we just come over here and we just repeat this component, you know, and look, look how nice our, our, our app looks. Okay. There, there is, it's not overly, you know, massive. We have this component called post that we can reuse. And I will show you in a second how, you know, we can create dynamic content that goes into this component and it doesn't all have to look the same. All right, so now that we have our posts, let's um, let's try to work with something different, okay? Let's start by creating a mock API, and I've gone ahead and created one, okay? And you will find this in your uh, class notes. So this is a file down here called mock API, and all of this is a JSON um, with a variable, and all it has is it's an, it's an array of objects with a title and content. Okay, same thing we had before, okay? And then we exported it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into post. Um, yeah, let's go into post. And within post, we're gonna say import API from, and then we're gonna say mock API. Okay, great, so what do we wanna do here? So one of the things we definitely do not wanna do is we, we don't wanna be doing this copy paste thing plus it's pretty static okay one of the things we want to be able to do is we want to be able to pass down information from uh one component to the next this is what makes uh react so powerful okay so in our mock api remember let's let's take a look at how it looks it says there's a title and then there's a content okay great title and content so that's what we want to remember okay and it's an array of objects so let's go ahead and also import into here, import underscore from Lodash. So Lodash, again, is another one of those libraries that you want to get familiar with. It has a lot of utility functions that we're going to be using to parse through our data. So parsing through our data pretty much means to, you know, view our data, analyze our data, um go through our data there's all these things that we're going to be able to that we we're going to be able to need to do in order to organize our data into the the form that we want to display for our users okay so lodash one of my favorite uh libraries there are you know there's a few other ones that are like it so pick your favorite i think lodash is great it's pretty easy so that's the one we are going to be uh using and one of the first um one of the first functions that we are going to use uh, from Lodash is the map function. So the map function, we will see it. Um, it's, I, I think it'll be easier to show you than uh, than to explain. So remember, we've imported the API and we've imported Lodash. That's all we've done so far. Um, and our site should still look the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all these posts. So now we're back to one post. 
So let's leave that one post there, and then let's see what we can do with uh, with Lodash. So we're going to go underscore dot map. So this is a function on the Lodash object. So on the Lodash object, there's this function called map. And what we're going to pass to map is our API. So we're going to pass an object to it. Remember, our API looks like an array, okay, of um, an array of objects. So what we're going to do in map is is going to say we're going to pass the whole array and then what map is going to do is is going to tell us okay we're going to go over each and every single one so we're going to go one two three four five and as many as there are in the collection okay so we're going to put a collection here so we're going to say hey i want to go over a collection one item at a time and I want and then you can give one of those items a name so let's just call this article okay now that we have given it a name so now we know as we're mapping through it each of these things that uh that we're going to be mapping it's an article okay so again we're going to go ahead and return and what are we going to return what do you think we're going to return well let's first and foremost let's return just the post and back just like that, uh, you know, we have again as many uh, as many posts as we had before. So we can delete this post over here, and we can see that working with an API. And again, this is just a mock API, but in a little bit we're going to be working with a real one. So I just wanted to give you a feel for how it is. Uh, we, we got a collection. Okay, now that collection, we say, hey, we're going to map over that collection. Now you, remember. Whenever you want to interpolate, which is evaluate JavaScript, and you're using JSX, you first have to do open and close parentheses. Then you can write JavaScript inside of that. Okay, so we're going to say underscore map. We're going to pass our collection, which came from our API, which we imported up here. Okay, now that we have access to that, we're going to say, hey, now we have each article, and we haven't used it yet. I know that, but for each of those articles, we want to render a post okay perfect now let's do a few more things so remember an article article is going to be each of these each of these objects that's what article is and we can we can prove it so let's open close parentheses and then just say console log article okay so now if we go back over here to our blog post we're going to see that in our console and again, you can open the console with command option I, command option I, command option I, okay? And if you go to view, you can also go to developer and then JavaScript console, okay? Or developer tools. Go to developer tools and then go to your console. So in developer tools, there's a few things, okay? We're using right now the console. So for each of those, we can see that, although we haven't used it, for each of these, articles right here as we map through it okay we map through the whole collection so we can see that in the map function we do actually have access to each individual one okay so that's what they are perfect so let's let's remind ourselves we have content and we have title okay so let's go over here and then we're going to say remember we can pass properties to uh to each of the components so we're going to say title and what's the title going to be? Well, title is going to be article dot title. Perfect. And then what else are we going to pass? Well, we're going to pass content, content, and then content is going to be article dot content. Perfect. So let's put this over here to the side, and then let's go back to post. So now in post and props, let's see if we can actually just change the article. So over here, the article had, let's change our first article name so we can see the difference. So this is the first article, okay? First article. And then we'll, 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 what we'll do is we will just change the title so we know we're actually dealing with different ones, okay? Okay, there we go. So we got first, then we got second then we got third fourth and fifth i don't know if that's spelled right i think it is let's let's look it up is that how you spell fifth 
fifth. Missing an F. Okay. My English teacher will be very mad at me for that. All right. So here we go. So we have the articles. And for the most part, you know, in our mock API, they're kind of the same, but the targets are different. So we should be able to, uh, we should be able to see the difference. Okay. So remember in our post, we map through our API. Okay. Then that gives us an individual article at a time. And then what we want to return. Okay. It's a post for each of that. Okay. And for each post, we're passing two properties. The properties are title and content. And remember, we get that from each individual object. Article. So article.title has the title. And the content is an article.content. So let's go to post. And instead of having this static title, let's go ahead and create props. Remember? Title. So over here, we can access that title that we pass into here through that property. So props, the title, and we have first article, second article, third article, fourth article, fifth article. Okay. So that's how we can pass dynamic content. And over here, instead of having these static P's, what we're going to do is we're going to say P, we're going to create a P tag. And inside that P tag, we are going to put props dot content. Okay. And that will give us our content. Now our content is a little bit um, smudged together. Uh, we will fix that later. But you know, instead of having, um, you know, b before we had two paragraphs, now it's kind of just bunched up. That's something we will fix later. When uh, in string interpolation, we it's it's really hard to do that. Just the way our API is set up now. So that all has to do with how we set up our API. Uh, but it's again not a big deal. The most important thing that we want to uh, that we want to see here is that we are actually rendering each of the articles, okay, and as well as the content all dynamically, okay. So um, and then let's give this also a class name and let's call it article content, and uh, and that's perfect. So now we have created we have componentized our our post, okay. We have a post component that actually renders out all our posts. Uh, we can also, just so you know, we can, you know, using some of those cool new JavaScript features, we can do this, this, and then it's an implicit return, um, meaning we can, we don't have to write as much code. And uh, and yeah, we've used a, an API, okay. And an API, it's simply that, okay. It's the, it could be this simple. It's just the way of uh, organizing information that is consumable um, for, for, for the user. And the user could be a programmer or it could be, you know, any number of uh, another application. It could be many things, but that's usually what we're talking about when we're talking about an API. Uh, so now we've learned how to create mock APIs. We have our application, which is just really rendering the post component, but the post component now is made up of these two components, which is a page header and a post. Okay, and we just imported the post once, but we used it five times. Okay, and the way we did that, and not just did we use it, we also pass properties. Okay, and if we go to post, now we have we're, we're using those properties dynamically in two sections of our card over here: props of title and props of content, and that's actually what has given us the our blog. And our blog, you know, in in a short amount of time. It's actually looking really great. So the next thing we're going to do is actually go into an individual article and also about routing. So how do we go from one article to the next? How do we view different routes? How do we create routes? And that's what's uh, coming up next. Before we get into routing and uh, actually creating our, our posts, let's refactor a little bit. And it's always good to refactor as you're going. Uh, you know, you, you will find new things that you're like, oh, I wanted to do this differently. And again, it, it's all about code reuse and code organization. So instead of calling this post, let's call this post snippet because that's really more accurate to what it is. So we have to change it here. We have to change it here. We have to change it here. Okay. Uh, and then we have to go to posts and then what we want to import is not post, but post snippet and also here. Okay. And then that should be good to go. We'll check right now. 
and uh, let's see. Okay. Now he, here's an error. This is a great thing about the console. It says each child in a list should have a unique key prop. So where is this? We're getting this from post. So if we go to post, and as we're mapping, um, so one of the ways React um, optimizes for re-rendering and their internals is that uh, they, they know where everything in the DOM is, so that they're able to replace. And there's great tutorials on this about immutable data structures. We won't get into that, but you know, React under the hood pretty much is using an immutable data structure. And uh, part of the way we help React do that so our applications go faster is we give whenever we're mapping over something whenever there is a repetition of something we have uh we we get a key and the key could be anything we want uh one of the easiest ways i find of giving things key so and it's again it's just the prop so i go ahead and uh i do that so in in the map function it just so happens that besides giving us the article okay mapping through each article it also gives us an index to know where we are and in the index in, uh, in JavaScript, for those of you who don't know, starts at zero and it continues on. So if we have a collection of five items, our index will start at zero and it'll end at four. Zero, one, two, three, four equals five. So that's kind of uh, how that works. So we're saying, hey, for each post as the as the key, uh, it doesn't really mean anything other than for the React internals. Um, you know, just use the index. The index is fine. And then that way React knows that, hey, this is an individual which of them are the individual ones and it can recognize them and uh and make optimizations for our code so that's a good thing uh and once we do that we can see that we have no more errors okay so that's uh that's kind of that's kind of what we want so the next thing okay let's talk about routing and let's talk about um actually you know going into a post so the first thing i i think would be good to do is uh let's let's create another another component okay so that's uh that's usually the the best way to to go about this and then go from there. So we're going to go into let's go into app. Okay, and let's import post from post. Now, of course, we don't have this created yet. So we're going to go into components, new file, post.jsx. Uh and then we're going to say import react from react. Okay? Then we're gonna say const post, and should all be pretty familiar with this pattern by now, okay? And then we're gonna say export default uh, post, okay? Then what we're gonna do here is so we're gonna say return and uh, div class name, and then this is the post container. And now if, if we go to post snippet, I think article container. Uh, Let's just change this to post snippet container. That's, that's better. And uh, yeah, so post snippet container, and let's just say hi. Um, okay. So once you get so, so some of these errors in your uh, in your terminal, just try to restart the server. So one of the uh, ways to do this, Control C will exit out of uh, of the current server, and then just run npm run start again. This usually happens when we create a new uh, new component that uh, it's not in um, kind of in the bundle. So it's like, oh, hey, you know, I don't know about this file. So it gives you an error that like, that file doesn't exist. It just hasn't recognized it yet. And uh, so just restart your server and then, you know, start it back up and it'll recognize it. So here we go. Uh, if we go up to app. Now, the thing is, we just instead of post, let's go to post. And uh, we should see instead of everything we had before. What are we going to see now? Let's see. We're just going to say hi. We're just going to see hi. Okay. So, and, and the main reason is because in post, that's all we got. Okay. So let's, let's actually copy over some of the stuff that we want to use again, because I think, um, some of it we can reuse. So over here, we're going to use the page shadow. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I just copy and paste that code from, from one to the next, we're going to get an error. Okay, now why do you think we're getting that error? It says, it says page header. And that's why this is so important for debugging. Okay, so whenever you, you have an error, go to your console and then see, see see what it says there. Okay, so it says uncut reference error, page header is not defined. So what's happening is we're trying to use a component that we haven't imported yet. Okay, so if you remember what we did here in post, we went and imported page header. So we have to do that again. So once we import it, we can use it and there it is. So let's do something. Let's instead of um, 
the title being post. Let's call this title. Um, well, let, let's just leave it as post for now. And, and then we're going to use something with uh, with the API. OK, so let's just leave it for title for now. OK, so now that we have that, now what's the next thing? So next thing, again, very similar to what we did over here with post snippet. OK, so let's get a card. OK, that that worked well for us. And uh, and then let's let's do post this. This will actually be the post content container. And let's see if we have. Yep. So this would be the post content container. We're going to have a card Enter. Let's do the title uh, of this card. Uh, actually, let's go back to card because th this this will be a little bit different, right? We, we don't need the, the header and the content. What we really need is a very simple card this time. Uh, let's see something like this uh, or maybe even like this because all we actually want to show is the content of our post. Okay, so let's do that and let's replace that with that. So again, we are going to get an error unless we import card. Let's import that. And now we have that. So let's let's do let's take the style out. Okay, because that we don't want it to be 300. We want it to be full width. And uh, another way, by the way, if, if you're in React, so there are two ways that you can style components. One is the way we've been doing it, and the most common way is creating class names, then going to index, and over here, you can import it. And that's pretty much the, the regular HTML, CSS way. But in React, you can also, each component or anything, any tag, just like in HTML, all you got to do is put in the style, and then you can write inline styles. So let's uh, do a margin top. So the way you do it instead of, so in CSS, you usually do a margin top. But in React, since we're writing JavaScript, we're going to do its, its camel case, OK? So it's margin, OK? And then top, camel case. So again, that's kind of the, the convention, margin top. And then we're going to say uh, 20 pixels. And again, just, you know, that, that gives us our, uh, our content. So let's go ahead and create some more gibberish, or in other words, lorem ipsum, OK? And uh, we're going to generate lorem ipsum. Great. So let's put this over here. And uh, let's let's just paste that. And uh, there we go. OK, so now that we have our post, the next thing we want to do is we want to see if we can get this looking nicer. Um, you know, although we have this this block of gibberish, it will be nice if we can style this so that it's um it's you know it's like a paragraph, paragraph for paragraph. And as you can tell, in in our content over here, this is kind of what we want. We want this uh this this same structure, but we, we need to find a way to get this block, okay, of uh of code to look uh kind of separated into p tags, okay, because p tags is the way that HTML organizes organizes um, our content so that it's uh, at blocks uh, block level. OK, so just like a paragraph. OK, that's kind of what we want. We want these things to be paragraphs. And right now they're just a big block of like, you know, it's just an intimidating block. And we, we don't want our users to, um, to to view it this way. OK, so let's see how we can uh, achieve that. So the first thing we want to do is let, let's let's move this out of here. OK, and we're going to come up here and then we're going to create a variable. Let's call it content, and we're just going to paste it up here. Okay, so great. So we haven't done much now. So what you know, one of the things I like to teach while I'm programming, uh, and you know, most I, I don't know most uh, tutorials that you see out there, uh, sometimes they don't like to t see you uh, or show you how the debugging process works. Uh, uh, honestly, the debug debugging process is one of the most important parts of programming. Uh, learning how to solve problems as you're programming. It's, it's going to become one of the most important skills that you'll have as a programmer. Whenever, you know, as, as you get into a career, you, you will find that um, to solve uh, big problems or something, someone has usually solved them in the past. Uh, and again, because programming has such a, a great community around it, you will usually be able to find uh, find someone who has done it or can guide you in, in, in the right direction. OK, so let's go over here and I'm going to show you something. So 
uh, I we, we found something that might work for us, but let's let's see what I searched for. So I went to Google and I went JavaScript how to dynamically add p tags for line breaks. Okay, and like I said, that's kind of what we want, right? We want in between each of these line breaks, okay, uh, to be a p tag, because then that way HTML knows what to do with it and make it look nice. Now, over here, we found someone who was having a similar issue. Okay, so let's see uh, if they were able to help. Um, they were able to solve their issue, and and it sounds like they were someone. Uh, in um, in the forum went over here and it's like hey you know what this worked for me try it out it might work for you so let's let's try it out okay so we want to save it uh, let's remove that semicolon over there otherwise it's gonna give us an error and instead of text what do we call ours we call the content so let's put content split okay so what, what's what's going on over here let's 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 go through this code and analyze it so content then we're gonna split it on the new line. So the split function is a function that JavaScript has for strings that all it does is, hey, for each new of these lines, I wanted to split it and create a collection. So now we're going to have an array, and an array is just, you know, one, two, three, four. Okay. So we're going to have that structure, that data structure, but instead of one, two, three, four, they're each going to have, you know, a whole line. Okay. And then we're going to have one, two, three, four five lines in that array okay so that's what the split uh on new line over here that's what it's doing and this this is a regular expression for a new line again regular expression is of course all onto itself we won't get into it here but uh just so you know what's going on there then we're using uh, a function that we're familiar with already the map function so remember since we have that collection what we want to do is we want to go over the collection okay item by item so we're going to say hey for each of those new lines that you created, map over them. And map over them is just saying, go over each of them, okay? And over each of them, and then instead of calling this item, let's let's create uh, a more descriptive term. Let's call it paragraph. Fantastic. Let's give this an IDX. That's, remember, the map function gives us the individual item plus an index to keep track of where we are. Let's, uh, and the index, we can use it for the key. And then over here, we will, say paragraph and let's see how our application looks now and there you go just like that we have an application that now looks much nicer okay when our readers read this it it's you know it's split up into uh sections that can be read uh and not just a big block of gibberish i mean we still have gibberish but it's much nicer looking gibberish and that's that's pretty cool okay so we have that now We've learned a lot, okay? So now we have our post, now we have our content, and everything is looking nice. So what's next, okay? So the next thing we want to do is we want to we want to be able to go from, you know, how do we go from the post that we had before into the individual post, okay? And that gets into the uh, concept of routing. So routing, you know, routing is just uh, HTML links. So how do we go from one view to another view? And specifically, how do we do it in React? So for that, we're going to use a new library called Reach Router. So Reach Router is a great library. There are other ones called React Router. This 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 is a great team. I think uh, some of them actually came from the React Router team, and they created this uh, this great library. Now, one of the reasons why I'm showing you this library, and one of the things you want to look when you are actually um, looking into libraries is that it has good document uh, documentation. This has been tested in production, so it's not something new, and uh, it's something that we can use. And again, it's a library I love, I've used, and uh, I think you'll love it too, and it'll make it really simple to do what we need. So let's go back to our code, and I want to show you something, okay? So I've gone into one of my previous projects, and this is one of the nice things also, as you start programming more projects, that you will have this kind of a file that you can rely on for um, reference. And with that file of reference, here's uh, here's I, I want to show you kind of what we're all leading to. So we have the router here, okay? And then with our router, that's what's going to allow us to create all these different um, navigation so we can go from one place to another to another and, uh, and create those links, okay? And uh, over here, very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to import router from reach router. And again, if you ever have any questions, go to the documentation. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. So whatever questions are not answered here, or uh, you need to uh, review some of it, 
you know, the documentation for all these libraries, just like Lodash, as you can tell, great documentation, just like ant.design, great documentation, and Reach Router, it's uh, no exception. So again, read the documentation, get familiar with it. It's, um, it's you know, it's one of the ways that it'll speed up your programming as well. So let's get into it. Let's get into routing and let's see kind of uh, what we have to do. So we've gone over here. So let's go to app and in app, we're going to go import router from, from where? From reach router. Okay, great. Actually, let's not put it in uh, an app. Should we put it in app? Let's see here. So th these are some of the things that you have to, uh, yeah, so let's put it in app. I, I was just thinking maybe we, we should put it in the index, but in the app, that's where most of our um, application is going to live. And then we're going to render it to the index.js. So we want to keep that index.js pretty slim. Um, okay, like it is now. Okay, so if we go to source, remember, index is pretty slim. But our app, that's kind of where the meat and potatoes of our application is uh, is at. So let's do something. Let's wrap it around. Okay, let's do the router. Okay, and again, this you can get it off from documentation. I've done this before. So that's kind of what we're leading into. And uh, let's uh, let's go over here. Okay, and then let's leave this open. And the, the reason I want to do this is because I want to show you that we are creating uh, something very similar to a production app, okay? This is not kind of a play app. This is, you know, the same skills that you will use in uh, in your job as a programmer. And, uh, and that's, you know, one of the reasons why I'm so excited to teach you this because, you know, you can actually take this from this, uh, this course and into a job and uh, and again if, if you do get a job please uh, leave a comment I love to hear it that's kind of why I'm teaching this I love this and I think it's a great skill to uh, to hone so let's uh within a router the first thing we have to do is we have to uh, pick what's the default route and the default route all we have to do is add a slash to it so let's go into app and let's make the instead of the post let's do the post and then let's call it default okay that's another way uh, for it. And now if we go back to our application, we are back, uh, to all of our posts, but then let's make a, and let's import another component that we already have over here. And instead of making this the default, the way to, um, the way to create your routes is you have to, uh, pass a property. And what's that property? That property is called path. And then you get, uh, to call it whatever you want. So we're going to say path and the path is post. Uh, and over here we can use something like ID. I, I think that's a good idea. You know, it allows us to know what, uh, what post we're in. And when we're working with an API, uh, this will come in handy. So we're going to say post, but, but instead of being general, it's like, what, what, which post is it? You know, because like, like, I, you know, like we see here, we have many posts. So we want each of these posts to have an ID. Okay. And, uh, and we'll be adding all that. Okay. But that's, that's the first thing we want to do. So we have the post, then we have the post and then we have post this, uh, colon, what it does is it allows us to, to access this later on. We will see this later on, but essentially this is kind of like a variable. Okay. And, uh, so th this is very dynamic. Okay. This is, it's not that the um, path is going to be post colon ID It's going to be post. And then this will be get replaced in the actual URL with the actual ID. Okay, and we'll see that in just a second. So, fantastic. So now we've added uh, our routes. So now let's go to post, okay? Because in post, that's where we're actually rendering, and that's our default, okay? That's our default route, but that's where we're also rendering all the other uh, post snippets, okay? So within post snippet, we have, remember, the way we, we wrote this, okay? We have the page header, and then we have the post snippet. So let's go into the post snippet uh, component. So we are going to, not into post, but let's go into post snippet. Okay, because the post snippet is, the, remember the individualized component. So in here, what do we have? We have this extra. And again, if we go to the ant design documentation for card, okay, let's go over here and read extra content to render in the top right corner of the card. And if we go to our app, that is what we're seeing just do this that is what we're seeing over here right so that's the extra okay that's what's rendering and it says more so instead of saying more let's go read article 
let's call it that. So now it says read article. Read, let's say read full article, okay? Read the full article. So now we have a link. So now that we're here, what we do need to do is from reach router, they also have this component called link. Okay, so a link is exactly what it sounds like. It's like an href. So we're going to, and if if we look over here, let's go into uh, the reach router documentation, and then let's see what links need. So a link is very similar to a routes. So first we create the router, and then what we do in the router is we have to tell it a path, and that path is later going to be used in the links. Okay, so as you can see, over here in app, although these two components show up like they're uh, rendering at the same time, because we have the router wrapper, what the router does is it shows just one component at a time, and that's what creates our views, okay? And now we're gonna see that in action. Okay, so let's go to post snippet, and then let's replace this with a link instead of an href, okay? And remember, we got that from reach router. And then if we go over here, what do the links need? They need a two property. So where do we want the link to go? Um, and then let's go ahead and say, well, we want this link to go to post. And uh, if you remember, we actually give this post an ID. So um, it's going to match it to whatever the ID that we gave it. So we're going to go ahead and let's do it this way. Okay, post, and then remember interpolation. So one of the things that we can do in JavaScript is the back ticks over here. So in properties, you can open and close bracket, and remember, it'll interpolate. So it will evaluate whatever is inside of here. And then in JavaScript, uh, one of the new features, we can create this back ticks. Okay, if you go to your number one on your keyboard, to the left of it, you should see those back ticks. So once you do your, those back ticks, we can write uh, a regular string and then dollar sign, open bracket, close bracket, and then whatever is in there, it will also get interpolated. So what do we want to do there? We want to have, because every article is going to have a unique ID, uh, that's what we want to put there. Because if you remember in our app, okay, what we want to do is post and then we have to include the ID also. Okay, so if we, if we go over to post, okay, and we're mapping over that. Now, to each um, to each of the posts, we have, uh, let's go to the post snippet actually, or the actual post. So the post, this is where all our posts are, okay? And one of the things we wanna pass be, be, besides the title and the content is the ID. So we're gonna say ID, and for now, we're just gonna use the same index as key, okay? Key is not something we can use, that's something that React uses internally. Uh, so we will have to create a new prop called ID, and now we can access it in post snippet. So in post snippet, now how do, how can we access this? We're gonna go props .idx. Okay, the ID. ID is what we named it, right? So ID, and then that should give us our link. So let's let's try that out. Let's see what happens. Post, and then there you go. That takes us to our post, and that's it. That's all it takes, right? So now we're in our main application. Okay, we have created a link and we have created our first route. So now when we go over here, we can see that it's post. So how do we know we're actually in the right article and we're not just taking to the same page? Well, let's do something. When we actually pass the post snippet and we are in the post, so remember the post snippet uh, and the post, because of that ID, okay, let's go to our mock API and then let's do something uh, as well. So let's give the mock API, let's add a new property, and then let's call it ID, and then we're gonna make this one zero, okay? And then the next one is gonna be one, two, three, and four. Perfect. So now, now that we're there, let's go into our post snippet, and now we're saying, hey, post, post ID, read through article, but now we're in post, okay? So now that we're in post, we're like, okay, we have this ID that uh, we can access, and let's see how we can access it, okay? So we're gonna come up here, and we're gonna say, 
uh, console log props. So let's see once once we're in post, what what's what what are the props that we have uh, access to? And one of the, the props you can immediately see it's ID one. Okay, so we have access to ID one. Perfect. So okay, that's all good. So here's another way, especially when to, when you're working with APIs and um, you're not just sending information from one component to the next. This is another way to access information. So now that we have an ID and we have the mock API, let's actually, okay, let's um, let's import API from what do we want to import it with? From mock API. Perfect. So and uh, one of the things I want to introduce you to now is uh, the React state uh, management uh, section. So state management. What is state management? We have we can send information from one component to the next. But another thing that's uh, that's great about React is that each component can handle its own state. Okay, and uh, that's fantastic. So let me show you what that means. And pretty much its own state means that it can handle its own information, its own updating of information. Uh, and it can handle its own uh, fetching of information. Okay, so let's let's see how we can do that. And instead of having this big block over here, okay, let's see how we can access that from uh, from the API. So in React, we're gonna need a few other um, a few other functions. So let's bring in use state and use effect. Perfect. And then what we want to do is we want to say const. And let's um, let's do something over here. Let's do const, and what we're gonna say is title. Okay, so this will be the the post title, and then we're gonna say set title, and then we, all we have to do is we say use state, and for now let's just say it's blank. Okay, and then for title, well we're gonna say hey, you know what? Um, let's have that be dynamic and. Uh, what it's gonna say is whatever title is over here, that's what we want to populate with. Okay, and let's see if that works. So right now there's nothing, but we can change that to test. Let's test, and there you go. So that's now being dynamically generated. But the question is, how do we populate this? Okay, how do we populate our uh, our title? How do we populate our content? How do we populate all that? And let's make another one. Okay, called content. And then we're also going to set set content. Okay. And then for content, also let's uh, leave it uh, blank. And then what we want to use is instead of uh, going through uh, this, what we're going to say, hey, split the content, but we're not going to use that static content. So that kind of leaves our pose back to zero. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to rebuild this. Okay, but using the API and using the state management. Okay, that's that's our goal uh, for this section. So let's let's try to do that. So the first thing we want to do is there is this uh, function in uh, in React called use effect. So use effect is a function uh, part of the React lifecycle. So React before it renders uh, any component, it goes through a lifecycle of uh, functions that it goes one, two, three, four, and then the last function it does is the render function, which is this one. So let's use the use effect function, which actually gets run uh, before uh, before before your actual component gets rendered. OK, and now let's uh, let's see what we can do with this. Let's go. Uh, now, remember, if, if you remember over here, let's OK, let's go console the log and let's go props. OK, so if we go console log props, Remember, we have access to the ID, and the ID over here it's one. Okay, so we're in, we're actually in post one. Okay, so in use effect, I remember this gets run before. Okay, our components get rendered, so we're gonna say API. Okay, and we're gonna say let post equal. Okay, and then we're gonna access our API over here. Okay, and we're gonna say API and which. If you remember our, our mock API, it's an array. So the way we access array, this will be zero. Okay, this will be one. So if we go array zero, okay, API zero, it actually returns this. 
okay just this section that's the first section if we go array or api one then we'll get back this section okay and we'll be able to um we'll be able to see that by the by, by their title okay so just just take note of that okay so let's go back to post so now that we are in post we're going to say api and we're going to say props the id so props that id will be a number okay so in this case it's one okay so props that id and then we're going to say access of the api number one so we're going to say access this one okay that's what we want uh access to and then let's see if that's uh let's see if that's let's see what we're getting back uh console log let's do uh post and then we'll, let's console log what our um what our post is Okay, and if we see over here, we have post. Okay, and like I said, we, we put that little little label there so we know where we are. Uh, so over here, the first part that we uh, that we see, the first console, is this one here. Okay, so that's the props. Okay, that's what we got in our in our properties passed down to this component. But then in our post, which is coming from this use effect uh, function, what we have is access to our actual uh, component. Okay. So we have actual through the API, we access component number one in this case. And we're getting that one from here. Remember, post ID one, ID one, the title and the content. Perfect. So now, now that we have that, what should we do? Because still, if we look at our post, our post still is blank. So, well, you know, how, how can we fill that? So the way to do that is we're going to do two things. We're going to say, hey, we have to do set the title. Okay, we're going to set the title. And what are we going to set the title to? Okay, we're going to set the title to post. And then what What? What do we have access to in this object? Title. So post.title is what that title is going to be. Okay, and just like that, we see that that got populated with the title. Okay, second thing is we're going to say post.content. And then we're going to see that that got populated with the content as well. So content, uh, well, not title, set, whoops, got to write things correctly, set content. And because, okay, because we already had this function that we had created before when we were actually inputting things uh, statically, now we can delete this. And our component, okay, let's, let's look at everything that, that we've done here, okay? Let's go back. Okay, so now we have created uh, we have created a router. Okay, and we have a way to navigate our website. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, remove the the console here so we can have full, a full view of uh, of where we are so far of our little blog uh, post blog uh, app. So in our blog app, we have snippets of articles, and you know one thing we can do to these snippets is actually that same function. How about we do that? How about we go back to post? Okay, and uh, instead of, or, or post snippet, I should say, instead of props of content, what do you think we should do here? We should probably do the same thing we did for uh, for the post, right? So let's grab this uh, function and then let's repeat it. And, and another thing that, that would be a good idea to do, so instead of content, we're actually accessing it through the props.content over here. And then now we see that our posts are also uh, really nice styled. Okay, so everything looks much better now. So one of the things, since we're using this the same function twice, one good thing that we should do is we should refactor this at some point so that we're not, you know, we're not repeating code, right? So we're using it in post snippet and we're using it in post. Okay, so whenever you see that, that's usually a code smell or that's usually a sign that you should probably refactor that into its own function. That way you're not reusing it. But for now, it's fine, small function. I don't think we'll have any issues, but it's just something to keep um, our minds on, okay? So we have created a, a navigation, okay? This is the default route. So if we go back to our app, we have our default route, which is posts, okay? And within posts, if we go to over here, okay? Uh, we have post snippet and then post snippet is our card. That's actually what's rendering each individual post. So we're going to post and within post, we're mapping over each of the API, right? Each of our posts. And then within each of our posts, we have this link. 
okay? And this link, what it's allowing us to do is we're passing the actual path to the, the blog post and we're passing the ID that we're getting from props that got sent down from over here from post. Okay, so we're passing props down. Uh, we're saying read the full article. Now again, all these things that I'm doing now, just for standing reason, you can uh, you can organize your code however you want. I think this looks nice. So there you go. So we have our link, and then the next thing we're doing is we are uh, we're using the function that uh, that we learned about so that we can style those uh, those posts instead of looking like a big block of text. Now they are nicely styled. So two paragraphs, and then the next thing is we are going to. And, and as you can see here, we clicked on first article, right? And then we are in first article. And if we go to second article, we are in the second article. So we are actually getting to the correct place and uh, in post, you know, our posts are also managing their own state. So we created two variables, one called title, one called content. We created a way to set them, okay, set content, and then set title, uh, the initial state, which is what you have here. We put it to blank. So if there's nothing, okay, we wanted to start in, the, in a blank uh, state. Uh, then we access the API again. We, we got our post, okay, based on the ID that we passed in. Then we set the title, post.title. We set the content with the post.content. And one last thing, let's add a blank array. So the reason you add this to use effect is that React will re-render this uh, multiple times. So remember, one of the one of the things React does uh, in order to um, to be efficient is that uh, it, it works based on what, what you tell it you want to render. So once we pass a blank array, uh, we can use we will use this later, and you can read it in the React documentation what use effect does. But uh, th this is a way for us to update. So if, if we ever need to update the title or the content we can pass other information here that will actually uh, allow this to update. And once we're using the API, we uh, we will use that. But for now, we have created um, our navigation of posts, and we can actually go ahead and read each and every post. So yeah, pretty, pretty, good, uh, pretty good job. OK, so now we have our posts. We have um, kind of we can go into a post, and we have our routes. So what's next? How about we go and tackle uh, creating our, you know, using a database, okay? And for this, we're going to use Firebase. And Firebase, again, another one of these incredible services. Um, it's what I use to start all my uh, projects. There are different uh, sorts of databases, and we won't go into a whole database class about this. But, um, you know, check out Firebase, create an account. That's what we'll be using for, uh, for, this, uh, for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So... I already have a Firebase account. Just go ahead and create one. And then what you want to do once you have that account created, we're going to add a project. Okay. So the name of this project is React Blog. React Intro Blog. Let's call it that. Okay. It's that simple. Then continue. Okay. Uh, we are not going to enable Google Analytics for this. It's fine. And then we're going to create a project. Okay, perfect. So now that we have our project, what we want to do is we want to go into database. Okay. And then we want to create our database, Firestore. So the database for Firebase is called Firestore. So let's go ahead and create one. Uh, start in production mode. Let's, let's start in test mode. We'll talk about production uh, mode later. Um, okay, let's go next. And then let's go. Um, okay, we can use use whichever location uh, you like to use. It, it doesn't really, you know, it's it's fine either way. I'll just use this one. Click done. And then what it's going to happen, it's, it's going to go ahead and uh, Firebase is going to create uh, your database for you and everything you need. Okay. But before we get into that, I, I mean, really, and it's just that simple. That's why I love Firebase. And, uh, and and you guys will see all the benefits in a moment. So let, let me let me walk you through what we are going to get into next. So now that we have our post, um, you know, we're, we're kind of using this mock API. And this mock API is great, but again, it kind of feels like our application is it's a little bit of a play app. Okay. What would uh, we need to do if we actually wanted to write posts ourselves, uh, update the post, delete the post, load the post from an actual API? Okay, so that's kind of what I want to show you right now. 
and uh, that's going to be the next part of this. Okay, so this is um, really cool. We're also going to be uh, going over, you know, how to create documents in database, update them, search, all that. Okay, and we're going to be actually working with the real database. So let's go ahead and uh, and start that. I'm going to go ahead and remove all this. Okay, and then let's go back. Let's try to clean this up a little bit and then let's create a new component okay so let's think about it what is this new component going to be let's call it um create post uh dot jsx okay yeah let's call it create post dot jsx let's go with that if we need to change it we'll we'll just do that later so let's go ahead import react like we've done many times now from react okay then we're going to say const create post actually okay props and then export default create post perfect then we're going to go ahead return we're going to have here an h1 and then we're going to say uh, create post great now that we have this let's go to our app and uh just import this import create post from create post Okay, and this is usually the way I test new routes. So we're gonna change this to create post. And uh, the default route, okay, we're gonna change it. And then on our local, uh, on our server. Okay, so remember, we, we created a new file, so we're gonna go ahead and restart our server. Okay, let's restart this. And let's see what the error we're getting is. Okay, so it's saying that the post most have a path. Let's just give it a path for now. Uh, let's call this post. It's fine. And there we go. We're, we're back to create posts. So let's 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 think about what, what do we want this to uh this to look. So before we do that, actually let me let me grab something that okay and again this is also a code smell we'll refactor this later but uh actually let me go ahead and div okay put that there uh let's call this class name and we'll give this a class name of um create post create post container Okay, um, okay, this is going to be the create post. Okay, so that title doesn't need to be dynamic. And let's see here, oh, okay. Remember, we have to import it if we wanna use it. So let's just go up here and we'll be using this the page header. And there you go. Now we have the create post page header. And let's think about what is it that we want uh, for, like, what do we need to create a post, okay? If we look at our API, okay, let, let's go to our API. If, if I can find our API, here we go, mock API. So if we look at our API, what is that we need? We need an, uh, an ID, a title, and some content, okay? That's kind of what our, our, our API looks like, okay? So whenever we create a post, at least at, at the moment, all we have is a title, Okay, some content and an ID. Okay, so let's try to uh, to make that happen. So let's create a new div, and then let's give it a class name of um, post. Let's uh, let's call this. Like I said, na naming is, is such a big thing in in programming. Post. Um, Post input inputs 
container. Okay. So what we want to have here, okay, is the following. We want to say div. We'll make another div, and we say class name. We're going to call this the post input container. Okay. And then we're going to create a div and another div. And then I'll explain this in a minute. Okay, so the, the now we have these two divs. So what we want to do is we want to create a form, okay? And this form, let's go back to Ant. Let's see if Ant has anything for us. So if we go back to data entry and we put input. And again, React is really, really awesome when it comes to creating forms. Um, let's, the first thing we do is uh, let's create a basic one that says uh, just title, okay? So from also from ant we want to import the input container okay and then over here we're going to say um let's call this title so post title and then what we are going to do over here is we are going to use that input so if we go over here to ant they'll kind of just give us the code we'll paste it in here placeholder basic usage and then let's get these a class name so we will say these are uh, post input title and then we'll give this another class name that we we'll use later post input um, post input value let's just say post input actually because that is the input so let's see what this looks like so that's, I mean, that's kind of our form, okay? Now, again, it's, it's not styled, so let's let's do a little bit of styling here. Uh, so it doesn't look completely um, horrific. So H2, see how we like that? Okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. Let's uh, post inputs container. Let's go to our index over here, index.css, and let's, uh, let's give it a margin top of 20 pixels. See how that looks like. Perfect. So instead of a uh, basic uh, post title, and then instead of the place of there being basic usage, let's go ahead and give it a name of a uh, block title, a uh, post title, just to give our users an idea of what to put in here. Okay. So now we can write. Perfect. And then what's the other thing we need? The other thing we need is a uh, an text area. Right, because that's where our content is going to uh, go. But again, very similar to this. So let's just copy the post inputs container, not the inputs container, but the post input container. Okay, the individual one. Perfect. And then we're going to say post content. And then over here, we are going to grab this. And this right here, okay, so let's, instead of importing, so we've already input. Uh, input to input. So input apparently is a uh, it's an object. So this is called destructuring. So input dot text area would actually give us our text area. But one of the ways we can grab it, we can say const, give it a name text area, and get it from over here. Get it from input. Okay. So now we can use our text area. Okay. And then we are going to put it over here. And let's give it a six, maybe a 10. And again, this is completely up to you. You can you know, do it how you want. Uh, let's uh, post the input container. Let's see over here, let's go to our, if the input container, okay. Let's do the input and let's see, let's do a margin bottom, okay. 20 pixels okay and that looks, that looks pretty good. okay and that's pretty much it so once we have this okay and and then of course one more thing so what, what what's the last thing we need we need an actual button okay div um, let's call this class name and then the class name will be post um, input button
okay great and then let's go back to ant and then of course ant has a button for us let's let's look for that let's see if we can find it right here we go and pretty simple let's uh import it okay so if you want to use it we have to import it so now that we've imported it we're going to put that over here and over here okay and then we go back and then that's our uh, that's our button now this is uh completely up to you uh but what i will do is um I'm actually going to, let's see how this looks. I'm actually going to float it right. Okay, did, does that do anything? Yeah, I kind of like how that, uh, that looks better. And again, that's, again, totally up to you. Um, let's see, we also have sizes. So... Here we go. If we want, I want to make it a little bit larger, so size, and then we'll give it a large. So let's pass that property into our button, and we're going to say size. We're going to call it large. Okay, and uh, let's change what it says. So instead of uh, primary, we're going to change it to uh, post, uh, create post. Perfect. So there we go. Okay, so now we kind of have our um, our create post uh, form. Pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, but that's uh, that's all we need. So now the, the thing is this: how do we actually get it from this into our database? Okay, our database right now is empty. Uh, so let's let's do that. Okay, uh, but first things first. So if you remember, React. Is state okay so if you remember react it's all about dealing with state so we need a way that when we're ready to save it to the database uh, we need a way to grab that information and um, the, the way we grab that information especially for inputs it's each input has a on change on click a certain type of event okay so let's um let's see let's see what that means and and, and again this will make more sense when um once I show you, so let's go ahead and create a const, and uh, very similar to uh, to before, let's create a const called title, and then set title, okay, and then let's uh, use state, let's leave that blank, and then let's do the same thing for content. So th this this is gonna look very similar to what we did before, okay, perfect. So let's start with the title. So input, we have the placeholder, and then let's say on change. So whenever the input changes, whenever we are typing into the input, what we want to do is uh, we want to say on, we're going to create a new function, okay? And this function, what we want to call, call it is on title change. Okay, we, we can call it anything we want. Okay, so let's create that function called call on title change. Okay, which we are going to get an event. And uh, let me just show you console.log. And then, uh, yeah, console.log. And then we're going to say event.target.value. Okay, so let's just do that. And then uh, let's see what happens. So let's open up our console on our server. And you see, as I type, it's, it's showing up over here. So that's that's kind of what that does. Now, if, if we didn't have this, let's say we didn't have this, okay. So now, whenever we type, you see that there there is nothing happening. So there is no event being triggered, and there is no way for us to uh, keep track of the changes. So the what this allows us to do is for us to keep track of the changes. So what we want to do now is want to say, hey, if we wanted to dynamically instead of having a placeholder, let's say we wanted to dynamically. The value of this input, we wanted to say be the title, okay? And remember the title, we're getting it from here, okay? So title. So let's say that's going to be dynamic. So we have post title, but 
you see how it doesn't change? Because we're saying, hey, for this input, we want the value to be the actual value that's in here into title. So whatever is in title, that's what the value of this input is going to be. Okay. But again, right now, although we do have a function that's tracking our changes, we don't have a function that sets the title. So what do we need to do? So on title change, okay, which will get triggered on, 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 on every change. So every time we type on this input, this function on title change will get triggered. Okay. So now what do we want to do? We want to do set title. And then we want to do event dot target dot value. And then let's see what that does for us. Okay, so test. So as, as you can see now, we are actually tracking and updating the state of the title. So whatever is in title, now over here in title is being updated over here. Okay, so that's great. I'm just going to organize this a little bit, and that's the same thing. Okay, so on title change. So what do you think we're going to have to do for content? Pretty much the same thing, right? Okay. So let's create a function called on content change. On content change. And then we're going to set the content. So one of the things I like to do before, uh, I, I always like to know what's, what's the value being. Uh, I always like to console log the event to see what, what, what are we getting back, okay? Before I actually go ahead and make uh, any changes. So. For our text area, okay, if we go into ant and we go into input, for the text area, ant is actually going to tell us, hey, when this gets updated, it should work the same as a, um, okay, let's see here, value, okay, so on change. So on change should be the same as uh, as the input. So let's, let's do text area and then we're going to say, on change, okay, and then we're gonna do on content change, okay. So on change, let's see if we're tracking the actual changes, uh, event, and then that should be dot target dot value, and let's see if that's true. Okay, so there we go, and as you can tell on our console, it's being tracked the same way. Okay, so let's open up the lorem ipsum website. So we want to actually paste uh, a good amount of um, of gibberish. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our on change event, we also want to say the value of our text area. What do we want it to be? We want it to be content. Okay, remember we have content text here. So that's what we're going to set as well over here. So we're going to say set content. And we want to set it to event the target of that. Perfect. So let's generate that lower ipsum. And then let's paste that in there. And then we're going to do, and there we go. So now we've posted it, we've tracked the changes, and we know we've tracked it because it's being console, console logged out. And for title, same thing. So now we have created okay these two functions that and a form that whenever we change something on this input or in this text area they get saved to these two variables and we are going to see why this is important now as we try to save it to the um to the database so before we try to save it to the database let's create one more function call const on create post. Let's call it that on create post. Okay. And what do you think is going to happen on create post? So let's say, let's just console out and then let's console out um, and say create post. Okay. Just so we know we're inside of this function. Okay. And what do you think this is going to go? It's going to go right here on the button. So the button has a different uh, event that we want to trigger and it's called on click. Okay. So when this is clicked, we're going to say on create post. So when this is clicked, we want this function to get triggered. Okay. And let's see if that's true. So we're going to just say create post, create post. So as you can see, every time we, every time we click this, that gets triggered. Perfect. So let's see something else. 
um, let's console log at this point. Once we're, we're inside of that function, let's console log the title. And then let's also console log the content. Okay. And let's just do test. And then for this, let's write that. Okay, and now we're gonna do create post. Okay, that's what we're gonna click now. And we have, again, if we look at our console log, we have the first thing that's going to be console log is called create post. The next thing is our title, title, and let's see if that matches. Test, test, great. And then the next thing that's console log is content, and let's see if that matches. Yes, it does. Okay, so we have all the information now that we need in order to save to the database. Okay, so this is what uh, this is what we're going to be setting up, which is our database. So let's go on uh, and do that. So the first thing I like to do, it's uh, let's go back to our to our directory, and in the root directory, we're going to put we're going to create a file called Firebase.js. Perfect. Okay, and over here, this is what we're going to create, and we're going to put all our Firebase uh, data. Um, our setup data. Okay, so just like we did for React, Firebase has a little bit of a setup. So let's just go through that. It's pretty simple. Uh, what we want to do, okay, is we want to click over here after you create your project. Okay, we want to click over here and then you're going to go to project settings. Okay, it's going to take you to this page. Then we're going to click here on, on the web and we're going to create an app nickname. Let's create the nickname called uh, React Intro Blog. Okay, and then we're going to register the app. Now this is going to tell us a few things that we need to uh, to add to our uh, to our project. So the first thing is the script file. Okay, so this script file we're going to add it to our index. So let's go to index.html. Okay, and we're going to add that there. Perfect. And then we want to copy the rest of this, okay? And we're going to add that over here to our Firebase config, to a Firebase.js file, okay? Now, a few other stuff, okay? So we have Firestore, okay? So Firebase, there is a, there is a library that allows us to use their API much easier. And again, Firebase is one of these um, great libraries that has great documentation, and, you know, I suggest that uh that you get you know familiar with it but uh we can go to the references just so you have an idea and uh over here they can kind of explain everything that they do and they have great videos on this uh and it's it's really an amazing product so what we're going to do now is now that we have our config started okay we are going to do two things first we're going to import firestore okay so require Firebase slash Firestore, and then we're going to import Firebase from Firebase. Okay. We after we have the config file, so every Firebase project will give you this config file that we got. And then what we're going to do is from over here, what we've imported, we're going to say Firebase, the initialize app, and we're going to initialize it with this config object. Okay. Now after we initialize it, okay. The next thing we got to do is we want to export some of the stuff we're going to be using. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create this variable called DB. So this will be our database. Okay. And the way we access that is fire after it's initialized. So, okay. You have to make sure that this goes after the initialization process. We're going to say Firebase that Firestore. Okay. And then we want to call that function. Okay. So that, gives us access to our database and then a few other stuff that we'll be using later. We're going to say export. We're going to const off. So this is when we're going to use the login. Okay. When we log in users uh, later on in the, in the course, this is what we're going to be using. So we're just setting it up now. So we don't have to set up later the authentication. Okay. And Firebase again, will help us with this. We're also going to import our uh, export const firestore specifically. And that uh, is firebase .firestore. You don't have to, call it as a uh, as a function and I'll explain why we do this later 
um, and then we're going to export D as a default. Okay, what we're going to export as a default is the DB. Okay, so that's our database. Okay, and uh, let's see if uh, if that's that should give us a complete setup of our Firebase project. So now let's just let's see how we import this. Import DB from from where? Remember, we saved it in a file. So the file is Firebase. Okay. And that's going to give us access to our database. Okay, now parcel, what is gonna do is parcel is going to install all this for us. Um, and then we don't have to do anything. So just give that a moment and then uh, wait till parcel is done installing. Okay. Also, now that we have most of the, um, the setup to start posting or, or saving our posts, the next thing we should do is actually go ahead and do that. So remember what we had over here. Okay. When this button is clicked, then this function that we created over here gets triggered. Once this function gets triggered, and then we have access to the title, the content, and if you remember our mock API, okay, what we needed was a title, a content, and for now, we won't worry about the ID because the Firebase uh, database would actually create this for us. So we don't need to worry about that for now. So let's go ahead and start posting and see, um, see how that goes, okay? So let's go over here and then Here's what we're going to do. We're going to create the first thing you got to do when you want to create a, uh, a Firebase um, storage. And, and, and again, this is uh, outside of the scope of this class, but this is uh, more along the lines of data um, and how you want to structure your data. So depending on your application, you're going to want to study how is it that you want to structure your data. And one of the best ways to do this is thinking about how you're going to query your data. So querying your data is pretty much as how are you going to ask questions of the database later on? So if we look over here at our posts, okay, what do we know? We, we know that eventually what we're going to need is a collection, okay, that looks exactly like, like our mock API. Okay, so it's gonna have to look something along these lines. So once you start mocking out and you actually understand what your data uh, is going to look like, then that allows you and that helps you uh, understand how is it that you want to structure your data. And uh, depending on that, we'll go through some examples in the course, but uh, that's kind of what you want to think about beforehand before you start actually saving in your database. Now, another thing that I'm a big proponent is, it's um, you know just start doing, and uh, as you need to change your structure or as you know your app evolves, then uh, then worry about it as, as you go. You know, one of the worst things you can do is overthink it. Just start creating your application. And if you don't have everything figured out at once, that's completely fine, okay? But for now, we have a pretty basic API. This will work for what we're doing. So let's just go with it. Let's see what um what it, it'll do for us, and if we need to change the database, you know the the data modeling, then we'll do that when we get to it. Okay, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, let's go ahead and do it how it is. So let's create a reference. So what is a reference? Uh, let's create the the post reference post reference, and uh, let's let's make that a variable. And pretty much this is how it goes. So when you create, we, we have access. Remember to the database through this variable that uh, we set up as part of our uh, Firebase setup, okay? And this is why we export as the default, the DB, which is just pretty much Firebase initialized, okay? And then what we're doing is we're calling the Firestore function because the Firestore, uh, that's what our actual um, database is within Firebase, okay? And it's just one of the services they provide. Again, they have storage hosting and we'll be using some of those other ones, but for now, Let's just worry about the database. So again, we're we're over here. So let's create a reference. And the reference pretty much is where within the database do you want to save your information? Okay. And 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 Firebase, like I said, has great documentation. So if you go to Firebase, okay, uh, saving data, or let, let's let's put Firestore saving data. Okay. Then as you can tell, they have great videos. And I, I would um I would suggest that you know you watch those videos, 
uh, they, you know, they, they're, they're an amazing team. This is a product created by Google. So it's, you know, it's production tested. You're not going to have any issues. They have it pretty much for all languages you can imagine. Uh, so again, just a great project, great documentation. You won't have any issues. Uh, you won't run into any issues. Even when you have questions, there's a lot of support around this product. So again, just a great product overall. Uh, okay. So let's create that reference. So we're going to go, uh, the DB. Now that once we have the DB, it's the, the way you create, um, the, the way you save data to Firebase, it's based on, on these two concepts. One is called collections and one is called documents. So if we go back to our mock API, we have a collection here, which is everything within these two brackets within our array. Okay. So within our array, that is a collection, but that is a collection of documents and the documents are each individual ones. Okay. So if we were to save this on our database, let's, let's think about what would we call this? So we, I would say DB dot collection and, uh, just to make sure, okay. You always want to re reference back to the, um, to the documentation whenever you're not sure of something. So it is collection instead of collection. So make sure you write it. It's in singular form, not plural. So collection, we're going to call it post. Okay. And we can do one of two things at this point. So let's say you actually have an ID that, uh, you are sure that this, uh, post wants, um, that you want for this post. Okay. It, it could be, uh, let's say you're saving users and you want to save each user and the ID is going to be what you want to save the document as because, uh, you want to use the last name and the first name. And you know that no one's going to have, um, you, you know, that's going to be pretty unique. Okay. Or you can create a random ID out of, uh, so something else. But in this case, we don't necessarily, uh, have any reason to create a random ID. All that we do know is that we want an ID created for our post and, uh, Firestore can do this for us. So all we have to do is we can call the add function and there is a few functions. Um, if we go over here to the documentation, we can do the add function. Now, if we had an ID, so in, in this case, their ID is called LA. Okay. So, but it could be anything that you want, anything that's unique to your document. And then you can call the set method instead of the add method. And then it'll, what it'll do, it'll set that data to this document. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the way. And again, th the more you use it, the more you'll get used to it. So this is more of a, let's, let's just practice it. And then as you see it working, then you understand a little bit more what's going on and, um, and that'll become easier. So what are we going to add here? Okay. Let's, uh, before we create the reference, now that we have the reference, let's just leave the reference there. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to create the payload. So the payload or the data, you can call this whatever. This is the information that we're actually going to save to Firebase. Okay. So, and, and it's pretty simple cause we already have it. So all we're going to do is title and then what we're going to do is content. Okay. Now, one of the great things about, uh, JavaScript. So this is what we're calling a, um, this is a, an actual, um, an object. So most objects, if you're used to, uh, writing JavaScript, you usually have to put the key and then the value, right? So title. And then in this case, you know, we could say this will be document title, for example, and then the, the value of this will be title, right? And then we're going to say, um, let's just say information. And then that would be uh, content, right? So our blog would be uh, composed of a document title and then the information that goes along with it. In this case though, in uh, one of the new features of JavaScript, if your key and your value actually, so let's say we want a key called title and then we have a variable called title that actually holds the value. So the key and the value are actually the same in this case and the same thing for content then you don't have to write the key and the value. You can just write title content. And then what will happen is, and then I'll just show you, let's just console log this so we can see it. Okay. And then let's go back to our application. And when I click, let's go test and then let's, um, let's copy some lower if some here. And then once we create a post, you see that we have now an object. Okay. And the object has, two, two keys. One is called content and one is called title. And the, uh, the, the value for each of them 
is exactly what we have stored right over here in our variables. Okay, so that's uh, that's how you can see what it is that you're going to save. And again, this is a, a normal process for me and uh, for a lot of developers. Just you know, get used to console logging things out to the to the console, so you can see what it is you're working with. Whenever you're you're uh, debugging something and something's not working correctly, go ahead and console it out. Uh, see where you are in your data. See where you know what what mistakes, and then that'll usually allow you to uh, to see where the mistake is very easy. Okay, so seeing the data um, helps a lot. So just get used to console logging. I do it a lot, um, and again, it's just it's just a great um, habit to get into. So now that we have okay the information that we want to save uh, to the database, and now that we have also the um, the actual place in the database where we want to save it so it's we're going to save it in a collection called post then the next thing we have left to do is just um just create it and just save it i mean so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to go post ref okay dot so we already have the um, kind of uh the the route in the database where we're gonna where we're gonna save this so that's saved in post ref and all we're going to do is we're going to say add and then what we're gonna add is the payload. Okay, now just for good measure, let's, uh, if we go over here to documentation for uh, for database, what we can see is that once our data is saved, uh, we can call a then function just so we know that it's been saved. So how about we do that, okay? So that we can have some feedback and um, and then we know what our what our data went, uh, was saved to. And let's see if we can do Let's see if we can actually get the, uh, the the document ID as well. Okay. Okay. And and if we don't, here we go. Here we go. So, yeah. So once we add it, we have yeah. So what we do get back is a doc reference. Okay. So this is pretty much the document we save. And uh, what I wanted to show you what's the doc. What do we have here? The doc ID. So and this is this is important because this is what's going to allow us as you. So you can see here in our API, we need it to, to save an ID because we're using the ID, if you remember, for uh, when we pulled the, the blog post, that's what we're actually going to use to reference which blog post to actually show the user, okay? So I wanted to show you that um, Firestore actually creates this for us automatically if we're using the add method. Um, so again, so that's why we don't need to actually worry about creating one in this case. So now that we have this, let's see if it actually works. Okay, so let's go ahead to our application. Let's do uh, a post title call test post title. And then let's copy some lorem ipsum. And let's go ahead and create that post. Okay, so we created a post. I am actually not seeing the, um, the console log. So let's see if we actually, oh, actually, here we go. So it just took a little bit. So it says documents is actually written, and now we have our ID as well. Okay. Now if we go to our database, let's refresh this. Now once we refresh it over here in our database, we can see that we have a new collection called post. Okay. Within that collection, there's a document, and that document holds our content that we saved. Okay, as well as the test post title, the title. Okay, and we can deal with uh, again uh, styling the content as we want. As we can see here, it kind of saved it all uh, as a big lump of string. So we're gonna have to, you know, um, work. We're gonna have to work with this kind of how we did previously. So we've already done a little bit of this before. Now we're gonna have to. Uh, so we'll do it again. Just something to note. Okay. So, but again, the important thing is we have a post. We have a uh, a new document with an ID. And we actually have our content and our title saved. So that's that's perfect. So now we're saving to database, and uh, and everything is working correctly as um, as we thought. So what what's the next thing to do? Actually, let's uh, let's fix the the content so we don't have to do that later. And one of the easy ways to do that, let's just go before we save this. Let's see what uh, what is it that we're getting over here. So let's console log content. And let's see if we're um, if we're getting it as a big lump, or we actually have to 
do something beforehand. Okay, so over here, it's actually separated by new lines, kind of how we want it. So let's try to save it that way to uh, to the database. And uh, how do we do that? If we're, if you remember, if we go to post, was it in post? Yeah, so here we go. So let's just save it exactly how it is that we want to um, query a bag from the database. And that's the best way to think about it, okay? So what we're going to do is, we're gonna say, before we save content, okay, we're actually going to modify it. So we're gonna say content split. We're gonna split it on the new line, map, paragraph, ID. So we don't want to include the ID for, for this part, okay? And uh, let's see, do we want to, yeah, so we wanna save it with the P tags. And, um, and actually, yeah, let's just leave it with the ID. Let's just leave the, the whole thing. So that uh, so that we can just get it back from the database exactly, and uh, how we want to display it for the user. So with this done, so now if we console log again, console log content, then we should see how it's actually going to be saved to database. So let's uh, let's go ahead and tell our Mipsum. And let's see here. So let, let I I just want to make sure it's it's the the new uh, the new content and not the previous one. Okay, so I'm back. So I did a little test off camera because from uh, from what I understood, database preserves uh, how how exactly we save the text. And as you guys saw, and as everyone was seeing, we were saving the text with the new line. So it it actually does preserve it. I know when we look over here. At, um, at what the content looks like. It doesn't seem like it does, but um, but we'll see in, in, in a few that uh, that actually does once we actually retrieve it. So let's just uh, let's just go ahead and, and trust that Firestar does this. And uh, and if we need to actually um, update it or modify it in any way, then we'll go ahead and do that. So now that we actually have created our first post, okay, let's go ahead and try to actually pull that from uh, from the database. So how would we do that? Let's go back to posts, okay, in plural. So if if you remember, this is where we have all of our um, all of our posts, okay. So this is the this is what what we call in React the parent component, okay. So this is the the component that's going to pass down the information to all the children, and all the children of posts would be the posts. So let's do something, okay? And now we're gonna use a real API instead of our mock API, okay? So we're gonna use we're gonna use a uh, a new function called use effect, okay, over here. And then what we're gonna do, we're also going to import DB from Firebase because we actually want to query some of that data. So and then we're gonna uh, create two two variables, one called post, okay, and then set post, okay, and then we're going to also uh, use state, and we're gonna set it to an array, an empty array. So since we're gonna use state, we're going ahead and we're going to set that um, up as well. So remember, we have to declare what we're gonna use and then we can use it. Okay, so we're using over here use state. Say so we declared and we're about to use use effect. So what's use effect? As um as we explained before, use effect is one of the lifecycle methods that React uses before it renders out our components. So this is the perfect um this is the perfect moment if we need to make any API calls, if we need to you know do any setup before we render out to the user, this is kind of where we do that. So let's do that right now. So we're gonna go ahead and do use effect. Okay, with the function, we're gonna provide it a function. And remember that we always put an, an at first we put an empty array. For now, we don't need to update it, but uh, in, in later use cases, we'll see where this comes in handy. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and put an empty array there. And uh, let's, let's call that uh, the database. So let's see if we can actually make a database query. Okay, so let's, again, let's create a ref. This will be the post ref. Okay, and we have to, declare db.collection 
And if we remember, is is it post or post? Let's see here. Post. Okay, with a plural. Perfect. So post. So and that's pretty much all we need to do. That's exactly where all of our posts are, right? That's the that's the location in our database. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say post refs dot get. Okay, so we want to get it first. We have to call the get function. And then after the, the get function, then we get a then call. So once we get the data, then we have it. And then we have a query snapshot. So a query snapshot pretty much is, it's pretty much all of our data. Okay, it's a data dump of all of our data. And what we're going to do is, is that Firestore is going to return to us each, um, each document in our post individually. And we'll get to see that now. So let's just go through it. So what we wanna do is we're gonna loop through it, okay? Uh, the reason we wanna loop through it is so that we can see each individual post. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to set it over here in set post, okay? So we're gonna go query snapshot, okay? This is again, query snapshot, imagine. This is, right now, I know we only have one post in our collection, but imagine we had 10. So what this query snapshot, represents let's just you know let's just call it what it some something more declarative so so we don't forget it's all of our posts okay post collection that's what it is so for the post collection firebase firestore has a function that says for each so this is very similar to a function we used previously map so for each and map are kind of synonymous uh there's there are differences uh and um you know maybe we'll make a course later on about that but uh, Firebase has gone uh, with this method. So it's very similar to map, okay? It's just gonna go over our collection one at a time. And then what it's gonna give us is gonna give us a post. Okay, so we're going over our post collection and then individually what we have access to is an individual post. And then let's console log it out, okay? And the way we get the data from um, from each of the posts while we're, re while we're querying uh, Firestore is the following way. So let's just say let data equal post dot data okay so we call data on the document okay and then that gives us our data and then we're going to save it to uh, a variable called data and then we're going to go ahead and console log that out and then let's see let's see if we actually get uh what we expect so let's go to post okay if you remember in our uh in our routes we we have a route called post so let's go there okay and let's see if, uh, and over here. So over here we are apparently, we are getting an error in one of the P elements. Not sure where that's coming from. We'll check that out in a bit, post snippet. So in the post snippet, uh, we will check that out in a second. But if we look down here, okay, we can see this is the data and we can we can make sure it's the, the right one. So let's console log. And let's write this is the post. Um, this is the post. Okay, so let's clear that out. And here we go. Okay, so we know this is the post. So that is the data we're getting back from Firestore. Okay, so if we see, what do we do? Very similar to how we created the post. Okay, we created the reference. Okay, which uh, all we had to do is say, hey, here's where we want to save it. Okay, in this collection, we want to add this new document and then. We get the doc ID, and then when we go to post, okay, which remember, the reason we're putting it in post, okay, if you remember how data flows in React. In React, data flows from one component to the next. So we're gonna pass some of this data to the data snippet uh, component. And from the data snippet component, the most important data that we need to pass, if you remember, okay, is the ID, because once we have the ID, then we can retrieve the content, where? In our actual post, and then that's what we can show our users. But for now, we have our data, okay? And uh, another thing that we want to do is we also gonna need the ID, okay? So how do we get the ID? We're gonna get the ID from, okay? And remember, this is called destructuring. So we're gonna get the ID from post. Okay, so if, if another way to do this will be the following way, just so, just so you can see the difference. We can just say ID and then we call post.id, okay? But since, as you can see, this dot ID and this variable that we're calling, we could call this variable post ID. Okay. Now they wouldn't be the same, right? Because this one's called ID and this one's called post ID. But since we can name this variable anything we want, 
if we name it the same as something as one of the properties in an object, then we get to destructure it. And then all we can do is all we have to do is call post. And this comes in handy right now. We only have one um, property that we want to get from this object. But if we had, let's say name content, all this, instead of having to declare each of them individually, we can just destructure it and, uh, and then save ourselves some time. Okay. So let's just make sure that again, it's always good to make sure and double check that you're getting the data back that you need. So let's uh, refresh over here and, um, and then let's see if, uh, what we're getting is the, the right information. Okay, so we have content and over here we have the ID of the post, which is the most uh, the most important thing we uh, we needed. So what we're going to do is, okay, we are going to say uh, the data object, which we have over here, we are going to modify it just a bit. Okay, so we're going to say um, let payload equals ID, okay, which we have here and we're also going to say everything else. So this is also part of a new JavaScript feature. So we can just say data. So because data, if we look in here, data has two that two keys, content and title. If we do dot 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 the spread operator, this is called the spread operator. What it'll do, it'll spread these two keys or how many ever they have into one um, into the whole object. Okay. So now we have we should see and and again we can test this. That now, if we console log payload, instead of having two two keys, we should have actually three keys, and the keys are content, ID, and title. Okay, so now we've added all we've done uh, really is add ID to the data we had already gotten from uh, from Firebase. Okay, and uh, that's perfect. So now the next thing to do, well, what would be the next thing to do? Okay, so let's uh. Let's clear uh, all these console logs. So the next thing to do is actually to set it, okay, in our uh, in our collection. So how can we set that? Let's uh, let's go ahead and do set post, okay. And um, if we had any posts, which at this uh, at this uh, moment we don't, we can actually provide a function to the set post method, okay. So any of these uh, posts and set posts that we're using with use state. We can provide a um, we can provide an actual uh, method. So what we want to do is what we want to do is very uh, something similar to what we did over here. So imagine that we had already three posts. Okay, imagine we had five posts and we wanted to add a six post. So this is called concatenation. Concatenation is simply adding something to the collection. That's all it is. Okay, we're just gonna add something to the collection. So again, we're gonna get the collection of posts. Okay, and we're gonna say, hey, you know what? Whatever was in post, uh, leave it there. Okay, so if it was, if you had uh three three posts, that's great. Leave it there. All we want to do now is add a new one, and that new one's gonna be called payload. Okay, and then if we just let's console log over here. Okay, let's console log what our post variable has after we uh we get it from firebase and let's see we're getting an error here it says payload is not defined let's see here what did we do wrong paid well you gotta spell it right okay so payload okay let's refresh it and if we look over here our payload actually has one um our post okay so it has a content the id and the title so now that we're getting the data okay so we got the data back okay we modified it, so we added the ID, and then we set it to this variable called post. So now in our post variable, okay, we have something very similar to our mock API, okay? But instead of our mock API, which is something we created and it's static, okay? Now, whenever we create a post, we can actually retrieve it from the database, set it, okay? And we have it now stored in our variable. Okay, and again, this is most of uh, most of what you're seeing here, which is what I want uh, you to get used to. This is the pattern in programming. Okay, you want to get some data that uh, some user inputs some data somewhere within your site, okay, or your application. 
You want to save it somewhere and then you want to be able to retrieve it. And that in a sense is a lot of what programming is about. Okay. It's about moving data around. It's about modifying data. It's about uh, displaying data. That's what it's about. Okay. So if you get that concept wrapped around your head and all these exercises that we're going through, that's, you know, although it might look a little bit different here and there, if you really think about it, and if you look at everything we're doing, that's pretty much all we're doing. Okay. We're saving some data. We're getting some data. We're modifying some data and we're displaying some data. Okay. So get those concepts, um, wrap, wrap your head around those concepts and you'll have a, a great understanding of what programming is all about and it'll become really simple. Okay. It'll become really easy and something that, uh, that you can manage. So as you can tell, this is not something that, uh, that, you know, it's rocket science. This is something that, uh, that you can do. And, and again, I think it's a, it's a great skill. So, okay, let's move on. And now instead of post snippet, instead of actually mapping over our mock API, which we, uh, which we created ourselves, let's try to uh, map over. Let's replace this with post and let's see what happens. And again, the ID, we're going to go article ID, because remember, we actually have a save within our post. We can actually replace this and I'll call it post. We can leave it as article. It doesn't really matter. Okay. This is just, this is a arbitrary variable that we get to pick ourselves, but what we cannot pick ourselves is okay. This, this post that we have here that we're mapping over, it's again, this post. Okay. So let's save that. And now let's see what we get on our view. So instead of having 10 posts, which is what we had over here, because our API had about five posts. Now we only do have one post which is fine, right? Because that's exactly what we have in our database. But if we see over here, because of the way we saved our data in our, uh, in our database, okay, it's the same as the way we had it in our mock API. We have the test post title, okay, which is what we saved it as, okay? If we go to title over here, test post title, and we have our lorem ipsum that we saved ourselves, okay? So perfect. Now, again, now over here, we're showing the, the full, um, the full, all the paragraphs, so kind of the full post. And the way we had it, that this was a snippet, right? The, the, the whole idea was that we didn't want to show the, the full post over here. And we just wanted to show kind of a snippet to get the, give the reader an idea of what the post was about, but only once they actually click on read full article, did we want to show the, the full article. So let's see how we can, uh, let's see how we can solve that. So let's go to low dash and low dash has a trim, um, a trim function and let's read what trim does removes leading and training white space or specified characters uh, from string so let's see if trim is actually what uh, what we're looking for let's see here what other functions um low dash has okay so i actually looked around and it turns out that javascript has its own function so we don't even need to use low dash for this and the the function is called substring now one way again that um that you can find this out is just look up okay uh learn when you're programming whenever you're solving something that you don't know uh you know just do a search and most likely there has been someone who has dealt with the same issue that you're dealing with or has solved exactly what you're trying to solve okay so i i searched for low dash only display part of a string turns out another uh great documentation science uh mozilla so mozilla um actually is one of the one of the I, I think they're they're part of the committee that actually writes part of the JavaScript spec. So they have great documentation on all the functions that JavaScript has. So this function called substring is what we want. And what we have to um supply this function as arguments is kind of we want to show from you know from like the first character and we just have to choose an ending character. So let let's try it out and let's see how how it works out for us. So we're going to go substring. So we already have the content here, right? Remember content. That's why it's this plain, this whole kind of article, but we want to trim that down. Okay. So we're going to go substring. So only show of that whole string a subsection. Okay. That's kind of what we're telling it. And let's show the first, I don't know. Let's show the first thousand characters. Okay. Let's see how that, um, how that works for us. And that looks, you know, that looks very similar to what we had. You know, we're only showing the first thousand characters of whatever our post said. And once we click on read for article, let's see over here if um, if this actually works. Now, again, uh, this shouldn't work. And simply, why do you think it's not working? 
Okay, well, because remember, now that we're actually pulling information from our database, we have to set that up as well in our post. But as you can notice here, one of the things I want you to notice is that we did pass the ID. Okay, so we have that ID that we needed from, okay, that we were using in our mock API. Remember this, this ID that this is how we're going to identify which specific post to pull from the database. We passed that around uh, and we got it, if you remember, from, um, let's go back to, to post over here. Okay, that's what we needed it over here in our payload. And that's why we uh, added it to our data. Okay, so we're passing the ID around. We're, again, we're modifying the content on, you know, once we show all of our posts, once we have that, that collection that we want our, all our, we want our users to see all of our posts, but we don't want them to see the whole post. We just want them to see a section of it. We're modifying that over here with substring. And again, just for, uh, so it looks nicer. You can, uh, you can structure this however you want. So we have article, the content, the substring, and then we're saying show character from one to 1000. That looks pretty good. We're passing our ID around article that ID, which is we got access from mapping over these posts. So now let's go to post and let's see what, uh, what we have to do over here to actually get this working. So remember now we're you, now we're actually getting data from our database. So what do we have to do instead of, again, instead of using our API, we're, we have to import our database now import DB from, and we have it over here in Firebase. Okay, great. So we're going to do something very similar to this. Okay. So if you remember when we were getting it from our API, because our API was static. Okay. We get, we did API and then we got the ID that we got from props.id, which is, you know, if we go back to that post is this ID over here, but now we're going to use that same ID, but we're actually going to get it from the database. Okay. So let's see how we're going to do that. Let's first create the database reference. So let, uh, post reference. Okay. Post ref. And now instead of, you know, if we go to post and we go back over here, we have post reference, but since we actually want one specific post, we don't want the whole collection. We just want one. We go post ref dot collection. Okay. Let's see if I spell that correctly collection and the collection is going to be the same one. Okay. So remember all of our posts are in one collection called posts, but we actually do one, one specific document within that collection. And which document do you think we want? Okay. We want this document props.id. Okay. That's the document that we want to pull out. Okay. And I'm going to organize this a little bit. Okay. So now that we have our, that's, that's where our post is. Okay. And I forgot to put DB. So db.collection.doc. Okay, and for those of you at home that caught that, good job. <laughs> um, so again, so now we have, hey, this is the reference to our post, okay? Whereas if we go back to post, we were saying, hey, this is the reference to our post collection, to all of our posts. But now we're not saying that. Now what we're saying, hey, hey this is the reference to one specific post, okay? This is just the post we want, okay? Perfect. So now let's, before we set the title and the content, let's just make sure we do the following. So we actually have to get it. So now that we have the reference, we actually have to get it. So we go post ref dot same thing, get, okay, dot then. And, but this time, since we're actually just getting one document, remember, we're not going to get back a collection. So all we get back is a doc. Okay. It's very similar when we were in post. Okay. And we were doing this for each method. Okay. And then one, only once we did the for each method. So once we got the collection and then we went over each of the items in the collection, we were able to get access to the, the individual post in this situation. Okay. In this instance, uh, since we're only getting one document, we have access to it immediately. Okay. So we get the document, then we actually have access to it immediately. And then all we got to do is the following. We're going to set let data equal dot dot data. Okay. And then let's console it out. Let's just make sure that we are actually getting the information that we want back. Okay. So as we can see over here, now we're in our post. Okay. It's still not showing anything. Okay. But we do have the content and the title. Okay. And we were able to get that because we had the ID. And remember 
we're passing the ID down from the parent component to the child component over here in post. Okay, so that's that's how we set that up. All right, now now that we have data, the next step is to do exactly what we had we had done before. So we're going to move this instead of from being out here, we're going to put it right in here. Okay. So we have this data. And because we have this data, instead of saying data, remember what we call destructuring. So we know that inside of this data object, we have two things. One is content and the other one's title. So that's all we have to do. We just have to say like content and title and get it from where? Get it from over here, the data. Okay. So when we set the title, instead of saying post.title, all we have to say now is, hey, you know what? Content, title. We, we have those two variables declared, set the title, set the content, and now let's go back to our post. And just like that, we have our post working again. Okay, so now what have we done over here? We have, okay, let's go back to our, our default view, which in this case, we have it being the create post. And let's create a, a new one. Let's create a new one to see if this works, okay? So now that we have one, Let's create a second one. So we're gonna call ahead and call second post title. Okay, and let's uh let's do again some lorem ipsum. We should see the difference, although the lorem ipsum is the same. We should the we should see that the title does change. Okay, and let's go ahead and create that post. Okay, and if we go over here and we open up our console, we should see that it's saved. Okay, now again, as a good UI experience, and we'll go over this in a moment. We want to clear this out and actually probably take the user back after they create a post. We should, you know, give them actually some uh, feedback that is like, hey, you know, the post has been created and uh, maybe taken back to uh, to the post section. But for now, let's see and let's do that manually. Let's go to post. OK, and remember, it's going to take a little bit now because we're, we're not actually getting it from our a static API that was just uh, sitting right there in our uh, in our files. We're getting this from an actual uh, service online. And we see here that we have test post, second post. Okay, so this is the, the latest one we posted. So if we go and read the full article, so as we can see here, we have our two posts. We can read the first one, and we see that we have test post title with our, uh, our Lorem Epsom. And if we go to the second post, let's see if we actually see the title uh, be different. And that should tell us that we are in the second post. And the second post, again, does show the title being different. And we're pulling all this information from our database online. So that's great. That's fantastic. We've created a post and we're uh, pulling from our database. Uh, and that's, you know, that's, I mean, that that's a huge feat. Okay. So now you, you've pretty much created at, at this point, a full functioning application. Now we're going to add a little bit more things to it, but, uh, you know, you should be proud of yourself. This is uh this is a big step. Okay. You're, you're creating the application. You are using React. You're um, sending, you know, information from one component to the next. You're saving to a database. You're creating the post. You're loading the post. You're getting the data back. And now uh, let's get into updating it and, you know, some um, a little bit making the user experience a little better. Okay. Okay. So next, let's do uh, let's do a few things. When we create a post, uh, what you saw is that. A few things happen, right? The information kind of stay there. So there is no real feedback letting our users know that the post has been created. Uh, second, it kind of just stays there. You know, one of the things that we might want to do is uh, take the user back to maybe the post um, uh, view instead of keeping them here since that post has been um, has been created already. And then that will be a, a nicer user experience. Another thing that uh that we want to create maybe it's a it's a navigation right because right now this is the default view but really we want the post to be a default view and then get to this page only when someone actually wants to create a post okay we don't want to actually have this being the page um that uh that's the default one okay so so let's do that so the first thing we're gonna want to do let's go back to let's go back to the post okay and right here where we actually go ahead and create that post. So after the post is created, then let's do a let's do a few things. Okay, we're gonna do is we're gonna set the title. Okay, 
set the title and we want to do this outside of the creation so this this function over here this is what actually creates the post okay and then after that we actually want to go ahead and uh and set the set the post let's see here let's see if we're let's see if we're in the correct place actually this is what this is what no no we're in the post section we want to be in the create post so yeah one of the things in programming okay you got to be careful one especially once you have components that's why it's so important to organize your your application in the correct uh manner so i was in post if i would have edited that then uh, that would have created uh, issues for us later on because I wasn't in the right component. So the, the, the right component is the create post component. So after, okay, the post is created, okay, is when we actually want to go ahead and do set title. Okay. So we have it over here and then we're saving that, okay. So outside of this, we actually want to do set the title. And what do we want to set it back to? Okay, we want to set it back to to being empty, and we also want to set the post, the content, to being empty. Okay, so let's uh let's try that. So we're gonna call this third post, and then again, let's actually do three paragraphs this time instead of five. We're gonna go ahead and post this. And you can see once we posted it, we can go over here to our database and we can see that we have the three posts, but we also, okay, have cleared the, um, the form. So this actually gives our users a much better experience, letting them know, hey, your post has been created. And there's other, you know, there's other feedback we can give them. We can create a modal, but this is just, you know, this is a simple way of, uh, of letting them know that uh that their post uh has been created and again it's very nice to not just leave it on the screen to actually clear the form once you're done so the next thing we want to do is we want to take them back to the post uh section so let's go ahead and over here in reach router okay we're going to use the navigate um component so navigate we're going to get it from reach router and we're going to let's just copy this Okay, and what, what Navigate does is, instead of us having to click on a link to actually go to a specific um, route, Navigate allows us to, in, without having to click on a link, to manually, okay, take someone to the route that we want. So we're gonna go Navigate, and then we're just going to say, we want to navigate to post, okay? That's where we wanna navigate after we, um, after we're done creating our post. And let's just make sure we did that correctly. And anyways, we'll see right now. So let's go ahead and create another post. And let's see, this this will be the fourth post. Okay. And then let's grab some norm ipsum. And then let's go ahead and create that post. And just like that, you saw how it took us back to the post um, view. One, two, three, four, and we have our fourth post. Second, test, third, and fourth. Okay, so took us back to the post page, and now we have a way to create the post. And once we create that post, so let's go, let's go ahead back to our to our main view. Once we create the post, okay, we're clearing the forms, and we're also navigating. We're taking the user back to our post view. Okay, and in our post view, again, we can see that. They can click on any of the posts and they'll be able to see that specific post. Okay, so the next thing is, why don't we create a navigation? So instead of, again, if we want to have the first page of our blog not be this, okay? We want this to be just something that someone goes to when they want to. So let's go to Ant, and in Ant, let's go to Navigation, okay? And let's create a menu, okay? And we, we, we want to create a pretty simple menu, so this one should 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 be fine for us. So let's just copy this code. And uh, let's go. Now, where do we want to put this? We want to put this over here in app. Okay, so remember in app, that's kind of the that's kind of the the entry point to all of our um 
to, to our whole application, okay? So that's where we want to put it. Uh, because if, if we put it here, then it'll show up on all the rest of the views. And we want the navigation to be something that shows up on all the views, okay? So depending on how you want to structure your routes and depending on how you want to structure your application, uh, you, you want to think about these things. So because all the, all the routes actually are in this component called application, that's a good uh, that's a good place to put it if we want the navigation to show up on all the routes. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is import from ant the components that we want to use. After I have that, then let's see. If we might use the sub menu. We might not. I don't think we will. But uh, let's just input it for now. And let's let's just copy all this. It's pretty it's pretty big. Looks pretty uh, intimidating, but we will deal with that in a second. So let's go ahead and create a div, okay? And let's give this div a class name of app main navigation, okay? And let's uh let's just copy this. And then let's see what we need and what we don't need. So let's see here. Let's let's just delete this whole sub menu. Okay, perfect. Let's try to, and then let's just keep these two first menu items. Okay, and let's see what that looks like. Let's go to our app. Let's open up a console, and we are getting an error. Let's see what the error is. Uh, can I repopulate handle click of undefined? So because we copy this code, uh, they have this on click event. Let's just let's just delete all this for now. Okay, and we'll add it later. And now we have on our app a navigation. Okay. Now again, uh, the thing is that we are in the create post. So instead of making the create post the default, let's create. Let's make the default. The post, um, the post view. Let's also give the create post a path, and let's uh, make that pass create post. Okay, and uh, let me just put this over here. So we have post, post, and create post as our routes. Then we have our navigation, and now, okay, uh, in our default view we have the um, the navigation and the default view being the post now what we have to do is we actually have to make these these go to the correct place very similar to how we did it over here with uh with our blog post okay but first let's change these menu items so that they don't say navigation one navigation two the first thing we want to do is we want to say post okay and the second thing we want to do is we want to say uh create post Okay, those are kind of the two routes uh, that we have right now. Okay, so we have post, create post. Now, Ant has great icons that uh, that we can check out. I don't think right now. Well, let's just see here. Let's see if there's something we like. But um, just so we can actually, th this looks good. Form. So if we put icon type form. It's just here. An icon is was one of the components we imported. Now again, we're not using the sub menu, but if we had a drop down, that might be something we we use. Um, and then for uh, for the create pose, let's go ahead and do the highlight icon. That's that looks like a nice one. Highlight. Okay. So for post, we see that we have an icon that looks again very similar to post. Maybe. Let's see if there's another one. Again, I don't I don't want to get too too, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh let's see if there is uh there's something here post. Let's see if we can just find something. Articles or something. I don't know. Yeah, and again, you can search through all these. They have, I mean, you can you can tell they have a ton. So honestly, um, you can pick whichever ones you like best. 
I think the ones we have now, they look fine, but they have uh, just, you know, icon after icon. So you can have your, your pick of the letter here. So let's let's go with read, actually. Read, read looks nice. Yeah, I like read. And then highlight looks. So yeah, these are our posts. And then this is the uh the one to create post. Let's remove this disabled. But if you wanted one of the one of the um, links to not be clickable, then again, all you have to do is when you come over here, and let's say we are in navigation. Okay. And let's go to, uh, what do we have? The menu. Yeah. Let's go to the menu. So if, if you go down here for the and documentation, it'll tell you all the properties that every single component accepts. Okay. And with these properties, you can style it. You can create the on click events on deselect. And, you know, they created a great, uh, all other components are, uh, are very flexible. So, just go through the documentation, get uh, familiar with it, and uh, that'll be uh, that'll be you know then you'll be able to find out everything you can do with it. But for now, uh, you saw you know you can put things disabled, not disabled. There, there's a bunch of things you can do without everything. I like to keep my applications but uh, simple. But depending on the application uh, that you're building, you might need any uh, any one of these features. So this is again, it's a great library that has all these things built in. So you might as well use them. So just get familiar and uh, yeah. So now we have posts and create posts. Uh, so now let's see how we are actually going to get um, one more thing I wanted to add is for the app main navigation. I wanted to add a little bit of a margin on the bottom, margin bottom, so it's not snug right up against the, the header. Margin bottom, let's do 20 pixels. And let's see what that looks like. So there you go, right? So now there's a nice separation between our pose and our um, and our um, between our navigation and our pose. Sorry about that. I was reading something. Uh, so yeah, now there's a nice um, separation between each of them. Another thing, I don't know if you've noticed, but I want to show you another one of the functions from uh, Lodash. If we go to our code snippets or our post snippets over here, okay, and we look at, not the post snippets, so let's look at post, okay, and post, if, if we look at the title, because of the way we've, uh, when we create the post, some of our titles are not capitalized. If we go to Lodash, okay, one of the great functions they have here is called capitalize. And um, this is just a great way, maybe not capitalize. Let's use uppercase, okay? Yeah. Or two upper. I think it's two upper, the one that we're looking for. Or is it uppercase? Let's see here. So convert string space separated words to upper case. Hmm. Which one do we want? Upper first. We, we, we don't want to make the whole thing. Um, let's see, capitalize. Come first, the first target is sent to uppercase and the remaining to lowercase. All right, this is, yeah, this is it. It's just Fred look. Okay, there we go. So capitalize. I said, that looks weird. So let's let's use it. Let's see if we have low dash. So we have low dash here. Now again, one of the things we can do here, when uh, one of the great things about um, one of the many great things about Visual Studio Code is when you're not using something, it tells you, hey, you know what? You can see that everything kind of is highlighted and this is a little dim. So because it's a little dim, we know we're not using the API anymore, right? We're not using that in anywhere in our code. So we can just remove it here from the post, okay? Because now we're getting our API from our database. Yay, us. Um, and let's go to title. Let's go capitalize. So it's underscore dot capitalize. And then let's wrap that in that function, okay? And now if we go back to our post, all of our posts look nice and they're capitalized, even though we didn't save, save them that way, okay? So that's uh, that's a nice little function. Just wanted to show you that. Uh, so now let's go back to our navigation, okay? So our navigation has posts and it has create posts. 
but it's not actually taking us anywhere. This is just, you know, it's like it doesn't do anything. So let's make it do something. So let's go back to app. Now in app, we're going to need to import something we've seen before, which is link. And in our menu items, let's go back to reach router, see if we remember how to use this. Uh, examples, basic usage. Actually, let's go to link. Link is what we're gonna use anyways. And link, again, if we remember, very simple. All we gotta do is do the link. And once we have, because we have a routes already created, okay, down here, all we have to do is link them to one of the routes. Okay, so let's do that, okay. Let's go ahead and do uh, link, and uh, let's make this one be the post link, and then we want to do two. And because post happens to be the default uh, route, we can do we can leave it like that, or we can actually actually name uh, give it the name of the route itself. Okay, in this case, it's the default route, so it'll be fine if we leave it like this. Uh, but in any case, it's nice to have it. Uh, that way, in case you have uh, some other page being the home page, uh, you know, just so you know, both ways, both ways work. And then this one, let's call it create post. And then that's actually going to take us to this path over here, create post. Okay. And uh, let's see if that works. Let's go back to our application. And we have a, we have a little 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 issue so you as you can tell our icons now are you know they're, they're they're not styled correctly so let's see how we can fix that so let's see if we can do style and then let's let's float this left hmm still doesn't look right um let's see link to icon uh if we float it left let's try to Let's see, maybe we can style this and float the the link right. Maybe that'll give us the way. You know, doesn't seem like it's so. Let, let let's see. Here. Let's let's try to debug this. Okay. So we have the post, then we have the icon. We're floating a left, but let's if we don't float a left, it seems like that works because we floated the icon right. Let's, let's see if that, that actually works. All right, that looks like it works. So all we had to do actually was float the icon, the link. The link had to be floated right, okay? And uh, and let's do that also for this, uh, the post one. And there you go. Now our icons are looking nice. Everything's looking <laughs> uh, back to normal and styled correctly. And again, you know, styling is outside of the scope of this class, but there are great, um, there are great courses on Udemy and, uh, you know, we'll be creating another one as well. That's all about styling. But for now, again, outside of the scope of this class, this mainly focusing on how to create applications, how to create, um, you know, specifically Firebase and React application to get you up and running. But, you know, very important to understand styling. Styling is a huge part of uh, not of programming essentially, but remember of the user experience. And when we're creating applications as developers, uh, the main thing we always have to keep in mind is the user experience, because at the end of the day, it is our users that will be using our applications. And a well-designed app, um, you know, it will do wonders for you. Okay, and uh, you know, there there are all uh, these things that go into styling. So again, outside of the scope of this class, but uh, I don't want to um minimize it and say that it's not important okay so just keep that in mind uh all right so let's see if this is actually working let's see if our posts on our links are working and if you look right down here okay right down here at least on chrome it shows you where where these links lead to so let's let's just click it let's see what happens okay there you go so it took us to our create post and let's go back to post let's see if that that actually works and there you go it took us back to our post so now both of our links are working and uh, and our application is coming along nicely. So what what do we want to do next? Okay, so what do we want to do next? Let's let's say that uh, so now we can create all these posts and that's that's fantastic. Okay, but but what if we let's say we want to change the title of this? Okay, let's say we want to change the title or let's say we want to change the content. Let's say we want to add an image or something. Okay, how, how can we do that? Well, let's uh, let's create another link over here. 
that allows us to edit the post. How about we do that? Okay, so it'll be very similar to create posts, you'll see. But uh, but in this section, what we'll be learning is how to actually edit um, an item, how to update it on our database, and then how to reflect that change back into our application, okay? All right, so let's see how we can update our post. So let's go back to the post component. And in the post component, right here where we have title, okay? Um, not the title, let's see here. We have the title, the content for our post, we have the page header. Let's go to the post snippet, yeah. In the post snippet, we have, so remember, yeah, here we go. Where we had extra, if you remember when we were reading documentation for Ant, here in the extra, they actually gave us a hint that it'll show up on the right-hand side, okay? So what we want to do is we want to add another link. Now, here's one uh, peculiarity of React. Whenever you have two adjacent components, so you see we have one link and then another link, uh, but it's not, you know, they're, they're, they're just next to each other. What React uh, says we need to do in order for it not to give us an error, as you can see over here, my console is screaming at me. Um, so what we gotta do is we're gonna create a div, okay? So essentially we have to create a wrapper, okay? And a wrapper um, is just, you know, a div. A div is a wrapper. And then this uh, allows for React not to freak out completely and uh, allow us to put two adjacent uh, components next to each other. And as you can see, and that's exactly the error that we were getting over here. Okay, must be uh, wrapped in an enclosing tag. Okay, and by us adding this div, that does the job. I'm gonna restart my server. Okay, but that's that's one thing. Okay, so just uh, be on the lookout for that error. Uh, you know, to most um, new React developers, it happens, and you know they're like, you know, what's going on? Uh, they there's really nothing wrong with their code, so it's a really hard bug to uh to spot but you know that's something you should keep in mind whenever you have two adjacent components this way make sure there's always a wrapping link and if you if you look you know across our code there is always that's why i create that's one of the reasons why i always create this first container also in our application right you also see that container so i always have that container and then i wrap everything inside that container okay otherwise react is going to freak out on you and uh, it's if you don't know what's going on, it's a hard uh, bug to uh, to spot and to debug, and it'll take you hours. Ask me how I know, okay? So yeah, now you won't have to go through that. So let's just give this a class name. It's always good to give it a class name because we need a handler for it later. Um, so let's just call this the um, post snippet links, okay? It's called post snippet links, and. Uh, you know, it doesn't look great yet, and let's actually change uh, their names. One will be the read the full article link, and then the other one would be the update article, okay? We can put update or edit. Whichever one uh, you like best is fine. Let's go with update for now. Okay, and see, we have update and read full article. I'm just gonna actually make this just more concise and I'm just gonna put edit because otherwise this is like, it's gonna you know, it's gonna look super long. So, but the thing is it looks, you know, although it's working, it doesn't look very great. So let's give it a little bit of styling for the read food article. Let's go to style and uh, let's do a margin right. Okay, and push it maybe 15 pixels. Let's see uh, how that looks. So there you go, right? Much nicer spacing. It's actually readable now. It's not all bunched up. And now we have our edit link and our read article link. The thing is, here's the thing. They're both leading to the same uh, to the same path, right? Because we don't actually have an update, um, an update component. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, let's go ahead and create our update component. So let's create a new file and we're gonna call it update post.jsx. And let's go because I will show you now that it's gonna be very similar to the create post. So let's actually copy this uh, this whole code and let's put it here. Now let's change uh, some of it, some of the names. So update 
what are we calling this update post and let's go down here and also do the update post let's see uh what else let's see what else we have the title so we're gonna need the title we're gonna need this we're gonna need pretty much all this we're going to need the the link because again if you think about it okay when we go and read the full article and when we go and edit the full article essentially okay we we're gonna need the same information right because if we want to read a specific article we need a specific that 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 article's id but if we want to edit a specific article, we, we also need the same thing, right? We also need the specific article ID. So so for both of these um, components, we, we actually need the same information in order to um, to update it or to read it. Uh, now, the difference being is that unlike the reading, okay, we're going to be updating it. So the updating part uh, looks very similar to the um, to the read the post part. Okay, so on that section, let's go to post Okay, and then um, and then let's go to also the create post Okay, so in the create post we have the form and everything we need for the form But remember in the post section Okay, what we actually do have is all the way that we actually do grab that uh, post and um, and we're setting so we're grabbing it from the database essentially, and then we're setting it. Whereas in the um, in the create post, we don't have to do that because when we're creating a post, there is actually no post to grab from the database because we're creating a new one. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to kind of merge these two things together. Okay, so in the update post, we're going to use the same code that we use for the post section to grab the article from the database, okay? So that's what we want to do, and we're going to do that first before all these uh, all these other functions. So we're going to need the post ref. We're going to need the ID. Okay, so we're going to need to pass that ID. Once we have that, okay, then we want to set the title and the content of our post to what it is in the database. Okay, so whatever we get from the database, we want to kind of put it back here in the title and the content. Whenever we change it, so this is what's very similar about the create post section. So that first section, right, very similar to when we're just at, in the post view that we're reading the article, but because we are in the update view, uh, then this other section comes in handy, okay, which is we actually want to update, you know, if we're going to change the title, we need that update to, uh, to be observed and recognized so that we can actually change it. And same thing for content. And then on, we have over here a function called onCreatePost. We're going to change this to to say an update post okay an update post okay and if you remember there's a button down here that we have that says create post but we're gonna say update oh let's actually call it edit post edit and then let's uh, let's actually give this the, the correct the appropriate name so that it matches and we don't get confused um, okay so now we have the edit post but here's the thing Remember, when we're creating a new post, there there isn't actually anything uh, for us to to update. Okay, so we're gonna learn a new uh, Firebase uh, command uh, function, and that'll be the update. How do we update a document on uh, on Firebase? But first, let's make sure that we are uh, actually getting the, the right information and that everything looks uh, good. So it's it's always good to check your code as you're making it. Okay, it's not. It's not a good idea to make you know 80 changes and then at the end go check because then you don't know what actually went wrong. So let's go step at a time and let's check our work as uh, as we go. So let's go back to app, okay? Because we just created a new component. Now let's restart our server. As we know, whenever we create a new component, if we don't actually restart the server, it won't recognize it. So let's go back to app and we just created a new a new uh, view, and this view is called. Uh, update post okay and the update post path let's say it will go to update post okay fantastic so now that we have we've created a route let's also import it here so if we don't import it here then we can use it so let's import it update post from okay from update post perfect so we've declared it We've created a route for it. We've given it a path, and now if we go to 
our pose section and uh, specifically our post snippet actually in our post snippet where we have this edit button okay now we know where the edit button needs to go so it needs to go to actually uh update so let's go here let's what, what do we do we said update post but actually update post is it's not just like create post because we're gonna need the id right just like when we're reading the post when we're updating the post we're also going to use that id to know what uh what post we need to update so the path uh pattern is going to be update post followed by an id okay so let's go back to post snippet and then we're going to say update post okay followed by props.id and we already have the props.id passed down from the post parent component Okay, and remember the way data flows. So in the post component, we're rendering the post snippet. Okay, and we're passing the ID um, there. Now in post snippet, we have access to that ID through the props. Okay, uh, argument that we pass into the component. So now when we are creating this edit link, we can say link to update post, which we created a new uh, route here, update post. Okay, with the update post pattern followed by the ID, which again, that's what we have here. And now let's save it. And let's see if that actually takes us to um, to the right place. So second post title, okay, that's the one we're gonna click on and let's click on edit. And let's see if we don't get an error. And uh, yeah, here we go. So again, looks almost great. The thing is that uh, we don't just wanna render it, okay? We want to do it very similar to the create post. And if you remember in create post, what we had were input fields, okay? So we want to do the same thing for update posts. But, uh, you know, as we can see over here for update posts, let's see if these are actually input fields. They don't look like input fields, okay? But but look, okay, so let's see why not. So if we go to localhost, if, if we look at our URL, when we clicked, okay, let's go back to post. So as you can see, when we click on post, okay, it's not taking us to update posts, okay? It's taking us to just post. So it's taking us just as we were reading the post. But we need, when we click on post snippet and we click on edit, we need this link to take us to uh, update post. So let's, let's just refresh. Sometimes it's just a simple fix. Let's refresh our page and let's see if those changes take effect. So if we go over here, now if we look at the URL down here, okay, let's look down here, bottom left we see that now the changes have taken effect. So all, all it was, we needed to refresh the page, the server hadn't updated. So now let's go ahead and click edit. Okay, looks like we're getting an error. Let's read uh, what our errors is. And this is, again, this is why it's important to check your work as, as you know, one step at a time. Otherwise, you know, you, you might not catch everything that's, uh, that's happening. So let's go here and see where our error is. So. This is the actual error, uncaught reference error. Use effect is not defined. So in update post, we are using this function called use effect, okay? But over here in React, we actually haven't imported, so we haven't declared it. So let's go ahead and just declare that. Use effect, and let's see if that solves the issue. Looks like we still have an error. Let's see here. Give it for occurring an update post component. On create post is not defined. On create post. So again, read the errors, and the errors kind of will tell you uh, where the um, you know what it is that we've done wrong. Okay. So get again debugging so important. So let's just click over here on index.js 83, and it should take us to the part of the code where where it's going on. So if we're on update post, it says on create post, right? So we have this unedit post, but over here on the input, when uh, when we click on the button, we never change the onclick event, right? So onclick, it says, on, you know, when, when you click on this, uh, trigger this function called onCreatePost. But the thing is, we don't have a function in the update uh, component called onCreatePost. We have that on the create post, but in the update post, we have a function called unedit post. So that's the function that we want to trigger. Okay, so not this one. Okay, we want to trigger on edit post because we are in the on update. We are on the update post component. Okay, 
So let's see. Uh, let's see if that solves it. And there you go. So now we have. Let's go back to post. Okay. Let's. We have the edit button. Okay. The edit button actually takes us to the the post that we want to edit, and we have our input fields and our um. And everything kind of works uh, as as we expected. Now now we actually have to update this component and see if the changes reflect in the database. And then back. Uh, when we go to post, we also want to see that those changes took effect. So let's go ahead and edit the title because it'll be the easiest changes, uh, easiest thing to, to notice. So let's go ahead and update post. When we click over here, this is where most of it is going to happen. Okay, so we, we want the post reference um, to be instead of DB collections post, we remember we want to update a specific document. So let's go doc. And then we're going to say props.id, okay? And let's make sure that that is, um, that is what we're getting from our props, which it should be since we have it over here in the URL. So props.id, okay? That's what, uh, that's what we're going to be using to, and let's say use effect. Yeah, props.id. So in the post ref, remember, we're going to get go to the collection of posts. Then we're going to say, hey, within that collection, I want access to this document, okay, with this ID, okay? Then uh, once we have that, then the next thing we want to do is say, okay, uh, now that we have all the changes that we have made, so at this point, let's say we, we change this to changes made title, okay? So, so the title at this point, should have changed, okay? And we can check that. Let's comment this out, and let's console log the payload, okay? You know, just to make sure that what we're actually saving to the database is what we want. So let's let's change this changed title, um, change title. So let's edit post, and we should see here that the title does uh, show up this uh, as the one we wrote, right? So if we look over here in title in that object. Uh, of our payload, it says change title for the title, and that's that's exactly what we had. Whereas before, you know, if we refresh over here, we haven't updated database yet, so you know it, it should, should just show us back what we have in our database uh, at this moment, which is second post title. So we want second post title. The next time, once we update it, in instead of showing uh, second post title, we wanted to show the title that we're going to change right now. Okay, so so far so good. Okay. Then we're going to say, hey, postref, instead of adding or something, okay, and again, whenever you have a, you know, one, one of the things, that's why you want to get familiar with the documentation of the libraries they're using. But, you know, if we go to Firestore, it tells us how do we want to actually, um, how is this done? So all we have to do is once we have the reference of the document, all we have to do is say update, and then we can just update the, um, the value that we want to update okay and that should uh that should update that value so we're going to say so if we have the payload and the content we're going to say instead of add we're going to say update and then we're going to pass our payload and then we can document successfully updated okay and then we're one again want to set it back to not empty actually because we are in the update so we're not in the create uh post component so we don't want to actually uh get it back to empty we want that to stay you know the way we changed it but what we want to do is we want to um take our users back to maybe the navigate uh back to post and then let's see if that change takes effect so now that we have all that now let's go ahead and actually make the change so changed title Okay, and then let's go ahead and click edit post. Okay, and now if we go to edit post, if you see our first post over here, what does it say? Change title. So that's the one that we just, and then if we go ahead and go ahead, read full article, we see that change title does take effect. Okay, if we go to our database, let's see if we can find it. Change title over here. Okay, we've updated that uh, that document, 
And now our blog, not just can we create posts, okay, but also if we go to posts, we can go ahead and edit them. And uh, this actually leads us, okay, into the next um, into the next section of our blog, which is you don't just want anyone creating posts, and you don't just want anyone editing posts. So who 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 do you, who would you want? Okay, editing and creating posts. Well, someone who has maybe access and admin access. Okay. So the next things we're going to do is we're going to deal with uh, authentication. Okay, and creating a login screen, a logout screen, and a sign up screen. Okay, so that are blog posts, and only admins can create a post and edit posts, but readers can uh, can read posts. Okay, so let's let's get into that. Okay, so now we have our posts, and everything is working fine. We can update them, we can create them, we can read them, we can show them. Okay, but you know, like I said. Now everyone can kind of edit our posts and that's not a good thing. Okay. So if you are not, um, you know, so the next step really is let's, uh, let's put a little bit of protection in our blog so that only authorized users. Okay. Only when you create an account, uh, can you actually go ahead and create a post and edit the post? Um, otherwise if you're a user, you can read the post, but you shouldn't be able to edit and, uh, and update them. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, and once again, we are going to use Firebase. So Firebase has another service called authentication. So again, one of the reasons why I wanted to show you, uh, you know, Firebase is because they have all these services that make it really easy for us to create apps quickly. Okay. And in development, uh, you know, at, at least when you're developing and you're creating new products, um, you know, the first one of the most important thing that trips everybody up is that you know it takes forever just to create the application and uh that's why with react and firebase and everything we're learning in this course you should be able to go from beginning to end from not having an app to knowing how to create it to knowing how to work with the database to host it to authenticate the app all this okay uh and th so the next thing yeah let's get into authentication and then that way we, we're going to be able to protect our app okay create login signups and uh, and after we have that then only those that are logged in or signed up will be able to um, go ahead and create posts and edit posts okay so the first thing we need to do is we we're gonna go to authentication okay and we're going to let's see here so we are going to go to sign in method okay and in sign in method there, there's I mean you can tell here you can have people sign up through Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, Yahoo, Microsoft, and they're constantly adding new ones, uh, even through Game Center or, or Play Games, so phone, whatever. You know, so however your app actually works, um, you know, pick the best authentication uh, route for you or, um, you know, authentication usage. Uh, you can have more than one. That's completely fine. Some people, uh, you know, use email password plus Facebook or, you know, some people use, you know, a, a, you know, a combination of these so let's um let's go ahead and for now all we're going to use is email and password so let's go ahead and edit this let's enable it and uh let's save it okay that's pretty much uh, all that's necessary at this point okay so let's go to usage actually let's go to users okay and uh see right right now we don't have <laughs> You know, we don't really have anything. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go react. And then let's clean this up a bit. Okay. And then let's create a new component. And then this component is going to be called signup.js. Okay, perfect. So let's import react from react. Let's go const sign up. Um, okay, props and let's export default sign up. Perfect. Let's create the container. So let's create a div class name. We're going to say sign up container. Okay. And let's go ahead and just say this is a sign up just to just to see if we're on the right track here. 
so let's do the same thing we did before. Okay, we're gonna make since we're working on it now, it'll be just easier this way. So we're gonna say sign up uh, path sign up. But let's make it the default route. Okay, for now. Okay, and let's make sure we declare it. Import sign up from. Um, actually, we already imported it. That's perfect. So don't need to do that twice. Okay, and let's uh, let's see if uh, we're in the sign up page. Okay, let's refresh this. And again, we haven't done anything yet. We just you know we just want to make sure we are in the in the sign up. So it looks like we are okay in app sign up. Okay, yeah. Remember, since we added a new component, we have to restart our server. Okay, don't forget that. Okay, now that it's built, let's refresh our server. And, huh, okay, we're still in post. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, okay, well, in our routes, we are in the post route. So let's go to the default route. Okay, let's see what uh, error we have here. So it looks like, so nothing was returned from the render. Let's go to sign up. And I think the issue is we don't have a return statement. So remember, every function must return something. Okay. So now that we have that, there we go. Okay. So we have our sign up um, component and it's all working. Let's go to uh, post and, uh, you know, just because it's nice and consistent to have this throughout the, the application since we've been using it, let's import that page header and uh, let's let's just copy it okay and again this like i said this is a code smell because as you can see we've now probably copied this three times so like one 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 thing that would be good for us to do would be to refactor this component into its own component and then probably all we would have to do is pass title along okay and once we pass the title it'll just uh kind of update but you know for now this is fine just something to keep in mind it would be good to refactor this into its own component and just pass it the title as a prop and uh, have it render dynamically. Okay, but let's uh, let's make this title be uh, sign up. Okay, and maybe that's something we'll do in a little bit. So okay, so this is a sign up container. So let's the first thing we need to do is we're going to very similar to what we did for create posts in a way. Okay, let's copy some of this stuff. Uh, so let's do create a div. Okay, and we're gonna call this div class name sign up container inputs. Perfect. So in create post over here, we have a great little post input container. So we have a great little uh, input container that we've already created that uh, we can probably copy so let's call this uh so remember what we're going to use to sign up uh our users is email and password so let's call this email and then for our email let's just remove this for now and let's put uh, a placeholder email and let's see how that looks now of course we're going to have an issue because we actually have not input it okay we haven't declared that we want to we haven't declared the input component from ant so that's the first thing we need to do. So we have email, perfect. Uh, for the sign up container component, let's dial it and let's have a uh, margin top of uh, 20 pixels. Okay. There we go. Okay, that looks nicer. So we got email and then what's the other thing we need? The other thing we need is password. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, pretty similar. So it's password instead. And then over here, let's put password. So there we go. We have email, password, and just a create post. Uh, we have over here a button of how we want this to, uh, to look like. So let's just sign up. And then we have to input that button, okay, into our 
our component so that it does render. So let's see where it still says. Uh, okay, so yeah, our button has a, so on click. Okay, let's just leave this for now and then we will set it up again now. So there you go, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? To create our, our sign up page, uh, that's kind of all we need. Uh, another thing I usually like to do is if they already have an account, okay, then what we need uh, them to do is to sign in. Okay, so it will be nice. It's within our, um, right here, within our post input uh, button. Let's just set this up now and we'll use it later. But let's create a div over here. Okay, and let's put this button within the div. And I'll show you why now. So over here, what we want to do is we want to create an href, okay, that uh, for, for the moment, it doesn't go anywhere. But what it does is, uh, let's put already have an account and then we're going to do sign in okay so we'll, we'll, we'll do that later but now what we want to do is want to style this div and then we're going to float this to the left okay, let's see over here uh, and then post input button so let's change this let's see if we have any let's go to our index and let's see yeah so that's floated right Okay, so instead of doing that, what uh, what we want to do this is the button, and then let's go to the sign up. So we want this, actually this class name. Let's just put it for the button. That's fine. So we want this to be floated right uh, still, but what we want is this div to be floated left, and then this div over here. Let's make it the width of uh, 100%. And let's see if that, uh, so there we go, right? So on the left, we have already have an account, sign in. Uh, if you don't, then just create an account and sign up over here. Okay, so that's um, that's a great way. Let's go ahead and um, even though we're not gonna use it yet, let's go ahead and create the sign in account, which is uh, the sign in component, which should be, which will look very similar to this, even though it'll act a little bit different, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So same thing. So let's go to components, uh, not new folder. Let's go to new file. And then we'll call it sign in JSX. Okay. And let's just copy. Okay. Most of the sign up. Okay. And then let's see what, uh, would we'll change what we need to change in a little bit, but just call this sign in. This will be sign in, uh, Again, to sign in, you'll need the same information that you'll need to create an account, except this time, instead of actually uh, creating the account, you'll be, you know, signing in. And uh, and then over here, sign in. Let's see, uh, already have an account already. Yeah, so we don't need, if you're signed in, what we're going to say is don't have an account. Don't have an account, sign up. Okay, and we'll sign up. Okay, and now we want to go back to app and we want to say, hey, um, this will be the sign in button. Okay, and the path will be sign in. Uh, this will be the default path. So that's, um, that should be, yeah, that should be good. And let's see here, what are, what are we getting an error for? Okay, so yeah, let's import that. Let's declare that uh, component up here sign in and then that's sign in reference error sign up is not defined okay let that should probably be in our sign in component let's see sign up let's see what we have that so that says on cover reference error sign up it's not defined sign up okay it's right here so remember we have to export sign in not sign up once we're in the sign in component and um that's sign in but if we go to sign let's see what we save the route as uh sign in so if we go to sign in then we should see that uh the sign in uh view okay which again does look very similar but you know some uh, glaring uh differences are the signing button over here and then don't have an account sign up right whereas if we go to 
our signup component. Okay, the header says sign up. Yes, the input form looks pretty much the same, but uh, it says already have an account, sign in. And then it actually says the button is to sign up. So there we go. We have the sign in view and we have the sign up um, component. Now, all we have to do is actually create the user. Okay, so let's go first to sign up and then let's go to Firebase. Okay, and then let's check out how to uh, fire, Firebase um, auth. So let's go to auth, authentication, sign up. So let's read the documentation, okay? Let's read it really quick. Um, we're we're going to use uh, sign in with email and password. So let's go to that. We don't we don't actually want to read. Let's see here. Attending. Okay. So there we go. Okay. So let's act in the sign up uh, page. Let's go ahead and clean this up. In the sign up page, what, what are we going to need? So we're going to need two variables. So let's go ahead and import use use state. Okay. And then let's create these two variables. One is called const. One will be the email. Uh, and then we're going to set email. Okay. And then we're going to say use state. At first, it's going to start with empty string. And then the other one's going to be password. And then we're going to say set password. Now, what, one thing I want you to recognize is that when we write our password right here, see, every, anyone can see this. Okay, and that's that's not a good thing. Okay, but if we go into, um, if we go right here into Ant, and then we go to Data Entry and we go to Input, we have a password box. Okay, and this is kind of how we want that input to to look like. So all we have to do is, we just have to put input dot password to make that a password uh, input. So let's go to Sign Up. And let's do that before anything else. Okay, input the password, and then in sign in, we're also going to do input the password. And now, when we go back to our app, once we actually type in our password, okay, it won't actually show up. The email does show up, so that's fine. But the password, okay, that's you know that should be private. So there you go. Uh, and again, Ant provides all this for us, so it makes it really easy. Uh, we don't have to do much uh, much work um, besides that. All right, so now let's uh, let's go ahead and read the documentation. So pretty much, once we have the email and password, all we have to do is Firebase .auth, the sign in with email and password, and then we pass in the email and the password, and then uh, we pretty much get a uh, success or error callback. So because if you remember when we set up our Firebase um, authentic uh, our Firebase configuration we created these two other variables and one of them that we created was this auth variable because you know i knew we were going to do this uh in a little bit later so now we already have this set up and all it took is firebase.auth and now we have this auth variable that we can use anywhere in our application so let's uh let's actually do that okay so the first thing we need to do is we need to do the first the same things very similar to what we did when we were creating a post so we're going to say on change okay and what are we going to say here on email change? Okay, so that's the function that we want to get triggered when. Um, and let's just make sure we're in the correct component. Otherwise, none of this will work. Okay, so let's go here, and we want to say on change, and then we're going to say on change. That's the function that we want to update. So we're going to say const on email change. Okay. Uh, we're going to get an, an event, a change event. And then we're going to say um, set email. And then we're going to set the email to event.target.value. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing for password. On password change, we're going to get an event change. Okay, an event trigger, and then we're going to say set instead of set email, we're going to do set password. Okay, perfect. And then we're going to say const on on sign up. 
Okay. And for now, let's just say console log uh, sign up. And then we're going to say, let's see if we can console log our email and our password. Just so that we know that we're getting the right information. Now, this 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 one actually show up in our production application. But as we're developing, just so we know we are um, we're doing it correctly. So let's just do test gmail.com and then let's do testing as a password. Sign up. Oh, okay, so on our button, we actually have to uh, wire that up. So we're gonna say on click, okay, on click, we want to trigger the on sign up event. Okay, perfect. What does it say here? On a handy problem, on click, yep. Did I put that correctly? On click. So there we go. So now when we go test gmail.com and then we're gonna go testing. Okay, it doesn't show up, but once we have the password, uh, we see that we have sign up being test at gmail.com and it's actually showing us that we haven't wire this up either so let's wire it up the on change for the password on change on password change so let's try that again test gmail.com and then test and then sign up and now we have testing or test at gmail.com which is what we wrote and although it doesn't show up here we know what we wrote was testing so that is correct so we have the two pieces of information that we need now okay in order to actually go ahead and uh, and authenticate our user and create a user in our uh, for our blog, so what we got to do is we got to import that auth um, variable from Firebase. So because it's not the default, remember when something's on the default. If we go back to Firebase, okay, our configuration, the default uh, variable that we exported was called DB. So that one we if if we were to import DB. All we have to do is import DB from Firebase and we'll be fine. But the thing is that this is not the action. All these other things that we imported, these two other ones, they're not defaults, right? So when something's not default, the only difference uh, that we have to do is we have to wrap it in brackets and then we can say, hey, get that from off. Okay, from, so from, from the Firebase exports that you guys uh, exported when we created that file, I want to grab the auth variable, okay? So, and again, it, we could have named it anything, but whatever you name it here, okay, since we named it off, uh, make sure you use that same name, okay? So that's all. Okay, so now we're gonna say, if we go back to the documentation, what is the comment? Let, let's just copy the documentation so we don't make uh, any mistakes. So the documentation says firebase.auth, the sign, sign in. So this is a sign in actually. So what we wanna do is sign up. So let's um, let's agree. We can get that. It's very similar, but we want to do sign up. Okay. So Firebase, I'll sign up with email and password. Let's go over here. Password authentication. So here we go. So let's remove this. We we'll use that later for the sign in, but for the now remember, since we already have this Firebase.auth, let's just use the auth okay, variable that we brought in. And then the function that we need to use is user with email and password, pass in the email, which we have here, pass in the password, which we have here, and we've already, so we've already stored it in, uh, in variables. Then if anything happens, so for for whatever reason uh, they weren't able to uh, sign up, let's just console log that out. Console log um, error in sign up. Okay. Let's uh, let's see if there's an actual callback so that when uh, when we actually sign them in or create the the sign up. Uh, okay. We'll do this over there in the in the app section, and I'll show you once an, an actual user sign up. Uh, what is it that we want to do, and how do we display different things based on whether user signed up or not? So let's just make sure that we can sign them up first. So, auth the create user with email and password, 
And because we already know we have this set up correctly, let's just go ahead and uh, test this out. Okay, so let's go ahead. And if we go to Firebase, okay, authentication users, we can see that we don't have any users as of right now. So there, there's no one that has signed up for our application. There are no admins, okay? So let's go ahead and change that. We're gonna go test at gmail.com and then we're gonna go testing, okay? And then we're gonna sign up, perfect. Now let's refresh Firebase and let's see if we have any new users. Okay, and there we go. So now when we go to users uh, in our authentication in Firebase, we actually see that we have that test user, okay, that we created, when it was created, when they last signed in, and their user ID, okay? So this, this, is, uh, this is all we needed to do, okay? So now we have our first user signed up, okay? So now what's the next thing we need to do, okay? So let's do one more thing, actually, which we've done before, but once they do sign up, we want to say, hey, set uh, the email, uh, back to blank. Okay, so let's just clear the fields so that it doesn't stay uh, stay with that information there. Set password as well. Back to blank. Okay. So uh, so there you go. And let's try to let's try to do something. Let's try to sign up another user with the same email. And let's see if uh... so as you can see, it says error in sign up. So. Firebase actually not just uh, signs up our users and authenticates them, it actually checks that there is nobody else with that same email that has signed up before. So we won't have to create any form of you know validation or anything like that. Firebase takes care of all this for us and that is a huge, huge, huge win. Uh, if you've ever dealt with uh, you know validations and things like that, it's, it's a huge pain in the ass to be honest with you and um, yeah, so Firebase does all this for us and um, and we don't have to worry about it. So there you go. Now we know that uh, that's also working, okay? So if there is an error, uh, also what we wanna do, okay, is uh, not just show the error, but let's also re um, reset the field. So let's, let's try it again, gmail.com, and let's call testing, and then let's go sign up. So it's gonna take a little bit. It's gonna say, hey, there's an error in the sign up, and it did not clear our, uh, let's see here. Did we do something wrong? Set email, boom, boom. Set the password. Um, let's just try it this way. Let's do set email, email. Let's, we can also pass a function to this and let's just set it to that. Uh, and then let's do password. So whatever the password was, we're saying, okay, we, we know there might have been a password there. Uh, we want to set it to, uh, we want to reset those fields. Okay, so we're going to say test gmail.com and then we're going to say testing, sign up. It's never good just to leave these things just um, the way they were, even even though that's you know not a big deal for now. And uh, for the user experience, that's not something that uh, you know that we want to leave. So we'll we'll put that, and this is what's called technical debt. So if you're working on a team, uh, what you usually would do is you will create something along the lines of something like this, and then you would say note, and um, you say need need to clear uh, fields if there was an error okay and then just leave that there and then someone knows that you know whoever comes and uh if you're working in a team they'll see this and then they'll be like okay need to clear fields if there was an error so that's not obviously not there so then this is a good way to communicate between you know you and your team and then let them know hey you know what this is uh this is technical debt this is something that that has not been done yet but uh it's it's you know it's something we need to do okay so let's just leave that there for now and then that leaves a comment for us to remember and we'll come back to it later but for now okay we've gone ahead we have created a user we know we cannot actually uh create two users with the same email so we don't have we've already dealt with validation and sign up and now let's try to sign in a user okay so that's the next step so let's go back to app and in app Let's make the default 
okay, uh, the default, the sign in page. Okay, and now that we're in the sign in page, let's uh, let's see what it is that we have to do to uh, sign in. So let's go to um, sign in, and again, very similar to the sign up. Let's copy these um, because we will have the email, the password, and an email change and on um, password change. So those things won't uh, actually change because we do have an email, and then let's put on change. Let's trigger that that same function, okay? And then for the password, same thing on change. And then we're going to trigger on password change, okay? This way, whenever we are uh, changing the password, um, it actually gets saved to our variables here, so we can use them later when we are about to const on sign in, um, okay? And this is the this is this is the function that will get triggered right over here. Okay, so let's go to the button and say, okay, when someone clicks this, we want to say on sign in. Okay, and just like before, let's just check console log uh, email password. Okay, and let's make sure that when someone uh so. Let's bring in from React, use state, and uh, use state has to be wrapped in brackets. And now we know why. The reason why it's wrapped in brackets is because it's not the default. So the default React object that uh, comes with the library is just the uh, object React. But use state is one of the things that they also allow, uh, allow us to export and import. But we have to wrap it in uh, brackets because it's not the default. So let's go back. And then let's go test at gmail.com and then testing and then sign in. And we see that we have the email and we also have the password. So we again, we have all the information we need to actually go ahead and sign in the user. So let's go back. Okay. And if you remember, we went to this. We had this information before. Okay. And, it, and again, this is in the documentation. So let's see what it is that we need to uh, sign in the user. Okay. And it's right over here. We're going to say, now again, let's import auth, okay, from which we created before from Firebase. Okay. So now we have our auth. So we don't need to do again firebase.auth because we already had that and we've already exported it. So all we need is auth. And then we are going to say, hey, auth, sign in. With email and password, we're going to pass in the email, we're going to pass in the password and function, and we're going to say, um, let's console log user, okay, user signed in, and then if there's an error, let's console log, there was an error signing in, signing in. And let's also console log if there's an error, what the error was. Okay. And Firebase actually gives us this error as a uh, in, in their catch function. So we can just go ahead and uh, print it out to the log if there is an error. Okay. So let's, um, yeah, let's give it a try. So we're going to say test gmail.com. And then we're going to say testing. And then we're going to go sign in. And let's see what log we get down here. Use signed in. So apparently I put use instead of user, but so apparently we have the user signed in. But again, now our question is, how, how do we know this? Okay, like what's like what lets us know that someone signed in, and what can we do now that we uh, that we have them signed in? Let's uh, let's take a moment to clear those fields again. Although they they got cleared already, uh, it's always good to. So it's good practice to, to do it yourself. So, you know, now that we have this user signed in and signed up and everything, what can we do with this? Okay, because remember, if, if you remember what, what the whole point was, is that we want everyone, essentially, to be able to read um, our articles, correct? But we don't want everyone to be able to create a post, and we certainly don't want everyone to be able to edit a post, okay? 
Who do we want to be able to edit and create posts? Only those use only a user that is signed in. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, and do that right now. Okay. So one of the things we're we're gonna use is we're gonna use another of the Firebase auth uh, functions. And that function, let's go to app. Okay. And uh, and in app, what we want to do is let's let's think about this. Okay, so we want to say when uh, when someone is signed in, okay, and they go to a post, we want to pass a property if they're in the if they're in the post section, okay, that lets us know if they're signed in or not. Okay, so let's uh let's go ahead and over here in app, let's uh let's go ahead and create a use state okay so we're gonna we're gonna set some state over here in the app and again the app if you remember this is the top most component so from the app we can pass any information down to any of the child okay so remember information floats down in react and you know there, there are other use cases where we can use redux or uh app contacts um you know i i love all those things but since we're using firebase there's so very little use for us to use any of those state management tools that in many ways makes our applications complicated. So, you know, what, one of my big philosophies is if you can keep your application uh, simple, then it'll be easier to maintain. It'll be easier to work with the team. But again, it's always good to uh, to understand how context works, how Redux works, and how all these other state management tools that are part of the React um, ecosystem also are available to you and uh, you can use them. But for now, Let's go this way, and uh, and if we need to use Redux or uh, context for anything else, we'll go over those concepts in a little bit. So for now, let's just let's create uh, a const and let's call it user, and let's call set user, okay? And we're gonna say use state, use state, and we're gonna say this is actually instead of a empty string or an empty array, we're gonna say false. So initially, what we're saying is the user. Okay, there is no user. Okay, it's it's false. Okay, so this 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 is false. Only, only when the user is signed in, are we going to change this from false to true? Okay, so let's see how do we do that. Okay, how do we do that? So over here, Firebase has an has an on auth state change function. So let's use that. Okay, let's use that. So let's bring in Firebase import auth from Firebase, okay? And now we're gonna say, remember, since we're importing that already, all we have to do is auth on Firebase, uh, on auth state change. So once a person signs in, Firebase will handle this for us, and then Firebase will know, hey, you know, someone signed in, and an event will get triggered that lets us know, hey, there is actually someone signed in already. Okay, let's uh, let's just console out the user if they're signed in, and uh, let's console out console uh, no user is signed in. Perfect. Okay, so let's go back to our application, and as we can see here, okay, so let's let's just make sure we're in the right place, user user is signed in perfect so because we already signed in okay we can see that firebase returns an object to us that gives us the user and we can know that's that user because if we look in that object okay if we open it up that object has right over here an email property and that email property is the exact same one we use okay test at gmail.com and if we go back to our firebase console we can see that that is the user that we signed in with. So that user is actually signed in right now, okay? So that's perfect. So now that we are signed in, um, let's actually, okay, let's see if we can sign out. So that's the next thing, okay? So now we're signed in and we can tell when someone is signed in, okay? So we have this, um, we have this function, but before we do that, let's also do something and let's set uh, the user, okay? Let's set it to uh, user, okay? So now our variable over here, instead of saying false, 
it'll actually say user okay and it'll be that whole object and we're going to use that later so that we can uh, display certain information or allow certain information sort of like editing or um, you know creating posts only to uh, users that are signed in all right so now we've set the user we know when they're signed in and when they're not so let's do one more thing and let's actually allow someone to sign out okay so <laughs> You know, now they're signed in and that's great, but you know, how do they sign out? You know, uh, let's go to navigation and in navigation. Okay. Let's go into the menu. Okay. And, uh, let's see, let's just add another item to our navigation. And, uh, if you remember our navigation was, uh, was right here actually. So. Let's put, uh, instead of uh, create post, let's put sign up. Okay. And what we're going to do here is instead of menu, this is a uh, create post. This item is a uh, post. And then this, these are the keys that React uses to, again, remember to optimize the way they render. And then this will be the sign up. But over here, let's let's style this, um, and let's style it so that it's floated uh, right. Let's see how that looks. So great. Now again, we we don't actually want it to um, to be a link or anything. What we want it to be, essentially, is it's uh, it's it's. Let's make it a link, but let's make it a link that doesn't actually do um, anything. Let's just create it. See if we can create it. Let's make it a p tag, and let's not have it go anywhere because it actually doesn't do anything other than just sign the user out. Okay, and uh, what we want to do is um, let's see here. We want to say, hey, on click, let's um, let's do on sign out. Okay, so on click, we're gonna trigger an event, and that event is gonna be called const on sign out. Okay, if I can write today. Okay, and then let's console log um, signing out. Okay, so let's uh, let's click it and see if that that's what we get. So perfect. So now when when someone clicks this, we are um, we're getting the signing out uh, button. Now I don't know if we actually want it to be a menu item or if we can just get away with uh, making it something much simpler. Okay, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's make it an A. So it's still a link, okay, but we don't want it to be a menu item. And simply because, the reason why I don't want to make it a menu item, okay, I don't know if you noticed, but the menu items have this nice little effect. So when you click over them, okay, it, it kind of shows you, hey, this is kind of where we're going, right? So if we curate posts, it, and, and you know, that underline, that border stays there, and it's, it's a really nice effect. Whereas for sign out, we want it to be a link, Okay, but we don't necessarily want this nice effect because it's not going to take us anywhere. Okay, it's just going to sign us out. Okay, so that's uh, and once we sign out, then the view should change, and that's what will allow us to know that we're signed out. But uh, it's not like it's taking us anywhere like this does, right? So it's not an actual link that takes us somewhere. It's uh, it's mainly just a um, it's mainly just going to perform a sign out function. Okay, and that's all we have to do. So on click, we're going to trigger this function and if we go back to firebase okay then uh over here we have what uh what we want to use so we're going to say off and it's a simple function again it's called sign out and uh then we're going to say console log user success user signed out just put that. OK, 
Okay. And uh, let's do that. Let's go back to the main page. And in the main page, we still have, let's go to the app. And I still want to make sure that we are console logging the user. Because once we sign out, I want to make sure that that doesn't show up, right? Because that, that will allow us to know, hey, you know, that you're signed out. So we're in the, let's go to the posts. Okay, and all our posts are showing. And now we're going to click sign out. No user signed in, no user signed in, and user signed out. So that's a good sign. So let's now refresh. And it should still tell us no user is signed in. Okay. Now let's let's really prove that. Okay. Let's try to sign in now. Okay. So let's try to go to um, sign in. So let's let's do something actually in the nav okay in our navigation we're going to do something here okay so we're going to we're going to create a um we're going to render okay a, this a sign out button if someone is signed in but if someone is um signed out then what we want them to do is to be able to sign in okay so let's do that so how do we do that remember the state we set here that user is set to false Okay, so what we have to say is the following. Okay, if user, and then we're gonna negate it. So, so we're saying we're gonna put a bang before the user. So if we're saying, hey, if this is, so if all we do is this, then it tells us uh, if there is a user. But if we put a bang before this user, it says if there is no user. So if it is false, okay, if it's false, what we want to happen is that we want to actually uh, sign them in. So we want to show a link in this case, okay? And this link is going to, where is it gonna go to? It's gonna go to our sign in page. There we go, okay? And it's gonna say sign in. But if they're signed in, okay, then we want it to say sign out and we want to display this. Now the difference, what we're using here is called a ternary operator. So a ternary operator kind of works this way. So we, we first set a condition and if the condition's met, we show this, okay, this is what will happen. If the condition is not met, then this is what will happen. So the condition is, if there is no user, then show the sign in button. If there is if there is a user, then show the sign out button. And it's that simple. Okay. All right. So let's see if that works. So right now, no user is signed in. And what do we see? We see the sign in button. Okay. So let's sign in. Okay. And once we click it, it takes us to the sign in page. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay. And then sign in. Okay, took a little bit, but now what do we see? We see that we see the sign out button, okay, shows up. And if we go to post, again, we see the sign out button. So now we definitely know that someone is signed in, right? So, and that's great. That's fantastic. So now we, we're, we're, we're rendering the sign in or sign out button based on a state, right? So whether someone signed in or someone signed out, we're rendering different uh, views to the user. And that's the exact same trick uh, and um, that we're going to use, okay, uh, right now in order to allow people to edit or create posts. So let's do that, okay? So let's go to uh, our post page. Let's see if it's in our post or post snippet. Let's go to our post snippet. And then what do we wanna do? We want again. We need we need to have the ability to know if someone signed in or signed out. Okay, and if someone signed in, they, they, they should be able to edit uh, the post. But if someone is not signed in, then they should not be able to edit the post. Uh, and for navigation, for navigation, if someone is signed in, then they should be able to create a post. If someone is not signed in, 
then they should not be able to create a post. So we're going to do this same thing over here. So let's do that again. Okay. So we're going to say, we're going to open these brackets and we're going to say user. So if there is no user signed in, and this is just for organizational purposes, what do we want to do? If there is no user signed in, then actually this will be different. So we actually don't have two conditions that we want to meet. So since we don't have two conditions, all we want to check if there is a user signed in and only then if there is a user signed in and the way to do this, if you only have one condition that needs to be met, you put double and signs in react. Okay. So the condition is only if there's a user signed in, do we want this link to show up? Otherwise we don't want it to show up. So at this point we do have a user sign in, but let's go ahead and sign out and see what happens. Okay, so no user is signed in. Okay, we should not be able to see this post. So let's see what uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so he, he, here's what happens. So once uh, on once someone signs out, what we have to do is because remember, since someone was signed in, we change the state of the user. So once someone signed out, that state is still how we left it. Okay, so what we have to do when someone signs out, we have to change the state again and update it. So we're going to set set user and we're going to set the user to what to false. Perfect. So since there is no user signed in right now, the state of the, um, of the user, it's false. Okay. So we don't see that no one, they, they can't create a post. Okay. So that's perfect. So let's sign in and then let's see if that changes. Test. What was it? Test at gmail.com. And then let's go to testing. Let's sign in. Okay. There we go. Immediately we see that create post shows up. And if we go to post now we have the sign out, we have the create post, and then we have one more thing to do, which is do the same thing for this edit uh, button over here. So let's go to post snippet. But before we go to post snippet, remember we, we need this ability to know when the user signed in or when the user is signed out. Okay. So the way we do that is in post. Okay. So we have to remember what is the parent of post snippet. So if we go to post snippet, what renders that? So if we go to post, okay, the post snippet gets rendered from the post component. So it is from the post component that we need to pass that property of the user to, uh, to the actual, um, to the actual post snippet component. Okay. So we have to go from app and an app, we're going to go, we're going to pass a property and the property is going to be, um, let's see what, what, what do we want the property to be? We want the property to be user. And then we're going to send that user along. And then once we're in post, let's go ahead and let's just, let's just check out console log. What are the props? Okay. Let's just check out what are the props that we're getting, uh, once, uh, once we're there and let's make sure we are in the post component console, the log in the post component. Okay. So, okay. Over here, we're in the post component. And if we go to, let's see, if we go to location and then we go to, let's see if anywhere here, we can see the user. Okay. Which we are signed in. So we should be able to see the user and let, let, let's make sure we're sending it in the correct to the correct. Uh, so, okay. So I put it in post. It actually should be in post. So again, I was like, yeah, that's a little weird. So yeah, just make sure, you know, cause an error like that will be very hard to catch. Okay. Because there is really no error, but except that we're not seeing. So that's why it's important to learn how to console log and debug through console log. So now once we go to post, Okay. What we have here, we do have that user. Okay. There we go. So props, uh, dot user, and it's there in the post component. So now that we have user, once we open that up, we can go to email and we, we know that it's not false. Now, if we was, if we, if we were not signed in, 
then that user uh, property would actually say false. So now that we have, we pass that into post. Let's go to post. And in post, we have now the code snippet. Okay. So in the post snippet, it's actually where we're actually allowing someone to edit the post or not edit the post. Okay. So here we're actually, we want to pass the user along as well. So let's go ahead and put the user property here. Okay. And then we are going to go props dot user. Okay. Perfect. And now all we have to do is go to post snippet. And once we're in post snippet, we are going to do the same thing for edit. Okay. So let's check here. So how do we do this? We're going to open brackets and then we're going to say user and so we only know that only if the user is signed in, it won't be false. If the user is signed out, then that will be false. So then that edit button should not show up. And let's, let's check that that is true. What's the error? Okay. So there is, there, there is no user. So we have to access users through props. Remember. Okay. So now we're signed in. We can see the create post. We can see the edit post. Okay. We can go and edit. Okay. And everything is working fine. We can go and create and everything is working fine, but let's go ahead and sign out. Now, when we sign out, we don't see the create post. Okay. We can still read the full article. Okay. But we cannot edit or create articles. Okay unless we are sign in. So let's sign in. Okay. And then once we're signed in, then we can go over here. We can go back to post. We can edit the post. Okay. And we can create the post. Okay. So perfect. Now we have authentication. We have the ability, okay, to not just authenticate, but authorize who's able to create posts and edit posts based on whether they're signed in or signed out. We have also, okay, shown and used the flow of information on React to pass information from parent to child. Okay, and from child all the way to uh, where we need it for that information to be used. Okay, and again, all this has been very simple. Okay, as you can tell, and we have pretty much at this point a full blown app with authorization, okay, authentication, editing capabilities, updating capabilities. We're gathering data from the API, we are fetching it, we're displaying it, we're updating it. So at this point, you've pretty much created a full blown app that uh, most people, um, you know, that just a few hours ago, you, uh, you, you wouldn't have known how to do. So this has been great progress. Okay, so let's continue on. And uh, you should, you know, take a moment and uh, take it all in. Okay, so go over the uh, go over the course at this point, if you need to, I think this is a good breaking point. Uh, and then just review everything that we've done so far so that it, you know, it gets, it, you can get it into your brain and uh, it, it really um, solidifies everything we've done. But again, everything we've done up to this point shouldn't be something that feels overwhelming. Uh, we have used all the right libraries. Uh, and I think the last thing we need to do now is actually host this application. And once it's hosted, it'll be online. And then we can show it to our friends, to our families, and pretty much to anyone that we want. And uh, that's what we're going to get into next. Okay. So before we actually go and uh, host our application to, um, to the web, let's do uh, a few other things that I think are important as well. So although we can create a post and we can edit a post, sometimes we're going to want to delete a post. Okay. Uh, but besides that, now that we have um, authentication, you might have, let's say you are uh, someone who is creating a, a blog platform, something like WordPress, or you're trying to create something like Shopify or any other platform, right? So the, the, the idea is that you're going to have many people, um, 
with many accounts and uh, with many blogs. So what, although right now we have a very nice looking blog um, and we can definitely do things to improve it. The, the thing is that, you know, it, it only has one user and uh, at the same time, we really can also delete a post. And um, let's, let's learn how to do that first. And then once we, once we have that set up, then we can actually go ahead and, uh, and I think it'll be, um, it'll be a good time to post it online. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the first thing, which is delete a post. Let's see uh, how to do that, which again, you know, just uh, leaning on Firebase and everything that this great service provides for us uh, will make it very easy and, uh, and painless. So let's go to, um, let's go to post snippet. Okay, and in post snippet, again, we, we kind of want to do the same thing over here, right? So we, we, we don't want, so let's, uh, because we already know we want to create only a person should only be able to delete a post if what do you think if they're signed in correct okay so same thing as before only if we have a user okay do we want that to uh that person to be able to delete a post so we have uh edit and then let's put delete um after edit and again this is just a personal preference you can do it however you want Okay, and let's format this a little bit. Now, what do you think we're getting this error? Okay, we got this before. What do you think is happening? Okay, remember, we have two adjacent, okay, components, but we don't have a wrapper. So what do we need to do? Okay, we need to create a, we need to create a wrapper. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create a div. We're going to create um, those two components inside that div. Okay, and then let's call this, uh, let's give it a class name. So it's good to give it a class name. We're gonna call this um, post um, post. Let's call this uh, edit links because in in a way, deleting is like editing. Okay, so let's just go with that. Uh, so let's see how how this looks. So we have read full article, edit, delete. So the edit and delete. Um, Let's see here, the, the readful article one, okay? What we want to do is we want to float left, okay? And the reason for, let's see if this, uh, I'll show you why now. So we have readful article and we have this link over here, readful left, and then let's style this to float Let's, let's try right. Let's see what that does for us. So there we go. Okay. So we floated this left. We floated this right. Now, again, we kind of have it how we had it before. Uh, what we want to do now is the edit link. Okay. We want to do kind of this same thing over here, right? We want to give it a margin. Uh, so there is a little bit of spacing. So we're going to go style. And then we're going to go margin right. And that's going to be, let's give it 15 pixels. And, and there we go. We have read, edit, delete. Now, what we have to do is we actually have to make that delete button work. Okay. So again, the delete is very similar to the sign up. So, I mean, to the sign out, it doesn't actually take us anywhere. Um, what, but what it does is it, it updates what, uh, what our posts are. Okay. So let's, um, let's see how we can do this. Okay. So let's go ahead and we have, we don't need to delete, um, URL, but what we do need is a link. Okay. And what we're going to do is an on click event. So on click, we are going to say on delete post. That's the function that we want to trigger when, uh, when we delete, uh, when we click the delete button. Okay. So const, uh, on the post, we're going to create that. And it said, and let's just console log it, and then said uh, post being deleted. Okay. Now, one thing that we we're gonna need to uh, do, and we can we know this already, is we're gonna need to know which post to delete. Okay. And uh, we know we have access to that because we are over here using it in the props.id of the post snippet, right? So 
we'll have access to that through the uh, once once we need to delete it. But just again, just something to keep in mind. Okay, you, you're gonna want to delete the correct post, not any post. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, click delete, and then okay, so we know that's working. So now let's go ahead and uh, and do that. So the first thing we need to do, and if we go again to the uh, Firebase uh, documentation, what do we need to do? We need to, you know, we have our Firebase reference over here, okay? And then all we need to do is just call delete on it. And then it's that simple. So let's, first and foremost, let's import our database, okay? From uh, Firebase, no, well, not from Firebase, from that document we created, our own document, Firebase. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna say, let's create the, the document reference, okay? Um, so we're going to say let post ref equal db dot collection and uh, what's the collection going to be a post okay and the doc id is going to be props dot id okay so then we're going to go post ref okay we're going to go post ref and then what do you have to do we're just going to have to delete and uh, that that should do it for us Okay. Now let's uh let's go to our application. And w one thing, one thing I want to um I want to do before we do this, which is pretty cool. This is one of the this is one of the co coolest features of um of of Firebase. Firebase is what we call a real time database. So what does it mean a real time database? When whenever an event happens somewhere, so in, in any of the references, so whenever something let's say happens on this reference that we created here, so for example when we delete a post and when we create a post, uh, that's an event, right? That's something that happens that changed the database. So whenever something like that happens, we can actually get real time updates, okay? And because we're reusing React, okay, and React has this ability to um, update also in real time. So because we're using a, uh, a framework that's a real-time framework and we're using a database that's a real-time database uh, this actually creates some really cool features that we can do that uh, most other apps actually don't have and people have to refresh and there's all these things that we don't have to do so let's uh, let's see how that works okay so let's go into post and then uh, let's see here instead of get we're gonna do on snapshot okay so we're gonna change it we're not gonna do uh get we're gonna do on Snapshot, no, okay, on snapshot. Um, then we're gonna have a post, and then we're gonna say post, and then pretty pretty much nothing else should change. Uh, and let's let's just make sure that that's that's correct. Okay, so all of our posts, everything looks the same. Okay, so we haven't done anything anything dramatic. Okay, uh, so, but everything is being rendered. Okay, and all we change. Okay, if you remember. All we change is on snapshot. So on snapshot, what it allows us to do, it allows us to, um, it allows us to subscribe to changes to this reference. Okay, to to this um, reference over here that we have, and this is the post reference. So whenever something happens in the post reference, like what we're about to do right now, which is delete a post, okay, we should see that this updates automatically. Okay, and let's let's just count for for good measure. We have one, two three, four posts right now, okay? We have four posts. So let's go ahead and do something crazy and let's delete one. Okay, 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 okay. So, okay, here, here's here's what happened. If we refresh, we should see that it actually got deleted, but we need to actually do something else beforehand. So instead of four, one, two, three. So we do have three, so it got deleted, okay? So that's working, okay? So that's working. but we need to do something over here. Um, so because we are just concatenating, and if you remember what uh, what I said concatenating was, is that we're going to add to whatever the post is um, that we have for um, for our, um, kind of for our array, right? So to our post, we're just gonna keep adding. So even though we deleted, once the snapshot uh, happened and we get the new data, what happened then? Okay, so we got an extra, it looked to react, like we got an extra three posts, and then it just added it to the other four posts that we had, even though the, the new three are the ones that we actually want to keep, and we don't want to actually keep the, the other ones, okay? So let's uh, let's see how we can solve that. And uh, there's, um, 
there are a few ways to solve this. Uh, one of the ways is, let's see here. All right, so here we go. After a little bit of research, I've uh, figured out a way uh, that we can do this with async await and not just do it, but do it the right way. So I was researching a few other things. So again, if, um, what we want to do is we want to do DB collections post dot on snapshot. Now on the snapshot, okay, what we want to do before we just have post, right? So now we want to add a keyword beforehand called async, okay? And this will allow us to do something, okay? So now, because we have async, we can treat the code, okay, as if it was there. So again, if you remember, what we're telling the computer is, hey, this might take a second, this might take a few milliseconds. We actually don't know how this, uh, how long this might take, but what we want um, is to treat our data as if it was available right now, okay? And the way we do this is we put this async keyword, okay, before the function over here, and then what we want to do is we want to put the await keyword, okay, on the call or the fetch call that that we're doing on the on the network that might take a while. So this is the actual part that we're not sure of, right? So we're gonna say async, and then we're gonna say, hey, we actually want to wait till everything comes back from this call before we move on to anything else, okay? And I'll show I'll tell you the reason why now. So pretty much everything stays the same. All we're adding is an async over here and an await over here. And then we're going to make this the post variable. So now we have post. And actually, let's uh, let's put post data. So we don't get this variable confused with this other variable that we have over here. Okay. So with that being said, let's go ahead. And now we, we, we pretty much have the same code. Uh, that we had before, okay? So we have post data, this, that, that, okay? And then this. So there we go. And uh, we're just, again, this is pretty much the same code we had before. Nothing, nothing changed, okay? We have data, and then we have the ID, uh, the payload, and then we return the payload. And then what we want to do is, we're, let's console log post data. And before we delete any of this, let's just leave it there in case we actually make an error. And here's what we get. We're getting back an array, okay? And the array has the same thing we had before, but now what's the difference, okay? Why, why did we go through all this? Because remember, we wanted to put the on snapshot, okay? The reason we wanted to do the on snapshot is because we want when the database updates, okay? And now, now that we have that, we can delete the rest. When the database updates, okay? We want not to concatenate the array, but we want to set the array completely brand new, okay? But we wanted to set it brand new with the new information without adding uh, more information that was necessary, which was what was happening before when we deleted a post. So now what we can do is we can do set post, okay? And now what are we gonna do? We're just going to set the post with the post data because the post data is actually the same data as before, but now it's just the updated version of the database. So the database is gonna update in real time, okay, for us. When it updates in real time, it's gonna return to us just the data that we have. So if we deleted a post and let's say we had four, it'll return back to us three, okay? And then we'll get that data back. And once we get that data, then we're gonna update the, the post variable over here. And then that should update our view in React. So let's see if all that works, okay? So we have, we have over here three posts. Okay, let's try to delete the one that says fourth post, delete, and as you can see, our database updated in real time. In real time, we didn't have to do any refresh. Nothing got, uh, nothing got, um, you know, added. So now again, this is how we can get real time updates from the Firebase database. And uh, once we, we, we do it with the async await um, functionality of JavaScript, and this allows us to also update our view in real time. So our database, now you know that what, one of the benefits of using the, um, the Firebase database, and really one of the things that drew me to it um, at the beginning and why, why I started using it, is because I wanted to create applications that would update in real time, you know? And uh, this, this will create a much better user experience, and it really uh, will create, um, you know, 
applications that no one or very few people were creating before. And with Firebase, it makes it very, very simple. Okay, just to subscribe to exactly the reference, you can subscribe to a specific collection, you can subscribe to a specific, uh, specific document, and, um, and then update your view as changes happen. So as we delete or we update, you can see that we don't need to do any refresh. We don't do any, we don't need to do any uh, navigation rerouting, none of that. We can just update the view in place with the new data and uh, and it all works, okay? So that's, that's that one section. Now, again, what were we talking about before? We have, you know, we have the capability to sign in to our application. We have the capability to delete. We have the capability to create and update. Okay, that's perfect. But the thing is, okay, we still have one issue. The issue is we can't just let anyone uh, update our blog. And let's say there are many blogs in our platform, okay? And there are many users that are, are admins, okay? So how do we deal with that issue? And how do we make sure that we only display blog posts that belong to one user and uh, that they can update their own blog posts and it doesn't uh, mess with anyone else's, okay? So let's, um, let's do that. And let's uh, let's get into it. All right. So let's go back to App.js. Okay. So in App, this is where we're getting our user. And if we go to, let's open up our console. If we go to our user, let's see where this is coming from. Let's make sure we don't have any extra console logs. Let me refresh this. Okay. So there we go. So in AppJS, when we get our user, okay, one of the things that it comes in this object that we can use is this UID, okay? And we're gonna use this UID for something uh, special. This, this is what's gonna allow us to recognize which user uh, posted which post uh, to which blog. So not just that we're gonna check is a user um, signed in in order to edit and create, but also once they're signed in, we want to make sure that we save the blog post to the correct user, okay? And that we are uh, showing the correct user's blog post. So imagine we had uh, 10 users, which each uh, their own uh, blogs, and because they each have their own blogs, we want to show for each blog the correct uh, blog post, not just any, not all of the blog posts, which is what our app uh, is doing right now, okay? So our app, we're about to make it a little more robust. So we're gonna use, again, remember, if you go into the user object, okay, that we have from Firebase, we have this UID, and that's what we're gonna do. So the UID is each individual users, once they sign in, uh, Firebase will um, create a UID for them, um, and that's what we'll use, okay? So remember, we're passing the props that user over to the post snippet, and uh, let's go into the app, and also, right here where we say create post, okay? One of the things that we want to pass over here as well is the user, okay? And um, we're gonna pass, yeah, the whole user object, okay? So let's go into create post, okay? And now we have to do one thing. So pretty much we want to create a post like we were before, okay? Uh, but let's let's go ahead and console log the props here. Okay, and we should have in the if we go to create post now, we should have in the create post. Okay, in the let's see, let's refresh. Let's refresh this just to make sure that that got set correctly. Okay, so if if we go to the to the create post. Okay, let's go to post and then create post. And then let's go to app for a second. Oh, again, I'm in update post. <laughs> let's go to create post. Oh my geez, what's going on? All right, let's refresh this. So over here in create post, okay, one of the things we have is the user, okay? At this moment, it's, it says uh, false. So let's go back to post. Okay, and create post. And what we should see, 
okay, is if we're signed in, we have the user object, okay? All right, and then we have access to the UID. So let's go to create post. And since we have all that information, now what we want to do is in the reference, so we don't just want to save the post to the post collection, okay? Because now we have many users. So we actually want to do something uh, a little different. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So instead of just saving the post to a general post uh, collection, we're gonna do the following. We're gonna say, we're gonna create a new collection called users, okay? The doc is gonna be the props, the user, dot UID, okay? Then the collection is post. So, and let me make sure I spell this right, users. So we're gonna say, hey, the new reference, the new post reference is gonna be actually users for that specific user and each user has a post, okay? So that's kind of how it's gonna work. And then from there on, everything should work pretty much the same, okay? Um, and then we will go and start changing things. So, so this is a little bit of refactoring, but it'll be worth it. Okay, so let's go to post, okay? And uh, let's create a new post. Let's do a uh, new user post, okay? And uh, let's grab some lorem ipsum. Let's post it and uh, let's go ahead and create that post. Perfect. Now, again, it's not showing up here, okay? So why do we think that is? Okay, let's, let's go back to create post. Okay, and let's... Uh, and let's see what, what might be happening. So if, if we go back to post now, okay, we also wanna change something over here. So instead of DB collection post, okay, we want to go back to app and in app for the post, remember we're passing the user. So let's go to post, okay. I wanna say, we don't just wanna get all the posts from the general post collection. And if we go over here to our console and our database, let's just check what happened. So now instead of just having a post collection, we have a new collection called users. Okay, let's go to the users collection. On the users, we have a user, which is the user that's currently signed in. And then under that user, that user has posts. So in a way, we can say this is this user's blog. Okay, and then we have that post that the user uh just created and it's got new user posts. So now let's try to get just that specific user's post, okay, instead of a general post. So now let's go ahead and do db.collection, okay, and which collection are we gonna go into? The user's collection, okay? Which user though, okay? So we have to specify that. So we're gonna go props, the user, the UID, and then the collection is posts, okay? And then everything else, let's see if it works correctly. We're in camera for, okay. Let's see what uh, whatever we're getting. Collection collection reference doc. So this is, okay, so this is the error we're getting. Function collection reference doc requires this first arguments to be of type not empty string, but it was undefined. So it seems like our user is not logged in. So let's see what's going on. Okay. So there we go. Now, we have a user logged in, so let's go to post. And here we go. So again, I, I think it was just, since we had done it, we needed to refresh that. But now we are only getting that user, that specific user's post, okay? So that we, we should not be able to see any other user's post, okay? So this is pretty cool. Now, now whenever a user creates a post, they'll actually just be able to see their own post and not someone else's post. And we'll create two accounts just to make sure that uh, this is happening. But now we have to update everything, okay? Because before we weren't using, we weren't using this feature, okay? So now let's go ahead and refactor the rest of the application to work the same way. So we did it for create posts and you guys saw how, uh, how easy that was. So we kind of need to do the same thing for everything else, okay? So where do we need to do it? Let's see here. Uh, when someone updates a post, right? That would be one, okay? That would be one of the 
So pretty much on create and update, that's that's where we need to do it, right? Because that's where we need to be able to know which user is what. And we'll also be changing the, um, the path over here because we don't just want to show any post. We want to show the post for each specific user individually. Okay, so for post, we also want to show the user and for post. So pretty much everywhere, <laughs> we're going to pass this user um, along and then that will allow us to have access to it in, uh, in, in the rest of our application, okay? So now let's go to update user, okay? So the update post, we're gonna do the same thing, okay? So when we edit the post, remember, we don't just wanna be editing any random post, we wanna be db.collection, which collection, okay? The user's collection, okay? And which specific one, which specific user? So we wanna do the doc, which is props, dot user dot uid okay props dot user dot uid and then that will allow us to edit the correct one now we need to go into post snippet okay and then when we edit okay a post um okay so so that should be fine actually because we, we we're gonna be getting the the property for the user from somewhere else so all we really need is the the id Okay, because remember we're getting the we're getting the ID from the URL. Okay, uh, but we're getting the user passed down from okay over here, and that's what we want. Okay, so for create post again, same thing, and let's see if that actually is working. Okay, and edit post, we're getting an error. So what's the error? What does it say? We are getting an error somewhere here. So we get the user. So let's see for edit post. So that's update. Yep, okay. So on update, okay, so remember, it's when we're getting it. So we did it for updating it, but now we also need to get it. We, we also need to update once we get the post. So we're gonna do collection, okay, users, and then we're gonna go doc, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say props.user.uid, okay? Let's go to post, okay? Let's go to edit. And now we actually see that we do um, have the correct post. Now let's try to update it, okay? Updated user post, okay? So this, this will be important. So let's edit this. And now we see that we're again showing the correct post and it's been updated for that user. Okay. Now let's create a new post. Second user post. Let's grab some norm ipsum. Okay. Let's create it. And now we see that we have two posts for this user. Okay. And now let's delete one just to make sure that everything is working correctly. Now, if we if we go to the delete post, let's go to um, let's go to post snippet, okay, where we have on delete post. So again, over here, we want to make sure that we're deleting the correct post. So we're gonna say db dot collection, okay, users collection dot dot which dot props dot user dot uid, perfect, props dot user dot uid. Okay, and the rest should be fine. Now let's go back to our home page. Let's wait for it to recognize that we're signed in. Let's go to post. And now we're going to delete one of them. Let's delete the one that says second user post. And we deleted that one. And now if we go to post, again, we should just see one post. And it's the correct post for that user. So now our application. Let's let's go ahead and sign out. Let's go ahead and sign out, and then let's see what's uh what's going on. So no user at this point is signed in. So what do you think will happen? I let let's see if we get any errors. Okay. So yes. So let's let's go back to our app. And what are we saying is our default. Um. So our our default. Uh 
page is the the sign in page. So that should be fine. So let's see let's see where we're getting our error now. So okay, actually we're not in the we're not on default path. So let's just go to localhost. And again, we're not signed in, so everything is fine. And this this will be the page that everyone will come to the first time they they uh they go to our app. So now let's try to create Okay, let's try to sign up a new user. Okay, let's do test2 at gmail.com and let's do the same password and we're gonna sign up. All right, perfect. So now that we have a new user signed up, we can see that they can sign out. Let's go to post. This user doesn't have any posts. But again, we're not getting any errors. So let's create a post for this user. And let's call a second user post. And let's grab some lorem ipsum. Let's paste it and let's create the post. So now we have the second user post. Okay, and if we go to post, we can see that we don't have um we're not we're not showing the other users' post. Okay, we're only showing the user that's actually signed in their post, but What's what's the issue now? Okay, so let's say that this person uh, created their blog and they want to share their blog with someone. Well, the fact of the matter is that they won't be able to simply because they're at, at this point we don't have an actual ID. So if they sign out, okay, although anyone can sign in, we need a way for someone, okay, to be able to see. A certain blog. Okay, so every single blog should be able to be uh, the the post for that blog. We should be able to see it, but to edit the blog or to delete the blog or to create post posts for the blog, you need to be signed in. But in order to view the blog, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't have to be signed in, and that's what we're going to go into next. Okay, for our next part of the application. Now, what we want to do is we want to be able again to be able to show um users or blog but you know not someone else's blog so a user needs to be able to not be signed in and be able to see posts um while you know an admin can be signed in and see their posts and also uh, edit them but a user and an admin an admin should be able to share a link and that's kind of like what we're what we're going to we want them to be able to share links to their blogs okay their blogs show uh, any unsigned user, so someone doesn't need to be signed in, all the posts, but then they shouldn't have the ability to uh, edit or update or create posts. Okay, so that's kind of what uh, we want to create now. Now, how can we do this? Let's think about it. So we want to do. Uh, let's let's start here. Let's go. In posts, okay. What we want to do is we want to do users something very similar to what we did with the database. Okay, so we want to be users. Then we want to say UID post okay so if you remember this colon it won't when we're doing our routes okay whenever we include a colon that means it's going to be something we can access through the url okay so we have to pass it somehow okay and as well uh this is what's going to allow us to be able to be able to share that uh that post and even if someone is not signed in they should be able to uh you know check that post out. So let's see how we're going to do that. So let's save that and let's work again. Let's just work one step at a time in the post section. So if we go to our navigation, okay, this right here takes us to post. So now we have to change this route because we, we can't just go to post. Okay. We have to go, we have to change it a little bit. We have to say users was, is that what we said? Yeah. Users. And then, uh, and again, you, you can, you can call it users, you can call it blogs, whatever you want. Let's just go with users for now. And then over here, okay. Now, if we want a string interpolation, remember what we have to use instead of double quotes is backslash, okay. And also, besides that, we have to open brackets, okay, so that React can interpolate. Then to do string interpolation, we do backslash, which is to the left of the number one. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to use user uh, dot UID. OK, 
okay? So user.uid, okay, should allow us to, um, to, to, to be able to go to the post, okay, without being signed in, okay? And with that information, it should be enough for us to pull, okay, all the posts for that user. Because remember, when we're, when we're creating posts now, okay, part of what we're including in the creation of the post, okay, if we look over here on create post, okay, Let's go to that function. We put title, the content, but we're also doing it right there in the UID. Okay, so that's uh, that's how we're gonna be able to access that. Okay, so since we don't actually, let's let's go to our, our console, and then let's go to authentication. Now we have these two users, and these are their UIDs. So if we go over here to, uh, to Firebase. We can copy their UIDs and now let's go back to our app and let's go to now again we're not signed we're not signed in okay so let's go to users the UID and then let's go to post and let's see what happens now if I'm not mistaken we should get an error okay so let's uh let's see what the error is so the error is function collection reference doc requires its first argument to be typed num empty string it was undefined. Okay, so now let's go to the post. Now in post, remember, when we are grabbing, okay, we're, we're grabbing either the props.userid, okay, the user.uid, but the thing is, right now we, we're, we're not signed in, okay? So we can't get the props.user.uid because there is no user, right? So what happens in this situation? So in this situation, we have to account for both of those situations, and this is the way we're going to do that. Okay, so let's go and create a new variable over here, and then we're going to say uh, let um, user equals. Okay, if we have a user. Okay, and the way we check for this is we're going to add a question mark. Okay, after the props. So what it's saying is, hey, access user only if access the uid only if user is available okay if it is then we're going to use a ternary then make the user uh make the user id let's call it that let's call it user id make the user id um that exact thing okay because we know we have a user if we do not have a user okay what we're going to do is we're going to go props and what do we say in our app that we call that UID, right? If we go to our app and we go to post, we go to UID. So we know we can at least grab what the user UID is from um, from the URL, but we know we, at this point we don't have someone signed in. So that should be fine. Okay, so the doc, we're gonna go ahead and say users. And remember, we saved the user for the UID and then other posts. So let's see if that solves our issue. So again, remember, if we look over here, it says no user is signed in, okay? And we don't see the ability to actually create, okay? Or update or delete, but we are getting that user's uh, post now. So now this user can essentially, and once we, once we host the app, you, you'll see how, you know, we'll have an actual link they can share, but Let's do something because I actually do not like the fact that we're calling a user. Let's call, let's, let, instead of user, let's, let's use blogs. Okay. Blogs, I think it's more uh, accurate to what we're doing. So blogs.uid. Okay. And then over here, let's also do blogs. Okay. So now instead of users, we're going to go to blogs. Okay. So it's essentially what we're saying is our site has many blogs. This is one of the blogs, and these are the posts for this blog. Now, if we read the full article, okay, so now we have to do the same thing for posts, okay? So in post, okay, we don't want to just go to post ID. We need to go to blogs. Then we got to go to UID, then post, then ID, okay? So that's what we want to do. So now we got a post snippet, okay? And in post snippet, okay, which is... uh where we're doing the the post ID then we need to check uh, we need to check whether we have uh, a user signed in and if we don't 
then uh, over here, we got to actually change this. So we're going to go blogs and then we're going to say, so where, where are we going to get the, the UID from? So we should be able to get the UID from props, the UID. Okay. So let, let's see if that's working. Let's go to post. And if we refresh, we, you know, we can see down here that it actually shows. Let's check here. Let's do blogs, not. Okay. And we can see that the UID is actually undefined. So let's let's find out why it's undefined. Okay. So props UID and we're in post snippet. Okay. And that's fine. So if we go to app, because post path blogs. UID post ID. Okay. So in post, okay, which is where we're rendering the post snippet, we actually have to also pass the UID. And the UID, and remember, this is just because of the way data flows from uh, React to um, in React from parent to child. So here we have access to UID. So we're going to go props the UID. Okay. So now in post snippet, once we go read for article, we should see blogs, then the UID, then the post, and the post ID. And then let's go ahead and click on it. Now, again, no user assigned it, right? So let's go to post now, okay? And we're going to have to do something very similar to what we did for, um, for, for the post. So let's go, go to post so we can use it as a reference. And then we're going to do... The, the, it's not just the post collection. Now we got to go users. Okay, so collection. Which collection? The users collection. Perfect. Now, which user? Okay, so let's go to doc. And then we should have props that UID available to us. And that's the one that we want to access. Okay, so let's try that out. And there we go. Okay, so now we have blogs. And as long as we have a UID, and a post ID, then we should be fine. And if we go back to post, okay, now over here it's undefined. So we have to make sure that post has the UID, okay, and at all times, then that UID is defined. So if we have over here post, so some for some reason, when we are over here, the post nav link is not being defined correctly. So let's see what's going on here. P blogs, undefined, posts. So let's go to over here. And it's actually, let's go to not just that, but let's go to posts. And that is undefined. Okay. So let's see what's going on here. So in posts, because again, so here, here, here's the issue. So we're assuming that we have a user signed in, but in reality, we don't know, right? So what we do know, okay, is that we need to do the same thing that we did before, okay? So only on a auth state changed, okay, are we gonna set the user and that's fine, okay? But let's, let's console log our props here, just so we can see something. And, and we have no props. So let's uh, props for this location. Since we have no user signed in, we need a way to access, okay, that, um, that URL, okay? So one of the ways we can do that is when either someone signs in, but if they're not signed in, how can we, uh, what do we need to do in order for us to, uh, to get that UID. Okay, so here's the best way, and this is something we, we were gonna do before. So how about we just do it now, and then the, um, this is the, the actual uh, correct way that I think we spoke about before. So let's let's break this uh, navigation into its own component. And this is, again, part of, um, part of the benefits of using React. So that way we can, uh, we can see how we can uh, solve this. So we're gonna create a new file. And we're going to say app 
nav.jsx. Okay. And then we're going to import React from React. We're going to say const app nav um, props. Okay. Um, then we're going to go ahead and export default uh, app nav. Perfect. Now, we have to, just like everything else, imp import it. App now from app now. Okay. Now we're gonna get the navigation, which is over here. Okay. And let's move it over here. Perfect. And then we're gonna console log over here the props. Okay. Uh, let's see what's the issue. Diff class name. Blah blah. blah. What does it say here? Okay. So remember, since we created a new File, we have to then declare it, uh, restart the server, I mean. So we are going to replace where the app nav is with just our new component. Okay, app nav. And that's it. Perfect. So let's see if, let's see if anything has changed in our app. And nothing should have at this point. Okay, there's a syntax error. In our navigation, let's see where that is. Menu. Well, okay, I can see a few things that we need to definitely include. The menu. Okay. So let's see everything we're going to be using here. Menu, item, and link. Remember, uh, menu, item, and link. So we're going to be using the link over here. We won't be using the router. And now, in our app, we won't be using the link. Okay, because that's. We're just using that in our um, in our navigation. So where is that syntax error? We're still getting a syntax error. Let's see if we can hunt it down. Okay, so the issue apparently was I just restarted the server and restarted it back up, and that that fixed everything. So again, when all else fails, restart your server. So now, now we're still getting an error. So let's check what the error says. It says reference error user is not defined. That's fine. Now, remember, part of a component is that we can pass properties to it. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go user. Okay, and what we should pass to user is um, the user. Okay. So let's pass that to the user, and uh, let's see if we're still getting an error. So the, the reason is before we were getting it because we had remember, okay, we had it in our we had so when we were using app we had it over here right we had set up that variable now since we're getting it through props we need to actually access it through props so let's refresh and that's number twenty six so over here again props dot let's see if there's anything else we missed okay perfect so now um let's see here yep that seems like it did the trick so now if, if a user okay but remember the user is not logged in okay and we're still able to access their posts, to read their posts, essentially. So now our user has a, a URL they can share with anyone. And let's let's go to our console and let's copy. So which which user are we on? We're we're on the zero A. So let's go to our console and copy the other user. Okay. And let's switch the the user and let's go to post. Let's see if we're still if it's still working. Okay, so that's updated user post. Let's go back and let's see if that changes. And then we're getting here second user post. So these are actually the posts for each individual blog. Okay, so now the blogs and then let's go and read the post. Okay, so second user post, which is what we clicked on. Let's again change the user. 
or essentially change the blog and then update a user post. Let's read the full article. And we can see that we have a, uh, we're reading the right article. So now we have a way to share, okay, our blogs, create multiple users for our blogs, have the ability to sign in, to sign out, go to post. So now when we go to post, okay, it seems like we, we still need to solve this, okay? So because now, again, th this is not as big as an issue as, um, as one might think. The thing is that there really isn't, okay, um, once, once we're signing in, anybody can be signed in, okay? So this post shouldn't be, th this link shouldn't be here. That's the issue. If no one signed in, then there is no reason to show the post link because there's no one signed in, okay? Um, and again, and unless we have a link to the post, okay, which the owner should be able to give you, okay, the owner of the post, the owner of the blog, they will have the correct URL. But the thing is, once we're signed in, okay, if, if no one signed in, okay, then they shouldn't be able to see this post link over here. So let's... Uh, so that's something else we can fix, okay? And maybe I'll leave that for homework, but for now, that's really the issue, okay? And yeah, I think I'll leave that for homework and uh, and we can maybe solve it at a later episode. But now, let's do one more thing, which is the last thing. Now that we have our blog, we can sign in, we can sign up, we can see the post, okay? We can have multiple users and e everything is working the way we want it to. Now the last thing is, hosting the, our project online and actually having a real URL instead of our local server that we can share with others. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, so one of the last parts we have for our application, and again, for me, usually this is the most exciting part because this is when we actually get to share our app. Uh, we get a real URL. We're not just uh, developing on our uh, you know development server. And it's actually online, so anyone can come in and check out our work. We can, you know, this is really when the rubber meets the road, so to speak. So let's get into it. And once again, you know, Firebase really, really, really uh, um, shines here with, uh, with hosting because they will even host our app. Now, we're going to need to do a few things. Uh, so we're going to need to install uh, Firebase tools. Now, again, I already have this installed, so this is all you got to do, npm install. Firebase tools, then we're gonna go next. We're gonna go, so let's go over here. I'm gonna turn off my server, and then I'm gonna go Firebase login, Firebase init, okay? So we're gonna go Firebase login. I should already be logged in, perfect. Now we're gonna go Firebase init, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose hosting we're going to use an existing project. Okay, and the project that we're going to choose is React Intro Blog. Okay, perfect. Okay. Now it says, do you want to use your, uh, do you want to use, what do you want to use as your public directory? Okay. So let's, let me just go over here just so that, again, this is what is great about having other projects that you can, um, you can reference them, whatever you want. So we're going to go dist. So dist is distribution. So that's okay. If, if you look at our react app in distribution, that's where everything gets bundled. Remember if we're using parcel, parcel creates a distribution folder. Okay. So that's already created. So that's where all of our, all of our app lives. Okay. So let's use dist as our public one, and then configure a single page app, rewrite all URLs to index.html. Uh, let's go, usually this is uh, this is the scary part, so, because you don't want to undo everything. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, uh, index.html, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, sure, let's go with yes, okay? Configure a single page app. Let's go with yes. File this index.html already exists. Overwrite it. Yes. Okay. And 
if, if we go back, okay, and now we go into our index.html. So if we go into the distribution and in here, index.html, we see all these things that Firebase kind of puts in there for us, okay? And we really don't care about most of it. Uh, what we do care about is this stuff over here, okay? The Firebase app, the Firebase JS, the messaging, the storage, the Firebase init. Uh, let's see, anything else, anything else that might be interesting to us? Probably not, okay? So, again, let's, um, let's just leave it as that for now. Uh, anything else? Let's see here. No, nope, that looks fine. That looks fine. That looks fine. Okay. So let's, if we look over here now, let's go to our package JSON. And one thing that we do need is, so we're going to need this right here. Okay. So what, what we want to do now is we want to copy our CSS, our build main, okay, which is index of JS and our production uh, for our production build. And our production build is what we are actually going to um, end up using in uh, as, as our host. Okay, so we're going to copy this and we're going to go into our package JSON. Okay, so over here. Okay, we're going to go. And instead of just having start, we're going to have a few more things. So we're going to have to install a few things. So npm. So if we go to CPI, CLI, so th these are mainly utilities that we use uh, for production. So although Parcel helps us for our development server getting our app ready for production, it's a little bit uh, more work, but not that much. So we're going to get this copy, uh, CLI, and then we're also going to get npm run all, uh, which is another uh, great um, Great npm package that you can find. So npm run all. Okay, let's just wait for this to install. Okay, now that that's installed, let's install the npm run all. And pretty much what we're doing here, just so I explain it while this is installing, what we're saying is, hey, copy. Okay, while we're building the production application, what we want to do is we we want to copy the CSS index.css that we have over here. Okay. And we want to put that in the distribution file. The, the main file, which is an index.js, okay, index.js. Let's see what that is. Also, uh, where is, oh, in the source file. So yeah, if we go into source index.js, we want to also put that in our distribution file, okay? And then we want to run all those, the build commands, okay, and the copy commands. That's what we want to do. And, um, and that should be, that should be all. So, and then let's also, just because we changed it and this index, I don't think is the one we want to use at all. Um, let's copy our own index. Okay. So the, the, the one we created, that's the one that we're going to, um, end up using. So let's go into distribution and this index file over here, we're going to replace it with ours. Now, again, there's a few things we want to change. So let's go into the distribution index file. And if my, and then let's go into our regular index file. Okay. Perfect. Now let's go into, let's go see what this, um, let's go open up so you can see what another one looks like and all we're really changing here is the, the these files here so if, again let's let's look at ours ours is index.css well the one distribution as well over here though instead of going src index because it won't be in src remember it's just going to be index.js so that's pretty much all we have to change okay and let's see if there's anything else here that uh firebase app okay so let's copy these these two scripts which are our firebase uh scripts and then besides that we have ant ant and uh that's yeah that's pretty much uh 
actually we have a newer version 7.3 so we're, we're going to use the 7.3 version um and that should be that should be fine okay there we go okay okay react blog so that's fine and then this is the regular index so let's just make sure we're in the distribution file okay good so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do npm run prod okay okay what's the issue here missing script prod okay do we not have that in the package json well we actually have to save our json file MPMI. Let's just make sure everything is up to date. Okay, and then let's uh, save it, which is compare what's new here. Start parcel index.html. Copy CLI. What's where is this? Do we not save that? Yeah. You know, um, so we want to keep this okay, and we want to the start file parcel. That's that doesn't seem like it's changed at all, okay? So let's run npm run prod. And let's go back over to next, and then we will let's let's wait for that uh, to finish bundling our application, and then we'll see if we run into any issues while we're deploying the app and hosting it. Okay, so let's just give that a few seconds. Over here, we can see the progress, everything that is copied, okay, distribution index.js. Uh, what else? The index, the CSS, um, okay, right here. And now let's go Firebase deploy. And let's see if we actually. Let's check a few more things. This. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And this is HTML, and then let's check ours over here, which is let's go over here. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, everything looks everything looks okay. Okay, so after waiting for a few seconds, moment of truth, let's uh, let's copy this URL that uh, the Firebase created for us. And here we go. So we have React dash intro dash blog the Firebase app. Everything looks to be working fine. Let's Try logging in, test at gmail.com, testing as one of the users. Okay, so it's telling us that in our index, so let's go to our distribution index. Let's say, hey, you need to do the app first, okay, not last, okay. So let's run npn run prod again. And again, th these are things that once you're hosting, you're going to have to, you know, for deploying purposes and things like that, um, you know, there's there's all these things that, that we check, okay? And uh, little by little, whenever, again, whenever you have an issue, read the console, read the output, okay, in the terminal, go, go online, check whatever, you know, probably someone has dealt with it, 
and uh, and then you'll save yourself a lot of headache. So now we're gonna go and deploy again. Okay. And another reason why I don't want to edit this stuff out of the video is because I want you guys to see that you know guys and girls by the way uh, I, I want everyone to see how you know this is normal stuff that happens during development okay this is not something I don't want to just show you a uh, a clean um, you know tutorial where everything goes out perfect because guess what when you're gonna be programming everything will not go perfect okay and again one of the most important things for programming is learning how to debug learning how to solve problems honestly that is a huge part of programming and getting good at that and getting comfortable with that and knowing that you can get through um, you know any of the issues that come up again get used to reading your consoles get used to like re reading through the lines one by one get used to searching online and again this stuff really um, you know it's sometimes it's a little frustrating but so worth it uh, when you see your app up online and it's actually working and then we'll deploy again so let's let's see what it says here uh, Firebase store beforehand and that's let's see react to name production mode uh, okay read how correctly configure in production mode that's fine on sign out is not defined index so on sign out there's a reference error there on sign out and in where in index so we got to check what that is um, and we'll check that in a moment so it seems like we have two errors, okay? And just while we're here, let's fix something really quick. Let's run npm run start before we continue debugging our uh, deployment. And let's go to app, okay? So let's go to app nav actually. And in app nav, you see that we have this on sign out um, function, but actually we never moved it from over here. So the on sign out function, okay, actually needs to move to the app nav because that's what's going to be using it. So off the sign out, then set user to false. Um, okay, so let's 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 learn something new. So an, another way that we can pass information down, we don't we we don't just have to just pass props, okay, or simple data. We can actually pass a whole function. So this unsign out function, let's leave it where it's at and let's not put it in the app nav, okay? But what we do need to do is that on the app nav, we're gonna say on sign out. So we're gonna pass it as a property, okay? So on sign out, we are going to pass this function, okay? And then that would trigger, so, from the app to app nav, we're gonna say, hey, pass this as a property, to sign, and then when we are over here in app nav, we're gonna go to sign out. But remember, now we have to access that through props. So we're gonna go props dot on sign out. Okay, and then that should be um, that should fix that. Okay, let's let's just check out our local host is actually working, and we're not getting any errors uh, with that. Okay, let's sign in, test.com, testing, sign in over here. Okay, everything looks good. If we go to post, great, and let's try to sign out. And again, everything stays the same, except now we can't edit or create new posts. So that looks good, okay, that looks good. So let's... Let's go ahead and try to deploy again. Let's go ahead and do uh, npm run prod. And again, remember, npm run prod gets it ready for distribution. And, and the main thing is that it's going to bundle everything into one large. Um, or again, there's different forms of this. It actually, you know, separates it so that it's the most optimal for uh, rendering and for loading your JavaScript bundle. But essentially, it's going to put it in this distribution file, okay? And from this distribution file, it's going to load it. But again, the reason we don't work with the distribution file because, as you can tell, it's it's not very um, it, it's not very like reader friendly, and we want to be working with components and things like that. And then only when we're ready to deploy do we want to actually go through all that, 
Okay, so now that we have done that, we're gonna go Firebase deploy, and uh, let's see if we can uh, we can get this going. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to over here, our live version. Okay, no errors so far. Let's go to post. And there you go. Now our app is online. We have a real link we can share. So this is actually online and you can share this with anyone. And uh, that's pretty much it. We have our app hosted and uh, working perfectly. So this is on our local host. This is on the live server. And uh, now you have created an app from beginning to end. You have on React, we've used Firebase, we've used Firestore, we've uploaded it, we've hosted it, and we've deployed it. And uh, you know, you should be very proud of yourself. This is uh, this is awesome. So let's uh, let's finish this over here, and then we'll continue with um, with other projects that we can add to our blog post to make it even uh, even look nicer. But let's you know, let's just for good measure sign out, and everything still works. Okay. So congratulations on making it this far. And uh, yeah, you should be very proud of yourself. And now you have an app that you can share with your friends and your family. And you should feel comfortable at this point to actually go in and start creating your own apps. Okay? So that's, remember, that's the whole point of this. And um, you should also see the power of being able to create anything that you can think of. And, uh, you know, just creating it, being able to, you know, not taking a, a huge amount of time, um, you know, provisioning databases, hosting websites, everything that I've shown you or um, how to create from you know the beginning of, of an app to all the setup is using, using some of the newest tools available and easiest tools to really get going uh, on any project as quickly as possible. And now you should have that confidence you need to, um, to create applications. And again, the more and more you practice, remember, the better you get. And uh, yeah, good luck. And uh, we'll have a few more other exercises that I want to go through so that we can make our app a little prettier. But at this point, pretty much, you have a full functioning app. Congratulations for making it this far.